everyone, happy Friday. You know what that means. It's another live lawn care live stream. My name is Ron Henry and I'm here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you have graced us with your presence, first of all, welcome. Super happy you took some time out of your afternoon to, to be here. The way this works, super simple. On the right side of your window, there should be a chat box. In said chat box, you can put in your question, your comments, things that are bothering you, mostly hopefully related to lawn care, and we'll, we'll talk through them in the order they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I do not, but either way, either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. So guys, this week has been some challenges. I mean, I got a story to tell you guys. I'm gonna wait for a little bit more people to get in the live stream first. Some of you already know what I'm about to talk about. Uh, let's just say that, um, you know, I, it's, it's been a rough past, it's been a rough past couple of days. And, uh, you know, I got some pictures I'll show you. We got some questions from other viewers and some uh, some other things here, but I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been rough. All right, let's see what we have in the live stream. First of all, tonight we got VMH in the house saying, hey, Ron, happy Friday. What's going on, VMH? Thanks for coming to hang out with us. We appreciate you as always. Uh, first question we have, actually, for, for, before I do that, we have our super chat. First super chat of the evening. Thank you, Ben, for kicking that off. Let me do that first from Ben Raham. Super chat received. He says, happy Friday, Ron and all. First real Mo on the Maya Bermuda Renault from scratch. It's thin, but I'm pushing now. Uh, carbon kit, 901C, uh, check, granular check, a celloprin liquid, check, granular carbon, check, soil test, check. So you did a bit of everything. It sounds like you, you, you got everything in, right? Well, that's cool, Ben. Uh, it sounds like, um, you know, you're starting to mow, which is always a fun time, right? All the work that you put into to getting your renovation project to where it is now, you're starting to see the fruits of your labor and all the work that comes along with that. So enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the fact that, you know, all your hard work is starting to pay off and it sounds like you're doing a lot of the right things, and which is uh, which is very, very, very cool. And guys, it's been a hot, uh, hot summer, and here in Georgia, lately, a rainy summer. We've been getting a lot, a lot more rain, uh, which may have contributed to the problem that I had in my lawn, I think, to some extent, because the ground got really soft. You know, I was doing some testing. is really, 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 really soft compared to how it's been uh, normally. So, but first of all, first of all, Ben, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate it. And you are the show sponsor for the evening as of now, until unless someone can do uh, can can raise a super chat that's more than that. So we appreciate the support. Thanks again, and sounds like you're doing everything right, man, so keep going. All right, first comment of the evening is from, or question is from Mary. Mary J says, oh, good evening, Ron. Looking for some advice on any exercises you, make, you can recommend to gain strength for spraying. I have a two gallon sprayer and I can only do half the yard per day and I'm flat tired. Uh, I mean, it, it depends. I mean, if you have, I mean, one, one of the best workouts you can do, believe it or not, is, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to get you into burpees just yet, but like literally going down, like start, starting standing up, going down, going into a plank, and then standing up again. If you do 30 of those for someone that has been, depending on your conditioning, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a pretty good workout. It's a, it's a fairly, it's a full body workout, right? Because you're doing exercise in your back, your legs, a um, little bit of explosiveness, depending on how quickly you get up and get down. So, uh, so yeah, that's a good workout. Look up, look up burpees, you know, burpees, but like modify that at first. Don't, don't like start jumping around like crazy when you first get going, but that's a great exercise. It builds a lot of strength. Um, you know, it's calisthenic exercise that's fairly safe and, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll get you better. It's going to, it's going to take a while to build up. Um, cause I don't know where you're really starting from, but your, your cardio will get better. And then also your strength will get better from doing that. So something to keep in mind. All right, Mr. Alex Lee is in the house. I may have to tell the story more than once because I can tell you guys are, he, he's, he's kicking it off. So Alex, Alex is in the house. For, for those that don't know, Alex is my next door neighbor. Love him like a brother. He says, uh, holy moly, it's Friday night live stream. I hope everyone is achieving their lawn goals. So guys, here's the thing. Yesterday, it's story time. We got 86 people in here for now. We can always tell the story again. I'm sure it'll be, it'll be even funnier the second time around. So normally in the morning, as I'm prone to do, you know, I get my cup of coffee and I go out and when the mail guy comes by, I go and grab the mail and I open the front door. I open the front door. I'm starting to shake just, just telling you this again because it's this, this, this irritating. I open the front door and this is what I see. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have any idea what that is, but that's a mole. That's mole damage. And right in my front lawn, you know, it's like, it was like a huge nasty scar right across the front lawn. Horrible, right? I was, I was to, to say I was devastated, upset, hurt a little bit would be a, an, an understatement. My thoughts to myself, you know, I've got security cameras. I wonder when this guy, when did this little mole start digging up the lawn? So I know, you know they like to move around at night. Was it, did they work all throughout the night? And is that when they started digging this? Like how long has this been there? 
So I broke out my security cameras and you know what? Let me just show you guys. So this is the better part of about two hours that was sped up to about 30 seconds. So take a look at this. So you see in the left hand of your screen, you see that little line there that's growing? So this guy didn't only have the gall to dig up my front lawn, but had, you know, just, just the mad disrespect to do it in the middle of the day, like broad daylight. You know, he didn't even wait till nighttime to do it. Like literally daytime, you know, between uh, 6.30 in the morning until, I think this is, this is around 8, 8.30 is when um, it, it stops here. But you can literally see, you can see the line growing as, as it's burrowing across the lawn. At this point, it became personal. Literally, I took a picture of that, sent it to Alex, and I was like, Alex, mount up. We got work to do. Because at this point, I couldn't let it go. You know, he, he, it's, if he did it at night, I'd be hurt. I'd be like, you know what, whatever. I can get some Tomcat. I can put some poison in there, and we can, you know, we can let it. We can, we can take care of this in a more civilized way. But the fact that you're going to go do it in broad daylight is personal now. It's personal. So what we did, he got a shovel. He brought... Um, you know, because I knew it, the mole was there, I figured that it was still in that in that that area that he just dug up, right? So I knew I knew where, for the most part, he was probably in that trench he just did, uh, he just dug. So first thing, first thing was to trap him to make sure he couldn't get away. So what I did is I got one of those small, um, like a small shovel. I can show you here. I can actually show you guys what I did here. I mean, it's kind of basic, but I took a small shovel and blocked him in. So you can see from the beginning here, like the beginning of this video, you see you see the the pavers that are there right there on the left. Those are the pavers that are along of like where he entered and began digging his trench. So I put a, sh I put a, um, a shovel in there. So that way, if he decides to backtrack, he couldn't get out. Couldn't get out, right? So, I, so we knew at this point that he was between the shovel and somewhere down this trench, this big area that he, this big mess that he made, right? Big mess that he made. So we got a garden hose, and we, unfortunately, we didn't film this because we were trying to make sure we could catch him whenever he came out. So he was got a garden hose and put it on the right side of this image. So what you're seeing, like where the where the shovel is being blocked in, right there. So imagine a garden hose going in the trench on the right side, and we just started flooding it because while moles, you know, they might go in and block off and, and go dig into another area um, to try and get away from water. The fact that this was brand new means he probably didn't have time to do that. So we just put water in and we just waited. And about a minute and a half later, two minutes later, literally, we saw this little bubble forming. And he literally, it was funny. I mean, it's funny, but not funny. Not, not funny for him. Because literally, I, you see him like trying to cough up, come, <coughs> like he's, trying, he, he's drowning, trying to come up. And at that point, listen, if there's people from PETA in here, I'm sorry, don't care. We had to apply, we had to liberally apply, not just apply, liberally apply the escrima stick of lawn justice. Hand it to Alex. He had impeccable form. One strike, one over the top. Mm. And uh, this is the result. There he is. That's the little troublemaker that was that was damaging my lawn. That's who did it. And the thing is, I was spiteful. I was I was still upset about it. Even though he was dead, I was still mad about it. I left him out there for a couple of hours. I, 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 we washed him off and I put him, I left him right on the spot. So if any of his little, his other mole buddies the habit will go by. I mean, most tend to hang out with a bunch of other people, but I mean, they tend to be, you know, they kind of hang by themselves quite a bit. But if anyone else is walking by, they would see that and know there's tons of lawns around here. Stay away from this one. So that's my story. I'm sure I get to tell it again at some point. It was, um, I haven't been that mad in a long, long time because guys, you know, it's, it's one thing you wake up in the morning, you see this, but then to actually see the video of it happening, like the utter and sheer disbelief of this, this little miscreant just, just like literally burrowing in my lawn live. It was just, it was too much. To, it was too much. to take. Literally, I had a meeting. I had a meeting. I had, I had one of the, um, the people on my team fill in for me. Literally, we had to go, we, dude, that had to be handled right now. So that's my story. Hope you guys got a laugh out of it. If there's people in here that really like moles, sorry, not sorry. And, uh, you know, to, to quote Denzel Washington in The Equalizer, the only, only regret is we only got to kill it one time. Terrible. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gut-wrenching thing to see that happen to your lawn. All right, you guys are enough here about my belly aching, enough of my pain and, and suffering and, and, and whatnot. Let's see who else we have here. We got Jackie Bear in the live stream tonight saying, what's up, Ron? Let's roll. What's going on, Jackie? Hopefully you are doing well, sir. And uh, Zoysia and versus Bermuda says, hey Ron, can I post a pic of my zoysia and Bermuda grass? You can, yeah. So, so he sent some pictures in ahead of time. And guys, I'll tell you some, some things that you can do in a second here when I get to retell the story again um, that allows you to get rid of moles if you didn't catch one in the act that will work fairly well. So a product that'll work really well for, 
four moles. In uh, my case, we were able to use the Eskrima stick of Law and Justice instead, but you know, in other cases, you, there's other things you can do. All right, so he wanted to share some pictures and he, he top dressed his lawn and he's been mowing it with a zero turn. He's got a bigger property. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the pictures here. They're actually pretty cool. Actually pretty cool. So this is his front lawn. And that's looking, you know, being cut with a zero turn, that's actually looking pretty good. I think he did a, a top dressing mix with the super sod level mix. And then you can see another angle there. Not bad, not bad. It's looking pretty smooth. I, I, I was telling him already, you know, he needs to put a real mower on it. Real mower will make a big difference. And then finally in the back is his zoysia, which looks, you know, smoother than the front. This picture, the quality of this picture isn't as good as the other ones, but overall for a lawn that was just top dressed, from what I understand, this lawn's only a couple years old. So it's really the second season is starting to get, you know, we starting to top dress it, starting to mow it more. And overall really good. I mean, the color looks great. Car looks great, he's mowing it, and again, top dressing it is, is only gonna help things as f once he, once one day whenever he transitions into real mowing. You know, it's a process, it's how it starts, you know, it's a gateway. All right, well, great stuff, uh, Zoysia versus Bermuda. Uh, thanks for sending the pictures. I was like showing off some of the great stuff the, um, that, that, that the viewers are doing, and I really, really do appreciate that, really do appreciate that. All right, Andrew Phillips is up next. He says, hello, hello, good topic, as I was thinking about leveling one Morgan but it's 103 to 105 degrees in my area of Texas. Yeah, so that's the thing, um, Andrew. I'm planning another top dress for next week. I will probably not be doing it myself. You know, one thing, I've got content like of me doing top dressing with machinery, doing it manually, doing it with sand, doing it with sand and soil, doing it only with soil. One thing I don't have is any content of showing you guys, hey, if you decide that you want to top dress your lawn, but it's just too much work, you don't want to do it yourself, what can you expect? Like, what would it, what's the process like if you have a service come and top dress your lawn? So next week, hopefully, if all goes to plan, we will find out. I'm gonna do a top dress um, probably just of the back, uh, and uh, you guys will get to see like how much faster it can be if you have someone else do it. So yeah, I hear you, Andrew. It's still a great time to do if you can tolerate the heat because the grass is gonna grow through it really quickly. So as far as, you know, from a, from a standpoint of recovery, it's still great. It's just a matter of can you tolerate it, you know what I mean? Because it's it's... It's a hot time of year to, I, I get it, to be out, to be out in the lawn uh, working this hard. All right, next up is Papa Mo's Low. He says, hey everyone, what's going on? Uh, Papa Mo's Low, and uh, hopefully you're doing well, sir. Hopefully you're doing well. And then um, when I get to Papa Mo's Low, we got to revisit VMH's comment. He sent me some, you know, some pictures of, of his top dressing projects. I got to show you guys that as well. So Papa Mo's Low says, Ron, I sprayed a solar print SC this year, but I'm getting dead grass across the lawn throughout the day. Thinking it's mites, but it's not sure. Is there an easy test for mites? Um, not that I can, not that I know. I mean, you can get down there and you can, if you look, because they're pretty small, you actually can, can pull the grass and actually look, you might be able to see them, but they are they are very, very small compared to other lawn insects. And then you said, if I have them, what do you recommend? Well, there's a couple of different products that will work for uh, for, for Bermuda mites or for, for lawn mites. The one that um, that I've recommended to viewers and that I've had good success with Millix that I had, um, I've said a friend of mine that works in the industry said, hey, if you want to get rid of mites, um, that's a great product, is a product called Delta Guard. Um, so I will se I'll send you a link here to it, Papa Mosel. Look into it. You might be able to find it locally, but if not, you can always, you can always use this link. Um, but this is labeled to take care of um, of lawn mites. I'm not sure if you're still in the chat, but let me see here. If if so, I'll just I'll uh, I'll post this for you, and you can uh, you can you can all check it out later after the fact. I can always email you after the fact too. Um, Mo's low uh, and Bermuda mites. So there you go. There's there's the product that um, that I'm I'm referring to. And if you have any other questions, let me know. Let me know. All right, guys, so on the topic of top dressing, I'm gonna keep moving faster tonight so I can get through the questions and comments a bit faster, but on the topic of top dressing, VMH, you guys know, Mr. Mr. Formerly known as Captain Crabgrass has been doing a ton of work in his lawn over the years, eliminating crabgrass. Um, I think he did some top dressing, he's been doing a lot of work. So I'm gonna show you guys some of what he, uh, some of his progress. So this is his, his lawn. Actually, let me get um, uh, Pablo Lowe's annotation off of here. So this is his lawn as of, of last year, 80-90% crabgrass um, in 2021. Uh, moving on next, you see in, now in 2022, now it's 100% Bermuda. And if you look over there on the right, on the right, you see that big pile of sand. So he's, uh, he's putting in some serious work here. Uh, you can see the, the size of it. And again, it looks a lot better. I got to tell you, um, VMH, great work going from crabgrass to Bermuda. You know, I know you you, uh, you and Conclorac are on first name basis. 
So this is his top dressing project. You can see he's out there manually doing it, laying it down. Here's the thing, guys, I will tell you. So I, one thing I, I wanted to point out here is you notice he's doing the big piles. That can work. Like doing it in, much of, in a bunch of piles can work. But here's the thing. If you ever, let me take this off like you guys can see what, I'm, see what I'm talking about. If you ever do that and you're using a top dressing mix that has a lot of organic, like, like very, very rich, it's more than just say 70, 30. And it has, especially if it's um, like any kind of pig solids or any kind of, again, any kind of a very, very rich compost that kind of smells. If you leave piles like this on your lawn for say, two to three hours. In other words, if you, if you dump them all out and you don't go out and you spread them within an hour or so, you can actually burn the lawn. Um, so just something to keep in mind. This is why in my top dressing videos, I don't really show this method because if you have a really large property, you might go out and just dump these all over the lawn and let them sit you know, for a day or so. And the next when you when you actually spread them out, you may notice you have some burn spots. So it doesn't always happen. It's really, it's really something that's limited to very, very, um, um, you know, when you have compost, that's, that's, that's just very, very rich. Like, you know, if it's, if the stuff smells, that's a pretty good, um, it's pretty good idea. It's, that it's, it's not one where you're going to want to do something like this because you, the chances of you burning the lawn are higher if you leave those piles there for an extended period of time. By extended period of time, I guess it's several hours. Um, when you, by the time you spread them out, you might notice a, a circle that's, uh, that's damaged. All right. So moving on, he continues, um, on with his top dressing work. So you see, he's got it all spread out now. Water it in like a boss. I like it. I dig it. And you can see it's settling in really nicely. I like I like how heavily you went. It wasn't too heavy. You still got some uh, some of the grass tips uh, showing through, which is great stuff. Great form. And overall, sir, that's going to grow back in really nicely. I like it. I like it. Put that leveling rake to work. You got a broom. You got uh, your leveling rake. You got everything you needed to 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 get that done. And I think these are these are pictures he sent today as of how it sits today. So you can see how it's already beginning to settle in and heal up nicely. So awesome work, awesome work, BMH. I know from where you were this time last year to where you are now, uh, you know, it's an awesome, you know, great, 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 um, great progress. So great work, you know, as far as, um, as far as, you know, doing a lot of stuff in your line. You kind of, you kind of remind me of Alex. Like Alex, when we did his lawn in 2020, um, it was, you know, he had some weeds in his lawn, but then we, we did everything like, you know, irrigation and top dressing and, and just like all out. And you're kind of the same way. You just, just went from once you once you had the process that you were that you had confidence in, you took it and ran with it, and you got you're getting the results. And I'm telling you, man, and by and it's so mid July, so mid August, it's gonna look really nice. It's gonna look really good. So keep sending pictures so we can keep us updated on how it does. How it does. But yeah, um, Andrew, going back to you, I, I definitely, you know, if you can stomach it, if you can get out there and do it, now's still a great time to um to top dress. The lawn's gonna grow through it really quickly. All right, next up is Ben Raham. He's back, he says, I did not want to spray weed control on young grass, but it was getting bad. Remember, um, Ben was the one that just did the Maya Bermuda um, uh, renovation, so good stuff. He says, uh, but Celsius applied for clover and spurge, can Clorox spot sprayed on the goose grass, crossing fingers now, mow, mow, and mow some more. Yeah, that's, that's a good plan, Ben. Again, I'm not a huge fan of spraying herbicides on brand new grass because again, Bermuda is harder than others, but I mean, if you get a little heavy handed, you know, if you don't get your application rate just right, you don't want to go out and take a chance of, of damaging and erasing a lot of the hard work you just put in to getting the lawn to where it is. Getting the lawn to where it is. Guys, so while I look for the next comment, what do you guys think? Was that, were, were we too hard on the mole? Should we have like put it in a box and taken it out in a field like, you know, five, 10 miles away and like relocated it somewhere? Or um, did he did he get what it was coming to him? I mean, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure there's gonna be people in here saying, oh, how could you kill the poor little mole? He was so cute, he was so special. He was special, all right. All right, Fair River Mute is up in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? Happy Friday, everyone. What's going on, uh, Daryl? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Next up is Tom V, who has cool season grass. So for cool season folk, here is some of the struggles that he's having. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday. Kentucky bluegrass is looking rough in a few areas from the recent dry and heat conditions. Um, not sure if my PGR plus turf plex caused burned out areas while I was out of town. Should I? Resume Turfplex. It's been three weeks since the last spoon feed. Put hydrotain and fungicide treatments down last month, so I don't think fungus help. So here's the thing you're, you're dealing with partially, Tom. You have Kentucky bluegrass, and it's in the middle of summer. It's really, really crazy hot right now, right? So even though um, you know you've you applying hydrotain is a great idea, you know you're still feeding it, which is also good too. I would back off on how heavily you're fertilizing your lawn because right now this is like if you think about about bluegrass or any kind of any kind of cool season grass. 
you know, it does really, really well in the spring, does really well in the fall, and in the middle, the summertime, like where we are right now, you're just really trying to get it to survive. So you're right now you're in the peak, you're in the peak of this of this hot time. In another three weeks or so, it's, the temperature should begin to start slowly falling off, three, four weeks to start falling off, and the grass should start doing better. So I would, I would keep up with what you're doing. If you wanna keep feeding it with Surflex, that's fine. Make sure you keep the rate low. Um, keep water on it and just give it give it time. Like this is a this is a tough time of year for cool season grass, and it's just um, you know patience is the um, is the is the order is the word of the day when it comes with everything that you are you're dealing with. It's I haven't seen pictures of it, so I don't know if it's a fungus problem, but it's it's likely just getting beaten up because of all the heat, right? So hope that helps. Again, in another three to four weeks, you should start seeing it turn a little bit to where as the as the the peak of the heat begins to fall off, the grass should start doing a bit better. Next up is Joseph Roberts. What's going on, Joseph? Thanks so much. Joe's always, Joe's like one of the biggest fans of the channel, man. You always watch him like on the Facebook groups or any of the other, um, you know, a lot of other forums and whatnot. I always see him uh, always, always mentioning the channel, live stream and, and uh, links to videos and that kind of thing. So Joe, I really do appreciate it. I may not say much, but I do see it. So thank you so much for that. Just happy Friday, Ron and everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. Hold strong in this heat. Never give up. Never surrender. <laughs> that was our, those are our words, all right? Those are our fighting words uh, yesterday. Yesterday, literally, man, it was, I mean, we were gonna wait because I knew, I knew we were gonna get him. I knew he had to come out. He didn't have enough time to like make, you know, to have like dig any escape tunnels. So, uh, so, and what's funny is you guys saw the picture of where, or like the, the spade, the, um, the small shovel being in the ground, where he tried to pop out was maybe three, two to three feet away from that. So literally he was backtracking, trying to get out the way he came, but uh, got him, he got, he got, got, got him before he was able to get away with it. So there you go. All right, Andrew Phillips is up next. He says, my yard is still green, hydrotain is holding, only deep watering two times a week. So guys, here's the thing, on the topic of hydrotain, um, you know, first of all, the liquid hydrotain is back in stock. That was, a, that was sold out. But here in the past week, uh, the nice folks at Ecologel um, released a product, they've not released, but now became available to us, um, a product called Foreplay. So it's, it's kind of a cool name, uh, kind of a fun play on words. But what it is, is it's four different products. So it's Hydrotain, their, um, their seaweed product, a non-ionic surfactant, and then Humate. So it's already sold out in the store, unfortunately. We, you know, we did some, um, like some media pushes and whatever, and, every, and you guys bought it all up. But it's a really, really cool product. I mean, it's almost, you can almost think of this like Hydrotain 2.0. So if you go to the Golf Course Lawn Store, go to Shop, and then go to Soil Moisture Management, um, right now it's sold out. Again, we just got the liquid Hydrotain back in stock, but this product is, um, well, the quartz, uh, uh, I think yeah, it's, it's all gone. Both are, 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 are sold out. But this product is um, four in one. You have Hydrotain, so it's primarily Hydrotain, the thing that the product you guys already know about. You have um, Sea Extra, which is a, their seaweed extract, and that, that is used in actually some of their, some of their liquid fertilizers. Um, Nutrizolve may have some. I think um, Bloomplex has some of it. So a lot of their, their fertilizers, Ecologel puts this Sea Extra product in it. They also include a, a non-ionic surfactant to help with penetration, to help it get down in the fat, to help it get in the soil better. And then finally, a Humate soil conditioner. So it's kind of an all-in-one kind of product, like four different products in one. And you know, I'm really excited to see the kind of results you guys get with it for localized dry spots or just as a replacement for hydrotain. Um, it's a it's an it's an awesome awesome option. It's a little bit more expensive than hydrotain is, but it's but you would expect that because of everything that's in it, right? It's hydrotain plus more stuff, right? So, if you're interested, get on the list when you go. If you notice here on the store, we have a. Um, a link here on the right, you can say notify me when it's available. So just sign up, drop your email in there, and whenever, as soon as it comes back in stock, you'll automatically get an email saying, hey, it's back, go buy it now. But it's, uh, but yeah, it, it lasted like two days, two to three days, and it was it was all gone. So cool product, something for you guys to put on your radar if you guys are fans of Hydrotain and want to see what the next level of, um, of soil moisture management from Ecologel is going to be. All right, next up is Sea Hill. He's in the house. He says, greetings and salutations, Ron and Lawn family. Thanks for the knowledge and providing great lawn concepts. When you know better, you do better. Iron sharpens iron. Thanks so much, um, Sea Hill. I really do appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And guys, we I know we're only like, you know, almost 30 minutes into the live stream so far, but we have over 100 people in here. There's 110 people in here and only 41 likes. Surely we can do better. Surely we can do better than that. So if you guys don't mind touching that like button, ever so gently, cost you absolutely nothing. You don't have to go to the store and buy anything. You don't have to become a channel member. I appreciate it if you guys do that, but I mean, it's something that's completely free 
And it's a great way to support the channel, sends great vibes to the YouTube algorithm and gets more people to come in here and hang out with us as we talk about lawn care. It just makes for a great time. So if you guys wouldn't mind doing that, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Next up is Andrew W. He says, with temps in the high 90s and hundreds in Texas, can I still oversee with Arden 15? You should be able to. I've never, um, I've never seeded this time of year when temps were this high, Andrew. The biggest issue you're gonna run into, I mean, really with, with Arden, this is when soil temps are 65 to 70 degrees or higher, right? So really 70, the, the mid 70s, low to mid 70s is really the, the sweet spot. You're gonna be way above that. The challenge you're gonna run into, uh, unless you have irrigation, is just keeping enough water on the, on the ground, right? You figure between, if you were to say you had um, the ability to go out and, and plant um, Bermuda seed tomorrow, right? You're gonna do a lawn renovation, you're gonna go put down Bermuda grass seed tomorrow. You literally have minimum two weeks, but really more like three weeks of watering in your case, at least three times a day to keep the soil moist, to make sure the seed doesn't dry out, you're looking at a really, really heavy watering bill to do that. So if that's not a big deal, you don't really care about the cost of doing it and you want to try it, you can, but it's it's definitely, um, you know, you've definitely moved into the time of year when it is more of a challenge just from the standpoint, not from soil time perspective, but from a perspective of being able to keep enough water on the on the soil to keep you know to keep everything hydrated so that the grass has a chance to germinate and not dry out and die as soon as it, as soon as it comes up right so kind of up to you I've never done it this late in the in the year I don't see a reason why it wouldn't work assuming you're able to you know, satisfy the watering requirements and and if you're going to do it you know get it done sooner than later because really you want it to get to germinate get it start growing get established because. You know, we are in mid-July by mid, I'm not sure where Texas you are, but say mid to late October, Bermuda is going to really start checking out. So you want to give it as much time as possible to really get established, start growing roots so that when winter gets here, the grass can survive through that. So don't wait too much longer if you're going to go forward with your Arden 15 uh, project. Good stuff. All right, LG is in the house. He says, happy Friday, long care peeps. What's going on, LG? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Hopefully you are doing spectacular as always. I'm sure you are. Sure you are. And uh, next up is um, next up is uh, Andrew. He's talking about foreplay. He says, "If foreplay gets back in stock, I would like to try some of that on my next treatment. It will be back in stock soon. I mean, I'm not sure if, um, by the middle of next week, but uh, the, the, the plan is to get it back in stock as soon as possible, Andrew. So definitely working on it. Uh, you know, as always, you know, you guys, you guys, the demand, the demand always always exceeds supply, but which is, I guess, is a good problem to have, right?" All right, next up is LG saying smash the like button. Thanks that for that, LG. I really do appreciate it. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, CS Mike says, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm looking to renovate my lawn to something I can mow real low. What seed mix or cultivar would you recommend? All right, so given that you're in Cleveland, you're going to want to go with a, a rye, a cool season grass of some sort. So a rye or Kentucky bluegrass, either one of those can work well. Um, you know, I hear a lot of good things about Baron Brugs seed. Like they make they make a, a good seed, a quality seed. I mean, I don't have from a, for direct experience. I've never actually I don't have a cool season lawn, but I've I have not I've yet to hear from anyone that's used their seed that has had any anything really negative to say about it. It tends to be a bit more pricey, but it is a really good grass seed, a very well regarded grass seed. So something to, to consider. Um, so Mike, it really depends on you. If you want, um, I, as far as like stripes, I think. That in my opinion, like ryegrass stripes in, like, incredibly well. It's beautiful, beautiful grass type if stripes are really your thing. Uh, Kentucky bluegrass will spread. It has the ability to spread better than uh, than ryegrass. So it really depends on which one which one you're after. You can also do a blend if you want. You know, if you're gonna be real mowing it, there's also um, some blends of out there of KBG and rye that also look really look really good too. So it's it's your your call. But really, one of those two is what I would suggest: a ryegrass or a Kentucky bluegrass or a blend of the two of them. If your plan is to real mow them, and then you know, as far as selecting. Which cultivar, like, you know, when you go to Barenbrug or whoever you decide to get your seed from, like, ask them, give them a call. And it's like, this is a big deal, right? It's a big, it's a big, big uh, decision. Like, once the grass is in, it's kind of difficult to get rid of it. So speak to them and say, hey, listen, I'm trying to grow the, mow the grass or maintain it at whatever height happens to be for you. You know, maybe say, you try, say five eighths or three quarters of an inch, whatever, whatever height you decide to, to cut it at. And say, hey, does this grass seed, does this cultivar, does it tolerate that well? So make sure that you, you know, you do your research on um, that the grass will, will tolerate being cut 
at the heights that you're after. I would not go to one of the big box stores and buy like their Kentucky Bluegrass blends. I would not do that. I mean, if you're really serious about getting the best result, you're really gonna wanna go out and put some time and do some research between Kentucky Bluegrass and rye or a blend of the two uh, as far as which, um, which mix will tolerate being cut short, depending on how short you wanna cut it. Hope that helps, sir. If you need anything else, let me know. Let me know. All right, Patrick Gates is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I'm going to have to level my Bermuda lawn here next week or so, and I'm getting excited. Got a level, got a leveling rake. Awesome. That's a really important part of leveling your lawn. Excited to have a better time mowing. Manual reel, push reel mowing, leaving a wavy lawn. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing you're going to run into. Like, you can reel mow with a, a push reel mower, and you can get a, a good result with that, right? It can look decent. Um, but eventually you'll see the limitations, especially as it begins to get thicker. Like as you, this time of year, if you're someone that's been real mowing since like, you know, late March, early April, your grass is going to really start thickening up and the washboarding problem that you're describing will become more of an issue if you don't do something to thin it out. If you don't turf rake it or verticut it or something to, just to thin out the grass a bit, you're going to start running into the waviness or the, the washboarding problem that you're talking about. The same thing can happen with a powered real mower, but less it's 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 less pronounced or less prominent than on what you than what you see when you use a a, a manual push reel mower. So just something to keep in mind uh, as far as that goes. So yeah, keep going, man. Let us know how you uh, how you get on if we can help with anything else. I really do appreciate it. Got a super chat here from Mr. Robert Rainey. What's going on, Robert? Thanks so much for that. I really appreciate super it. Super chat received. He says, "Thank you for teaching about applying liquids easier. It's broken me out of my shell, and the results show. Best wishes." I really do appreciate that, Robert. The biggest thing, you know, that's the thing. The biggest thing about about liquids um, is, in my in my mind, it's just having a properly calibrated backpack sprayer. Because if you do that, if you have that, then your ability to walk the lawn at a correct pace and make sure you're putting down, you know, X ounces of product over a thousand square feet, like that's the hardest part. It's solved, right? So if you take the time to do that and practice a little bit with just water in the sprayer, when there's like there's no risk to doing that, um, you can figure out a you know, a walking pace that works for you fairly well, and then just start start lowering your application rates and then slowly work your way up. So happy to hear that, that uh, you know, that we played a small part in getting you out of your shell on as far as applying liquid products. And uh, it's it's a huge, huge benefit, man, a huge bonus. I, uh, I I love it, especially for like things like plant with regulator fertilizer. It's it's crazy how much faster the um, the lawn responds to liquid products than it does for does for granular. Not to mention that it's just a big time saver, right? So if you want to get out there and you want to do your, your fertilizer and biostimulants and um, your plant growth regulator, you can do all that in the tank at the same time, spray it all at once and just save yourself a bunch of time in the process. Thanks so much for the super chat, sir. I really do appreciate it. Next up is Real Rollers in the house. Lee's in the house saying, happy Friday. What's going on, Lee? Hope you're doing well from Real, Real Rollers. For those of you that don't know, Real Rollers are the makers of the grass topper. They also sell parts for your McLean, Swordman, um, True Cut. I don't know if they have any True Cut mowers in stock. I know that uh, that you know this time this year has been really rough as far as getting mowers, but as far as just great set of guys that know a ton about real mowing, ton about real mowers that can, uh, you know, that are always willing to help out feel free to reach out to the guys at Real Rollers. Eric, Andrew, or Lee. Great, great, great cast. Great cast. All right, next up is Joseph Roberts. He says, let's get those likes up. Mash it. I appreciate that, Joseph. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. And then next up is Kevin G. This is a good question. He says, at what point in the season should I stop applying PGR to my Bermuda lawn? It's a great question, uh, Kevin. I tip my last application, depending on temperature, um, meaning how quickly the grass and also how quickly the grass is growing tends to be September. So September, middle of September, this year, middle of September will be my last time. Um, last year, because it was warmer, I did my last app in October and that was it, right? So what he's talking about, guys, is um, plant growth regulator. The one that I like and use is this one called Primo Max. Great product, has built-in measuring cup, which makes applying it super duper easy, right? So um, so yeah, so yeah, I mean, it, it's really up to you, Kevin, depending on where you are in the country, but September timeframe is when you're gonna wanna start looking at, at pulling that back. September, October at the absolute latest, but in most cases, September is the last app for most for most people. Two Trillas in the house, he says, uh, what's up? Happy Fridays, happy Friday, Two Trilla. King Khan says, what's up? What's going on, sir? Like it? And he says, okay, Two Trillas back. He says, Ron, you have to tell me, how did you stick? How did you stick to that mole so quickly? And were there was there more? Um, so we can retell the story again. When we first told it, there were only there were only like a, you know thirty. There were only like fifty or so of you guys in there. So guys, uh, for those of you that have joined since the live stream started, we're all here. You get to share the story again. I'm sure you get to laugh at me again. 
yesterday, yesterday morning, Thursday, as I was going out to go get the mail, I was going out to get the mail, I looked out at the front lawn, and this is what I saw. Now, if you've ever seen this in your lawn, man, it just makes me sick seeing this all over again. Oh, oh, it's painful. If you see that, what that is, it's a mole. It's a mole that was that was digging across my lawn. I figured, you know what? Moles do what they do. They're gonna dig across the lawn, they, and they probably did it in the middle of the night. But I was wrong. So I have security cameras for the front lawn, and I, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna fire them up and see, you know, was was this was this lion growing in the middle of the night? Was it growing? When, when did it start doing it? So if you look here, if you look at the left side of your screen right now, what you're finding, if you see that little line that's growing, what this is, this footage is sped up like, I don't know, 20,000% or something crazy. It's, it's really, really much faster. What you're seeing is about, is the space about two hours in 30 seconds. So you can see the line literally growing across the lawn as, you know, as cars go by, as the, the day's getting brighter and brighter. Guys, that was the mole. That was, um, that was the mole that was trying, deciding that he was going to, you know, have fun at my expense in the front lawn. Here's the thing, a, a part of a part of why I think this happens, because a couple of things that cause like moles look for, right? They like, um, obviously like um, lawns, there's a lot of insects, grubs, earthworms, where they, they, there's, there's food source, right? But they also like wet soil. They also, they also like softer soil. With all the rain we've been getting here lately, we've been getting like, like tons and tons of really heavy rainfall. And I did a test, um, not with this. I have like a um, like a like a spade type tool, like a, like a poker type tool for moving weeds. And literally, that thing is like ooh, 14 inches long. I was able to take it and just push it right down, straight down to the handle in the soil with no problem. So, so overall, the soil is softer, which is why I think it was attracted to the lawn because it was easy for it to burrow through. As you saw, a couple hours, it was making really good time, right? So, the fact that it did this couldn't let it go. So reach out to Alex, next door neighbor. You know, he's really good at killing snakes, killing moles, killing any kind of lawn vermin, anything that's just bad in your lawn, he's the guy to go to. So he comes over with a shovel and um, some other tools and I block off the area, the, the side that it came from. So if you, for those of you that are just hearing this, so if you guys remember looking right here, watch it pan back. He started digging from right there. See where the pavers are, the left side? That's where he started, where he entered the lawn. So what I did was, you know what? If we're gonna go after him and we're not gonna let him get away, I took a shovel and I blocked off like his escape pass. I said, you know what? I know that he's in here somewhere because he was just digging there. He didn't have time to like dig like an escape tunnel or anything like that. He's probably still in there. So we put this shovel down, shoved it in, right, to block off his escape path, and then got a garden hose and just started flooding the tunnel. Like put it in there, started flooding it. Literally, you're watching the water run down, run down, run down, run down, starting to bubble up. And about a minute and a half later, Minute and a half later, we're sitting there just looking at the ground and literally, I mean, I for like for a fraction of a second, not again, maybe not not even that long, you know, a, a a a nanosecond, I felt bad for him a little bit because I saw him like he 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 like literally like broke the broke out of the butt out of the water and you see his eyes, he's like coughing up, he's like he's like because because they can't they need air right they can't they can't they they, they they can't inhale water they can't breathe water so he's he was drowning and literally as he came up as he came up Alex saw him I saw him. And then the the escrima stick of Lawn Justice came out. Louis Shore to Alex, handed it to him, and Alex again with, with excellent form, one good strike, you know, right over the top, and he was uh, he was done for. It was it was game set match. Mole was gone, and this is the results of it. That's the results of it. He got he he, uh, he met the stick, and it's crazy how something that small, crazy how something that small can do that much damage that quickly. I mean, literally, that that little that time lapse you guys saw was a couple of hours, and he literally because when he did the, the thing is, I wouldn't have been so mad had it happened at night. I may have gotten like I got some of these things. I want to show you guys an option for, for killing moles. Like these, this is what I always tell you guys to use for getting rid of moles um, if you have them in your lawn. Like the, this Tomcat mole killer. It's it's uh it has like these little like worm type things that simulate earthworms that they like to eat. So you take these, put them in areas along the channel that the, the trench they dug, and they'll eat this, and the poison will kill them. You know, this is an option. But given that he was just there and I knew he was there, it was just, you know, you dug up my lawn, time to get some payback. So that's the story of the mole uh, to Trilla um, for the second time. And I just, I, the guy, I was, I was, it, that ruined my day. I was so mad. I was mad all day. About it. I went to sleep last night mad about it. This morning when I went outside and got to get the mail, I was still upset when I saw the damage from it. It was, oh, so bad. All right, uh, Cameron uh, Hedrick is in the house next. He says, yeah, buddy, it's a hot one. Yeah, man, the temps are hot, but I mean, that's, it should fall off here soon or begin to taper off here in a little bit soon, Cameron. It's not gonna be this hot for another, yeah, 
another month or so should start um, falling off a bit. Next up is No uh, Almazana. I think I'm saying this right. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. I apologize. He says, good evening. I have a McLean 25 inch and I'm running the smooth roller. Is there a big difference between changing to a grooved roller? Uh, yeah. I mean, is it is it a night and day difference? Um, it's not a night and day difference, but it's but there is a difference. I mean, it's, it's definitely an improvement in cut. So I will say this, you know, I don't know how low you're mowing, but if you're, you know, if you're real mowing three quarters of an inch or lower, so 0.75 or lower, you're gonna notice an improvement in quality of cut from going to a grooved roller. Reason why is the grooves allow them, like a the smooth roller kind of rides along the surface. It tends to, 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 tends to float a bit more. So the cut that you get with a smooth roller isn't as good as the cut that you get with the groove roller, because if you literally got these combs, the grass, the, the, these teeth that the, the grass can pass through, so you get a cleaner cut uh, overall, right? Uh, the negatives to a groove roller, um, turning the mower is a little bit harder because it, it bites in a bit more. And if you decide to go to a groove roller, be sure to raise your height of cut up just a little bit. In other words, if you are using a smooth roller on your mower now, and you just switch to a groove roller and change nothing else, your, your, your height of cut's gonna go lower. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, right? Because you have, with a smooth roller, you've got more surface area holding the, the, the weight, like supporting the weight of the mower. With a groove roller, there's less of that. So it's gonna, it's literally gonna, the front is gonna sink in just a little bit more, just a little bit. You know, maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch, um, maybe not even that much, but it, it, it's, it is gonna make a difference in the height of cut. So you may have to raise the mower just a little bit, but I highly recommend it. Like every mower that I get from now on, if that's an option, I, I'm gonna get a grooved roller with it because it's it makes a big difference in the cut quality. I really, really like it. So something to consider, it's, it's really up to you whether you um, you know you wanna go that route or not. I think the guys at Real Rollers, I think Lee here's, here's in the live stream, they can hook you up with one. But uh, but yeah, it's I, I, I had a smooth roller on my True Cut for the first, let me see, I got it in 2018. And last year I went to the grooved roller. So what is that, 23 years, three years? And so three years I was cutting with the smooth and then I went to the grooved and the grooved is better. So something to keep in mind. All right, Chris Ferguson said, can you explain the new product foreplay? Yeah, Chris, I think I just explained, I just talked about it a little bit. So I know this is probably earlier, but it's it's four products in one. So it is Hydrotain C Extra, which is their seaweed product. Uh, there's a non ionic surfactant and they also have some Humate. So it's got a bit of, um, you know, soil conditioning or so, um, products to help improve the quality of the soil as well as um, helping with moisture management, with water retention, right? So it's a, it's a great product. I think it's gonna do really well and it's currently sold out, but it, when it comes back in, you can pick some up and you can uh, give it a shot for yourself. Okay, next is Eric B. Eric B says, um, hey Ron, uh, all in love. Um, I listened to Long Hair Nuts podcast and guess what? Um, and guess what degree in in grass? It says Bermuda is a weed. Don't hate them. See why? Why? Why was that necessary? Uh, I'm, you know, a Moses is digging up my lawn. You're gonna come call my grass a weed now? He says, "Don't hate the messenger." I tend to agree. A weed is considered anything you don't want in the lawn by fescue. So okay, and so in that case, I hear you. I hear you that in your situation, Bermuda would definitely be considered a weed. However, since since we're throwing daggers. You know, I know that Long Care Nut has St. Augustine, which, you know, is considered a grass, but you know what? It's funny. You know, quinclorac, which which will kill or damage crabgrass, will also kill or damage St. Augustine. So it kind of makes you wonder, you know, if the two are kind of related. So, I mean, I know everyone wants to say, you know, St. Augustine, not crabgrass, but kind of, sort of, maybe is kind of a weed. So, but no, I get it, man. If you had Bermuda in a cool season lawn, heaven help you. You know, it's gonna be, it's, it's a nightmare to get, get rid of. So I, I get it, I get it. But I do love and appreciate my Bermuda. As a matter of fact, I double cut the Bermuda today, the back lawn, and this is what the lawn looks like today. Actually, I, I, did, I scalped a little bit here. You'll see at the very, very end, so if I can pause it and show you guys, maybe if I can be faster, if I can show you. Let's see, right, well, no, you can't see. It's a very small scalp mark because I didn't empty out the grass catcher. That, that grass catcher, in the uh, for the on on the C27 holds so much clippings that if you don't empty it out after, you know I don't know um, once it gets more than a quarter full it does it will change the height of cut so I had a small little scalping mark if you guys want to see I'll show you guys on a YouTube story or something like that so but yeah overall I think you can make Bermuda look quite good despite it being a weed Eric so there you go all right next up is Todd Hickey he says uh, real mowing this season for the first time love it. 
Following your program in Yard looks super. However, I cannot get the defined stripes that you have. Established 2419, Eastern North Carolina mowing at three quarters of an inch. Yeah, so some of that, Todd, is, um, is the, the cultivation program that I'm doing now, right? So what you're seeing here, if I can show you again real quick, so I can find a good spot to pause it once it uh, turns where you can see the stripes well. What you're seeing here is not only is the lawn, not only is the lawn being, um, like, the, where, where the, are being burned in, right? So I'm, I'm mowing, even though I mow the lawn lengthwise each time, and then also the way you're seeing the stripes lay down now, I'm, I'm, these stripes, I do the same way each time, which helps, right? But in addition to that, whenever I verticut the lawn or I turf rake the lawn, which is, again, it's a, they call it scarifying, but I mean, really, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not getting down to the soil, so I'm not really scarifying anything. I'm more like I'm combing it. I also comb it or turf rake it in the same direction that I mow. So on those light stripes where the lawn, where the grass is laying away, I verticut it and I mow and I turf rake it in that same direction. And when I mow it, I mow it in the same direction. So what you get is a couple of things. One, you really train the grass to lie in that direction, which helps the stripes get better. Uh, but also by um, by verticutting it regularly and by turf raking it regularly and getting all that debris out. In other words, don't turf rake it and leave all the trash in the lawn. Don't verticut it, leave it on the lawn. By getting all that out, you get a boost in color because there's not a lot of brown debris. There's not like dead grass clippings that are competing with the grass with the green grass for color. So what you see is literally just the color of the lawn. Like what you see, and it's not even looking that great right now. It looks it looks okay, but. Um, you know, it's you know this was verticut two weeks ago, so it's not looking its absolute best now. But what you but the, the but the nice thing about verticutting and turf raking is what you see is just the color of the grass. Other than small scalping, if you have the scalp areas, other than that, it's just green green foliage. So the stripes get better defined, the color looks better, and uh, it just looks really cool. It's, it's more work, but it looks it looks really really good. So consider doing that. Consider doing that. Consider, um, you know, if you can get yourself a scarifier or a turf rake. And again, the way I recommend doing it is do not, don't set it to where the turf rake is getting down into the dirt, in the soil. Don't do that. Literally set it to where it's it's running. If you have the ability just to, to do that, set it to where it's, um, you know, two to four millimeters above the surface. So that way you're literally just, you just literally take, I'm taking debris out of the grass, you're taking like the like the 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 dead grass clippings, that stuff out of the, out of the, the, the bridge, actually out of the sward. You're removing that. Um, but you're not getting out there and ripping up the grass and tearing, and making a, bringing a big mess. It's going to take you a long time to recover from. If you do it that way, you can do it pretty regularly. You can do it weekly, and there's not really going to be a change in color. It's not going to really damage the grass that much, um, and it's going to help boost the stripe action. The stripe action is going to get on point if you do that. But do the, but the big thing is, you, it's a it's a little bit and often not super, super crazy aggressive. You know what I mean? Even when I verticut it, I set the verticutter to two millimeters. I don't really get down into the soil. I'm literally just, just you know, I'm, I'm getting it just just above the surface of the soil when I'm verticutting. I'm not being super aggressive about it because, because I don't want the lawn to look, you know, really ugly. And if I want to do it monthly, I want to do that without having a big hit in color to the lawn in the process. So, so things to keep in mind. Hope that helps. Okay, next up is AJ. Uh, he says, "Freeze the gopher." No, I think I didn't freeze it. So here's the thing: there's um one of um, one of the friends, one of uh, one of our friends um, has a um uh, is a college professor. I think he teaches like exactly it do to something to do with nature, like outdoor habitats and this kind of stuff. Someone like someone that their lawn is not like my lawn because they want it to have like you know uh, again it's not a monoculture. They want to have like weeds and all kinds of stuff in it. So he wanted the dead um, mole, so I took it to him. So there you go. So yeah, I don't have it anymore. It's gone. He said it sat on the lawn for a couple of hours to set to serve as an example to his buddies. But then I boxed it up, double bagged it, took it, and um, he's doing whatever he's going to do with it, I guess. All right. Next up is T one thousand. It says it's time for Friday night mole boil. Yeah. If you, here's the thing. If you guys want to see, so right now I've actually calmed down quite a bit. If you guys are subscribers to the channel and go to my YouTube store, as you can see on mobile. So you go to the. Um, you have to. You do on your phone. Look up my YouTube stories, which the way to see that, I'm not sure if I can actually show you here. I think I can show you that. Let's see. Can I? So if you, um, um, hey, look at that. I'm live. <laughs> but if you scroll here, um, what you will find is eventually you will get to a part that looks like this, right? And this is like the all your YouTube, your YouTube story section. In there, you'll see Ron Henry. And um, if you click on that, you'll be able to see like my raw reaction after seeing this. Cause I'll tell you, I was cussing the mold out. He was dead, he got hit. And I was, I was, man, I went, I was, it was, it was like an episode of Scar, I was like a, I was doing a Scarface reenactment on him. 
I was I was hot. I've not been that mad in a while in a long time. So if you want to get a good laugh at my expense, you know, subscribe to the channel. Go fire. You can only see it on mobile. Uh, look up the YouTube stores, and you'll see, you know, me having words with um, with Marvin the Mole, who is no longer with us. All right, next is Mike Harvey. He says, I hope it's not too late to top dress. Got a guy coming in two weeks. Question is, do I scalp now or scalp the day before or not scalp at all? Height of cut is three quarters of an inch. Uh, so three quarters of an inch is a great height, um, uh, Mike. I don't know that I would really take it down much lower than that, scalp much lower than that. I, I would probably just leave it, leave it there. That's not, I mean, in other words, this time next week, if all goes to plan, the lawn will get top dressed. I am not gonna change my height of cut between now and then. What I will do between now and then is I will probably, not probably, I will, I will turf rake it a bunch of times to really clean it out. I will also, I'll probably verticut it once to thin it out a little bit, get the, let the top dressing mix really get down in, in all the little small um, uneven areas, little wear areas in the lawn to really help that you know integrate better. But outside of that, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna change the height of cut on the lawn itself. I'm just going to just thin it out just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of thinning out, and then let it get top dressed. So yeah, so it's up to you. Three quarters of an inch is a great height. I wouldn't necessarily go much lower than that unless your plan is to maintain the lawn lower than that. I would just, I would leave it exactly where it is and uh, and top dress it. Top dress it, have a, have a grand old time, man. All right, next up we got, before I do that, we got a couple of, of, uh, of super chats here. Let me go make sure, make sure I take care of those. First one is from Rob Short. Rob's in the house. Thanks so much, Rob, I appreciate super it. Super chat perceived. He says, hey Ron, I've been seeing some spots in my grass that look like I've scalped the lawn. Grass, here we go, watch. Grass is super thick at one and three quarter inches. I emailed you pics, any ideas? Yeah, so here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing, people will tell you that you can't turf rake Bermuda and it's not really necessary to vertic up Bermuda. Not true, really not true. The, the, when you start doing like, when you start real mowing a Bermuda lawn, um, especially especially when you're cutting it a little bit short. He's not even cutting it that short, but really this time of year when the lawn starts growing more aggressively, you need to do something to help thin it out because what'll happen, if you guys saw the video that I did last week, I released last week on, uh, on some tips for having a great lawn during the summer, two tips that I mentioned in that video were turf raking the lawn if you can, or power raking it, and then verticutting it. Reason being is what you're gonna find is areas of the lawn that didn't scalp before that had no issues before, as it gets really, really thick and the mower starts riding, like begins floating on the lawn a bit more, you're gonna start getting scalping in areas that you didn't get scalping before. So Rob, I haven't seen the pictures yet. I have to look here after, after the live stream. But I, given this time of year, the one thing I will tell you, if you can get your hands on a verticutter or a turf rake, verticutter probably being the better of the two, on a, on a verticutter, verticut the lawn. It's gonna help. Now here's what's gonna happen. You do that, depending on how aggressively you set it up, it's gonna look a little ugly for a week or so, but then it's gonna recover and it's gonna look really good after the fact. So this time of year, again, the lawn begins to really thicken up. Another option too is if you don't have access to a verticutter, you don't have access to a turf rake, you can do a mid-season scalp. There are people that do that. The downside to doing that is it's gonna look uglier than what, if you, what it would look if you just verticut it, right? So if you scalp it, it's gonna look, it's gonna look pretty nasty for probably a couple of weeks, you know, 10 days, two weeks, thereabouts. So it's your it's your call which way you wanna go about doing it, but thinning, there is some benefit to thinning out the lawn this time of year, especially if you're someone that is real mowing it, you're mowing a lot, that just tends to stimulate a lot of growth and it can benefit from being thinned out a bit. So a big part of why, again, you look at, you know, you're just looking at, my, looking at my lawn, you guys are saying, hey, the stripes look great, in general, the color looks awesome is because of that. It's because of not only the mowing and the fertilization and everything, but also the verticutting and the turf raking to help to, to, to manage how quickly or how much how much, um, how much much material is in the lawn at any given time. So something to keep in mind, something to try if you can get your hands on a verticutter or a turf rake. Worst case, you can scalp it. But if you decide to do that, it really, regardless of which one you decide to do, you need to get the debris out. So don't verticut it and just leave all the trash on the lawn. Don't turf rake it and leave it on the lawn. And if you scalp it, obviously don't leave the debris on the lawn. Like, you know, whatever, whichever way you decide to go, um, do that and then get it out, take it out, get rid of it. And that's gonna, you're gonna find that the lawn is gonna look better in 10 days to two weeks um, after, after you do that. So something to keep in mind. All right, next up is, and again, thanks for the super chat. And then we have another super chat here, one from Robert Mahor Mahoros. Super Robert, you keep telling me you're gonna promise to tell me how to pronounce your name properly because I'm sure I'm still butchering it up. He says, Princess Cut had discussion about using uh, Blue Def diesel exhaust fluid as an end fertilizer. I have a diesel, I would like a diesel vehicle and would like to try on my Xeon. Would like your blessing, it's okay. 
It's your call. I've I've never done it. I mean, it's contain it contains nitrogen, but I put here's the thing. I put doing that in the same category as using like dish soap as a surfactant with your with your when you're using like a herbicide or something. Could you do it and would it work? Probably. But um I guess the question is why? You know, I mean, it's it's other than it's cost, it's cheap. It is cheap, right? But I mean, you know, I figure a bottle of Turfplex or even a bottle of, you know, fertilizer you can go get locally. You go to site one, get some get liquid fertilizer is not that much more expensive. And it's a product that is specifically made for your grass. It's not only going to have nitrogen in it. It's going to have, you know, depending on the formulation you get, you're going to have some iron in there, some micronutrients. You're going to have some other things as well, which has, you know, other benefits. So, I mean, it's, I get it. If you, if you need a nitrogen source and you're really, really on a super, super tight budget, I get it. But it, for me, it falls more in like the gimmick kind of category, kind of like showing mixing like Coke and, you know, you know, whatever, a bottle of wine and beer and all this kind of stuff and using that to treat your lawn. Can you do it? Sure. Will it help? Maybe. But like using a proper micronutrient that's actually formulated for grass is probably going to be better. So it's, it's really up to you, uh, Robert. If you want to give it a shot, especially if you already got some laying around, why not? You know, why not? Give it a shot and see what kind of results you get. Um, but for me, I would rather just stick to products that are that are specifically formulated for grass. You know what I mean? So that's my two cents on it. Let me know um, um, how you get on. And if you decide to do it, uh, do it, do it this way. Do a test plot. Like get a small area and spray it with um, with uh, the the blue def, and then take another area and um, or just do another area and just treat it the way you normally are treating it, whether it's just with granular or, or your other liquid products, and make and just have that that one that one test area, just just the only liquid you put on there, just being this um, this um, nitrogen fertilizer, and see how it looks. Compare the the results, and then you can you can uh, see for yourself which way which way you like. But for me. It falls kind of in the gimmick category. Again, if you already got some, give it a shot. Not going to hurt anything, but it's not something that I'm uh, I'm going to do on my lawn. All right, appreciate the super chat, sir. I really do appreciate the support. And let me know if if you decide to do it, take pictures. Like take pictures before and after, and share them, and we'll share everyone on the live stream uh, how you uh, how you do. All right, next up is um, Eric B. He says. Uh, much love, Ron. Sorry about the mole in the lawn. Summer, the stress of summer is real. Yeah, man, it is. It is. Uh, it is real. I mean, moles are a new thing, but yeah, for for Bermuda, this is a great time. This is our go time. Like the grasses are doing great, save a mole digging a trench through it. Uh, but if you can tolerate it, the Bermuda loves it. You know, for warm season grass, this is our go time. For you guys, not so much with your cool season lawns, but you know, for uh, for us, our grass. Loves it. Loves heat. Loves sunlight. And we got a lot of that right now. A lot of both. All right. Next up is Dalen Krause. He says, hey, Ron, it's been a while since I can make the live stream. Hope all is well. I am doing well. I'm recovering. I'm still... Here's the thing, guys. I mashed down the area where all the um, where all the damage was. I mowed it. It doesn't look that bad. If the lawn gets top risk, I might next week, I might, I'll probably get some sand from them on their hair and just do that one area, touch up that one area a little bit. It's not that big a deal. It's just the fact that it's just the fact that that now my man decided he was gonna do it in broad daylight. It was like he just had it was just no respect. Just complete. You know, you know I was I you know when it when it happened, I flashed back. You ever, any of you guys seen Caddyshack? I'm probably like dating myself. So I don't know how old I am. But you ever see Caddyshack when he was going after the gopher? I think it was a gopher that he was trying to trying to kill. And literally all the thoughts of that just came to my mind because it because it when I saw it, it was like my blood boiled. It became absolute war. Like he had to go. Had to go. You know, meetings, you know, someone else is gonna have to handle this. This mold's gotta go down right now. So uh, so yeah. But um, I'm doing all right, Dalen. I'm recovering. You know, life goes on. <laughs> all right, C Hill says, regulate, yeah, regulator's not up. So Warren G, man. See again, yeah, you, you gotta be old school to know to know that, to know that one. That's exactly how it was. That's exactly how it went down. All right, Ben Raham is up next. I gotta speed up, man. We have a lot of got a lot of questions here. He says, for those of us that struggle physically, the tow behind equipment is worth considering. I could not um, without. I could not do it without a backpack sprayer. It's not for everyone. Same for a four, for a four stroke um, stick edger, I guess. So I didn't know that, Ben. So I, I get what you're saying as far as a tow behind equipment for like spraying, but there's a, there's other tow behind edgers too. So I don't. I didn't. I didn't realize that that was a thing, but it, it might be. Um, if so, you guys send a picture of it. I want to see that. I like to see that. But yeah, I get it. I mean, especially if you have a bigger property, some of you guys have, you know, half an acre, you know, because I mean, you have half an acre, an acre. There's no way you're going to do that with a backpack sprayer. I mean, you, you could, but it's just, it's, 
you're not going to want to um, you're not going to want to be out there a couple times a month walking an acre and spraying product because it's not like you have to do it. You, you gotta. It's not just walking the acre once. Like you got to spray. You use a concentrated mix. Let's so say you could spray ten thousand square feet on a backpack spray. Let's so say you did that, which would be that would be impressive. But so you did, you could cover one, ten thousand square feet with one sprayer. That's still like four and change fill up. So you got to walk way out there, spray, come back, fill up again, and it's just it's a huge hassle. So I, I get for a larger property how a tow behind is attractive. I get it. I get it. All right. Seahill says the mole's not happy. Get her done. Oh yeah. Well, we we got it done. All right. We did. We did. We got him. He was he again. The um, the the Eskrima stick of lawn justice, a, uh, you know, it's red too, so kind of it's kind of fitting. Don't worry, I washed it off. It was it was, it was uh, it, there, there was no material on there. It was actually more. I think it was just blunt force trauma. He didn't suffer. I mean, for anyone to be fair, he didn't suffer. It was like it was like one hard pop, and he was like he was dead right away. So it wasn't like he suffered or anything like that. But he wasn't. He wasn't getting out of it. He was not on the relocation program. He was not on the relocation program. He was on, on immediate death row. Uh, once he came, uh, once he surfaced from that, from this, from the, from underneath the, the ground. So, yep. <laughs> I says payback is something. It is. It is. It certainly is. All right. We got Todd Hickey here. He says, I'm following your program. My yard looks great, but I am fighting fungus spots with frequency. Do you use subsequent fungicide applications at specific intervals after the initial application? Yeah. So, a, most fungicides are going to work for about 28 days. About one month is what you get out of a fungicide app, Todd. So if you're using something like Headway, what I would recommend is if you are treating an active um, uh, active outbreak, an active problem in your lawn, let's say you did it at the beginning of July, you would do another one like the third to fourth week of July. So just closer to the end of the month, you would do another application. Um, and that's going to do that, – that, it takes that to, to, to one, to arrest any 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 – um, active in uh, lawn diseases within your lawn and then prevent it from getting any worse. So typically, like last year, for example, when I had some large patch in the back lawn, I did two applications, right? I did one in April when it first started showing up and I did another one in May. And that did a great job as far as one, like stopping it from, from getting any worse. And then the May application just ensure that it didn't come back and didn't get any worse. So two normally works fairly well. Um, you might, you know, if, if that's not doing it for you if you're, or, or after even if you're doing two applications, the disease, the, the lawn disease is still there. You might want to consider then going to a different fungicide, uh, you know, other than Headway, because Headway's two. You've got um, I forget which groups. I think it's group, group three and eleven. But I think I believe that's correct. But it's, it's oxystrobin and propiconazole. So then maybe if if you do a couple of rounds of Headway and that's still you, you know you're still having the problem, then maybe changing to something else would be something you, you might want to consider. But in general, Headway is, is pretty good about eliminating. Um, you know, most lawn diseases, most lawn, most fungus problems in residential lawns. Something else you might want to consider too is what's um, what's happening that's causing that's causing the fungus issues. I think Todd, didn't you um, you recently top dressed, right? So I know you when you top dressed and you also did your sodding project. If I'm thinking about the same person, you've been watering a lot. So uh, while we do want to keep water on the sod, you might want to start pulling that back just a little bit, just a touch, and seeing if that helps because. You know, a lot of excess water in going into the lawn into, into the soil can also cause problems too. So something else to consider, um, in addition to instead of thinking about how do we treat the lawn fungus, let's also think about what what are some things that we might be doing that are creating conditions where it's really beginning to you know to take off. Something to keep in mind, uh, in addition to using a good fungicide. All right, next up is uh, King Khan. He says, "Welcome to the Mole Club." <laughs> yeah, it's not a club I want to be in. But apparently I'm here now. I'm in, I'm in it now, right? And I got to tell you, it's been stressful. This morning when I got up, I went outside and looked at the front lawn, looked at the back lawn just to see if there's any new any new tracks or anything in it. There weren't, so maybe it's just him. But it's uh, it, it's going to be a stressful stressful period here for a while to make sure. Hopefully it was just the one. Hopefully it's just the one. We'll see. All right. Next up is two shots of vodka. He says, "What's going on, Ron? What's going on? Two shots. Hopefully you're doing all right, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out in." Uh, the live stream. I really, really do appreciate it. Appreciate the support. And uh, Scrambled Egg says, yes, kill it, kill it. Alex is getting a good laugh. I guess I'm catching up to where you guys were laughing about me telling the story the first time. Yeah, I'm telling you, Alex, Alex didn't, he did not. He, I mean, he was like, you know, you ever watch like, like, um, you know, old gangster movies where you have like the, the, the mob boss, he's talking to the guy, you did all these things wrong and you know, it's not, you know, now you get to have like Louis the Enforcer, he's going to take care of the problem. That was, that was Alex. That was like Louis the Enforcer. You know, he had, he had the stick and he was, he did not, man, I'll tell you, he was great aim. Cause I mean, that, the mole is, the picture, I'm not the, yeah, the picture kind of shows it. You can see here, 
they're really not that big. I mean, they are, you know, it's, he's like, I mean, so you look at the size of this, this stick, he's probably four to five inches long. It's probably, I don't know, yay long, thereabouts, if I can get this to focus, about yay long, thereabouts, right? About that long and um, maybe a little bit thicker than this. So they're not that big, but they can, man, they can do a lot of damage really, really quickly. Just one of them can do a whole lot of damage. So yeah, he didn't mess around. He was able to get out there one good shot and it was gone. <laughs> it was gone. All right, uh, CEO is saying, the first rule of Mole Club is we don't talk about Mole Club. Yeah, yeah, again, hopefully he, uh, any other ones that are around saw, saw what happened to him and decided to not come back. All right, next up is Lavendi. He says, one more time, what sure Airbus, um, which Air, what sure uh, Airbus do you recommend? Um, so it depends on your budget. So there's, um, there are the 535s, which are really good. Those are like their, I mean, I say mid-tier, they're, ex they're still expensive, they're really good earbuds. And then these are the SE836s, I think. I've, I've, I literally, I've owned these, um, I've owned these for 10, almost 10 years at this point now. I think I wanna say it's 10 years. Like literally, literally when, they, when they were released, like a month after they were released, I got them. Um, and they've been holding up, they've been holding up really great. I think it's the SE836s, I believe. I don't even remember the model. Yeah, 846, I'm wrong. So what I'm wearing, these are, S are SE846s. They're very expensive, um, but they're, I mean, they're awesome. They're built like tanks. The sub bit, the bass, the the the, the audio, the sound of the, the, the sound in them is incredible, as you would expect at this price point. Um, but but it's really for someone that's an, that's an audiophile. If you really, really like music, um, like you put on like Hotel California and listen to it in these, it's just, it's something that you hear, you hear, you hear parts of the music that you don't hear otherwise. You know what I mean? So um, just depends on how serious you are about your audio. But the, the 535s are a good, um, it's an excellent, excellent set of in-ear monitors that are not at quite as expensive as the um, 846s. But 846s, if you want like what I consider to be a really, really good one, um, that's that's the way to go. I mean, really to get better than this, you have to start getting into the custom ones where you have to get like, they mold your air and this kind of thing. So I like these. All right, next up is Kidro. He says, um, well, yeah, leave, out, leave him out there, let his homies know. I did, it was Gangster Man. He was out there for a couple hours, drying out in the sun. Yeah, we put him out there as an example. We sure did. We sure did. All right, Real Rollers is up next with a grass question. He says, Bermuda has somehow, some, somehow crept into my Empire Zoysia. Two years ago, I killed everything in that area, but now it's back. Any way to kill just Bermuda, best time of year. Yeah, that's a good one. So there is a herbicide called Fusilade. I believe it's called Fusilade um, uh, Real Rollers that will, that is that is safe, Fusilade 2. That is, um, it's, I wanna say it's safe for, for, I'm checking the label here real quick to make sure I'm not telling you, not fibbing, make sure I'm telling you the truth, giving you good information, that is safe for zoysia, but is not safe for Bermuda. It's like one of the few, yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's one of the few herbicides that will kill Bermuda um, in, uh, in like zoysia, but not damage the zoysia. So I will, uh, I'll send you a link to it. It's called Fusilade 2. It's, um, it's great, great product that there's a, a viewer last year that was using it that had the same thing. She had a really big uh, zoysia lawn and had some Bermuda um, creeping into it and used it and had good results with it. So something to, to consider, um, make sure you read the label because it's not, um, you just you make sure you read the label because there's different application rates depending if you're spot spraying, if you're blanket spraying. So just, um, as always, just re read the label. I'll, I'll get I'll get a link here for you um, in a second, Lee, and I'll put it in uh, in the chat. So bear with me. I will get one to you uh, here in a second. But Fusilade Two will do what you're uh, what you're you're after. So what's crazy? What's, what that really kind of shows is how how tenacious Bermuda is, right? Like once it's there, you really can't get rid of it, or it's or it's difficult to get rid of. Um, and I know your lawn, you mow it a ton, so it's not like you're not doing things to really encourage the zoysia to, to grow in nice and dense and make it more difficult for the Bermuda, but Bermuda is Bermuda, man. It doesn't, uh, it does not, it does not give up. It will not be denied, unfortunately. All right, Lisa, here is your link for uh, the Fusilade. Give it a shot. You might be able to get it locally, but if you feel like supporting the channel, you can um, use this link here. It's Fusilade 2, because there's, there's more than one of them. Make sure you use the Fusilade 2. This is the one I'm, the one I'm posting to you right now. And there we go. All right, so at Real Rollers and Fusilade. There you go, that product. All right, let me know how you get on, man. That should do it. 
All right, next up is uh, Dalen Krause. He says, well, Bermuda has a lot of runners on top of the grass that are, that are ugly. So I scalped uh, to quarter an inch, wow, ma major scalp, <laughs> and scarify with the Sunjo. Lots of work, I can't see what it looks like when it recovers. That's a good idea. So you, so you scalped it and then you, you turf raked it with the Sunjo. Um, and what that's gonna do, what you, you're gonna find is the turf raking is gonna tend to, a lot, any kind of the really long runners, it's going to stand those up. So when you mow it, you you tend. I mean, I hate to say you're trying to encourage Bermuda to grow upright because really not. But what you're what you're doing is you're incur you're any of the runners that are not really tacking down and are frankly just becoming kind of ugly. You're getting rid of those, and in essence, because you're thinning it out, you're, you're going to encourage new growth. So I think it's a great a great idea. And you're saying is a mid season scalps bad or good? I think they're good if you have the time, if you have the time and the fortitude to get out there when the temperatures are in the hundreds uh, or. or you know, just it means hot in the in the heat of summer. Then yeah, absolutely do it uh, because especially for people that real mow their lawns, real mow them, or even if you are cutting your lawn with a with a rotary mower and you're doing it regularly, if you're out there a couple of weeks, the every couple of times a week, the lawn is going to start to thicken up. And the, the telltale sign, especially this time of year, July and August, you're going to see it. The end, going into the end of this month, you're going to see it. And even next month is going to get even worse, is you're going to start getting scalping in areas that you did not scalp before. That's a telltale sign that the, the line is getting too dense, too thick. And if you can verticut it, great. If you can turf rake it, great. If you can um, do like a, a mid-season re mid reset with a scalp, also good. The big thing is any debris, anything that you cut off, take it out, get rid of it. Don't just cut it off and let it fall back into the into the lawn. The idea is to thin the lawn out a little bit. Verticutting is probably my favorite out of all, out of those three, but those can be kind of difficult to come by, you know, depending on um, you know what you have as far as available to you for, for equipment rental. But but a scalp is a great option. What you did is a great a great option um, as well too. So, hope that helps Dylan. If you have any other questions, let me know. We have another super chat here, one from that crazy Lawn guy, I appreciate you. He says, Super chat received. Q and Q, what is the A? He says, Going to Aruba in August and I want to level when I get back. Just scalped last Friday and it's already back. Can I scalp again for leveling? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. You can. Um, so you're going to Aruba in August. So I guess are you, you want to level when you get back. It, what I might do is this I'm not sure how long you're going to be down in Aruba. But I might scalp, you know, you might scalp the lawn right before you go, a couple of days before you go. A couple of things that's going to do is one, you know, you're not going to have the lawn get really unruly really and crazy when you get back. And then if you're gone for a week or so, week, 10 days, by the time you get back, it's not going to start growing so much that you're going to have a big problem on your hands. So you literally could scalp it. And then when you get back, just start leveling it. You'd be just fine to do that. So, so yeah, I think that's, that's a, that's a, that's a good strategy. That crazy lawn guy. It's um, you kill two birds with one zone and with with uh, with one stone. From the standpoint of, you don't have to deal with a big mess when you get back, and you're prepping the lawn, you know, in phases for the leveling project that you're planning to do when you get back from your vacation. Sounds like a good time. Have fun in Aruba. I've been. It's, it's been a long time since I've been there. I've been. Uh, but if you if you get a true chance to go to Aruba, go to maybe well, Aruba's Aruba's the nicest out of them. I say go to Curacao or Bonaire while you're there because they're in the same area. But Aruba is probably the nicest out of the, out of the three islands to uh, to visit. All right. Next up is uh, Jason Greenlee. He says, "Can Nutrisolve liquid be applied uh, using a hose end sprayer? Um, if so, what would be the mixture? No, not really. Um, I've it's because the application rates involve Jason." Um, you really, you really want to apply it using a um, uh, a a foliar tip, like a proper spray tip, right? Because Nutrisolve is absorbed through the leaf, so you want to use a proper proper backpack spray or a pump spray or whatever you happen to have with a a good spray tip like like this on, like this T jet that I'm showing you here on here, something like that on there. Um, you don't you don't want to you don't want to use it in a hose and sprayer. So answer answers no. I would not do that. I would not do that. All right, uh, next up is Todd Hickey. He says, you help me um, diagnose e heat stress via email my lawn was the cause of the, of the discoloration in my yard. You were right. I use compost to top dress and hand spray the area every day for a week. Area is fixed. Awesome. Glad we got to the bottom, from the bottom of it. I remember you were talking about thinking that bifenthrin may have done it, but I was like, eh, I don't think so, man. I mean, I, it, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I think that it was a, a just a irrigation wasn't getting, wa wasn't getting water. And I'm glad that that was the problem, and I'm so happy you had the problem. But I'm glad we got to the bottom of the problem, and that the lawn is recovered, which is which is pretty cool. If you need anything else, Todd? Let me know. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. You're doing a lot. Top dressing, new new um, um uh, new sod insulation. A lot of great work. You're very very welcome, sir. I really appreciate you uh, watching the channel and the content. 
Next up is Brooklyn Boy says, can we start a GoFundMe account for the mole's funeral? No, no, we can do it. You want to start a GoFundMe for like, um, for like, you know, fixing lawn damage. We can do that. But he's, he's not, he, mm, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't get like any kind of special, special privilege or special burial. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. I mean, he got a swift death. That was good. That was, that was nice. I mean, Alex, Alex delivered justice very quickly. He was very, you know, very professional about it. You know, he didn't, you know, he didn't take, I was the one talking trash when the mole was, was dead. Alex was like, you know what? He did what he had to do. Just walked away. He was like, you know what? My work here is done. I was the one saying, yeah, look at you now, all busted up. And I was like yelling, you know, it's kind of crazy. I was like yelling, telling, tell, telling all his buddies in the neighborhood, if any of y'all see this, see what happened to him, don't come back here. That was me. Alex was a lot more professional about it. He just did what he had to do and, you know, walked away. So he's more professional, less, less emotional than I was about the, uh, about what the mole did. <laughs> You're very, very welcome. You're very welcome, um, Todd and Zoysia versus Bermuda, anytime. All right, next up is uh, Brewski523 says, sand or soil are what combination of the two for raising the level of a swale about six inches? Wow, that's a lot. Um, also, should I incorporate compost? I'm assuming six inches will kill the existing grass too. Thanks, you rock. Yeah, so if you're trying to go up six inches, you might even, you might even want to use some fill dirt for that. I mean, you, that's, I mean that's, that's a lot, you know, because the thing is, if you're using a, uh, I mean, if you're trying to do, to raise, raise six, I mean, how, six inches of how, how big of an area are we talking? If we're talking over a large area, that's a lot of material. So you can't, I would lean more towards um, fill dirt or, or actual soil. I wouldn't want to put six inches of sand down on the, um, on the lawn at this point. So that's, that's quite a bit brusky. I would, I would lean more towards uh, fill dirt or, um, or screen topsoil. That is going to settle. But um, I would I would lean more towards that than doing six inches of sand. That's a lot of sand to put in uh, in one area. It'd be cool if I could see a picture of it, like to see how much how big of an area you're talking about. Because I mean, if it's a if you're talking about a small like a trough, like the bottom of a of a trough of a swale, like that, I wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't be so worried about. But if you're talking about an area that's you know ten feet wide, um, I wouldn't want to put down six inches of sand in in that in that kind of area. You know, I want to use more of a, a fill dirt type. Um, um, product or in that, that particular scenario. So if you can send me pictures, I'll take a look at it and then that would give you a better answer. But that's what I am. I'm leaning towards. My email is right here. It's ron at the golf course lawn.com. Send me a pic of the area and I will, um, I'll give you a better answer, but that's, that's what I'm thinking based on what you're describing. And I appreciate it, man. If you have any questions at all, let me know. Yep, and King Khan is saying Delta Guard is on Amazon too. Yep, so you can also get it on, on Amazon as well. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can use my link, but I get it. If you got uh, Amazon, you got Prime, and you want to get that, that fast shipping and the price is a little bit better, I hear you. I'm not going to be mad at you. All right, next up, Hustle, <laughs> Hustle Onion is saying, Hey, Ron, any chance we can see the exact instant that you leveled up in your lawn, your game of whack-a-mole? I'll have to look and see if um that's on video it might be you might be able to see that the edge of it because where he was where he died it was towards the right side of that the it was, cl it was closer to where the pavers are i'll look and see i think it's i still have the footage so i'll have to I'll have to go through it and um and dig it out and if so i will um i'll, I'll post it maybe i'll do like a youtube story or something or a small um a short i've never done youtube short so i'm gonna do a short one and show you guys Alex and I going after, going after the mole. So I'll see if I can get the footage and, and show you that if you want to see it. I don't have it handy, and I can't. I can't. It's something I can do right now. All right. Next up, Robert Mahoros is here. He says, "Ron, uh, Ron, and all uh, ran uh, ran in from mowing. Missed the last two weeks due to an internet outage. Looking forward to tonight's live action on leveling." Yeah. So going back to now, we've spoken about moles to death. The question that I've been getting this time of year, and as you can kind of see, you know, as evidence from other questions we've been getting in the live stream so far, is can you still level this time of year? The answer is unequivocally, I mean, unequivocally, yes, if you have a warm season lawn. If you have, um, a, you know, a cool season grass, and now is really not the time of year to do that. That's a, that's a, a, it's a spring and a fall thing for cool season. But if you have warm season grass, like Bermuda or Zoysia, now is a great time of year to do it. Um, if you if you want, if this is the only time you have, a better time would have been to do it in May because it had been a lot less hot. But really, any time between May to early August, last week of July, early August is still fine 
for top dressing your lawn. So it'll do it for your lawn leveling projects. The benefits to doing it now is the lawn is gonna recover a lot faster. It's gonna recover really fast. Cause the lawn is, even with, with growth regulator, the lawn is still growing pretty aggressively. You do your leveling job in a week, 10 days, you're not even gonna, I mean, in, depending on how heavy you go, obviously, you're not even really gonna be able to see that, that, that it was done. Other than the fact that it's gonna look awesome. But as far as like, you know, you if you level in May, that could be two weeks, three weeks, perhaps, depending on how, how heavy you go. Um, but this time of year, the, it's the lawn is going to recover really quickly. So if you're on the fence about doing it and you could tolerate working in higher temperatures, it's still a great time of year. There's still plenty of time to get it done if you decide you want to go that route. All right, Tom B says, you email pics about the brownout areas of the lawn. I will take a look. Um, I'll look for, I guess, Tom in my email and see if I see the uh, email from you. And if so, I will, um, I will, I'll get you an answer. Get you an answer. All right, T1000 says the mole got his karma. Yeah, I don't know if that was his karma, but it definitely anyone is coming to it. I mean, I mean, think about it. The mole was just doing what moles do, right? So to be fair, the mole was just doing mole. The mole just did mole on the wrong lawn. And the, the thing that was bad is that I saw him doing it. I, when, I, when I saw, when I saw on my security cameras, seeing, his, seeing it happen in real time, I mean, I mean, over the course of like an hour and a half, two hours, it was, it was, too, it was too much. I couldn't take it. Couldn't take it. He had to go. Couldn't take it. And uh, J uh, Joseph Roberts saying, for the mole, there is no mercy in this dojo. That's right. That's right. I brought Alex out. Alex, was he, he had no fare whatsoever. He, he, uh, he got him. All right. Uh, next up is um, Real Rollers. There's a question. He says, hey, I'm watching, launching Grinder Finder next week. That's a cool name. Grinder Finder next week as a resource for real mower owners to find service shops. Anyone on chat, please email me the shops you use to sharpen your reels to build a database for others. That's pretty cool. Sweet. Yes, yeah, so any of you guys that are in the live stream that if you have, and I guess you're not just doing this obviously for this area, um, reel rollers, um, or Lee, you're doing it, I guess, across the country because, but yeah, that's, that's actually a really good idea. That's a really good idea. So yeah, if any of you guys have a particular shop that you like to use for your service or for grinding work, so you're looking, yeah, for your service or grinding work, uh, let, you know, reach out to Lee and he will, uh, Kill Builder, that's a great service for the community, sir. So cool stuff. I like it, I like it. All right, Jason Greenlee is up next. He says, I bought some leveling mix and compost from Supersod. If I leveled my Tiff Tough Bermuda installed in late March, could I go ahead and apply my compost now as a top dress? I'm concerned about layering. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, it's no, no problem. I think you asked it again here, but um, yeah, if I already applied Supersod leveling mix a month and a half ago, can I go ahead and apply Super Sod Compost as a top dress? Yeah, it's no problem. You could do that. It's no problem at all, Jason. The big thing I would say is just go light. You know what I mean? You know me. When it comes to top dressing, I'm not a fan of like beaching the lawn and turning it into a park, into a like into a, a sand lot. Um, go light. That's the only thing I'm going to say, right? So yeah, you can absolutely do that. It's no problem. Because the thing is, when you did the leveling mix, you 30% of what you put down was the compost anyway, right? And you know, the compost is only going to do good things for your soil as far as helping it to, you know, just helping the new grass just to do well, to get established and just improve, um, just improve the soil quality. So yeah, I, I absolutely would do that. Pretty much the answer is, can I, whenever someone asks, can I top dress my lawn with compost? Like, you know, either it would be carbonized PN or the super sod compost. The answer is, I'm trying to think of a scenario where it would be no. Um, and I can't really think of one. As, as soon as you, as long as you realize, uh, here's the, the caveat, because there's always a caveat, right? As long as you realize that what you're doing with that is, literally just for feeding the soil, just literally for, for, for getting more organic material into the soil. As a leveling medium, compost is not a good idea because it's not gonna, in a year, 18 months from now, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna break down and, and you're, I mean, you're not gonna be exactly right back where you started, but it's going to wear and it's gonna break down. So from a standpoint of using it to level, I'm not a fan of that. But if for a top dressing, great stuff. So hope that helps, Jason. If you have any other questions, let me know. And take pictures, man. Make sure you take pictures. You're doing all this project work. Take pictures so you're able to track all the hard work you're putting into, into your lawn. All right. Next up is Mr. Higgy Pop. Higgy Pop's in the live stream. He says, uh, hey, Ron, happy Friday. What's going on, Higgy Pop? Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you as always. Thanks for coming to hang out in the live stream. Appreciate uh, all the support. I'll support. Uh, next up is Andrew Phillips. He says, concerning the burn of the level mix, I experienced that as I had a 75-25 mix, and by the time I got to the other piles um, later in the day, I had residual light browning 
um, and weeks later to recovery. Not too bad. Yep, exactly. So it's it's not again. It's not like it's a game changer. It's not like something something that's going to um, um, that's that's going to that's going to create a, a, a long term problem. Um, but it's it's just something to keep in mind. You know what I mean? It's not something to keep in mind. I would not. Um, it, it's it's just it's just something to keep in mind as far as whenever you're you're doing a leveling job and you are. Um, you know, if you're going on, you're doing the technique of dumping big piles all over the lawn. If you're using a, a mix that, is, that has a lot of organic material in it, a lot of compost, um, a good, again, a good test is if it smells, go light. Make sure you're not going to leave those piles laying around there for, for, for hours and hours and hours on, on end. Yep. Um, yep. And, and no, no worries, guys. I got some people uh, messaging me about someone having uh, too much fun in uh, in the live stream, and that's okay. You know, so, you know, it's, it's been a while since we've had our trolls. And here's the thing, uh, Mr. Troll, you get you get to join the list of of of, of uh, other famous people that decide they want to just act the fool. So you can uh, you can be gone for ever, just like that. Look at that, just like that, you're gone. Like we're never gonna see you again. All right. Next up is Papa Moe's Glow. Um, he says, at Real Rollers, thank you. That's a good thing, man. That's a, that's a really good idea, um, Lee, as far as like the grinder finder. It's a cool name too, kind of catchy. And uh, so yeah, that's, a, that's good stuff. And I will, I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna be able to contribute to it because you all the, all the shops that do work in this area, you already know about. But anyone else that's doing work, definitely, uh, definitely let Lee know as far as, um, you know, because it'd be a cool resource, a cool resource for the community. All right. Next up is William Leach. He says, hey, Ron, it's Will. Hey, man. I watched one of your lawn episodes from 2018, and I'm pretty sure I heard you say you were service, you were using a service to care for your lawn. What's up with that? Um, yeah, so in, so in 2018, I'm trying to think in 2018. Was it that long? Maybe. So yeah, so in, no, in 2018, um, a friend of mine that owns a lawn care a, huge, a spray business, right? Um, I was letting him do the pre-emergent applications on my lawn in the spring and the fall. And, but a lot of, but everything else I was doing myself as far as like fertilizing and, and that kind of thing. So yeah. So yeah, I mean, and again, because it was a buddy of mine, I was like, eh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't like it really quick to, um, to, you know, to be like, hey, don't really need, don't really need your services anymore. But then this, no, when, when was it? When was it? Um, it, I forget how many years it's been now, but literally he, he basically told me at one point, hey man, you're doing all this stuff yourself. I see you're already doing everything. You don't really need me anymore. I appreciate the business, but you know, <laughs> take care of the lawn yourself. You already know what you're doing. But yeah, yeah, William, if you look back, back at my, some, of, some of my older content, 2018, even before that, uh, but yeah, yep. Um, he, he was doing uh, pre-emergent applications for me. All right, uh, so I already answered your question, Jason, about um, the super sod. Next up is Lance F. He says, hey, Ron, happy Friday, buddy. Uh, can you over apply hydrotain? I imagine you can. I've, I mean, I've not heard of anyone doing that, but like anything, you can, you can overdo pretty much anything in life, right? I, I don't know what would happen if you were to over apply it. I've not heard, I've not heard of anyone reporting to me what like them over applying it on their lawn, but... Um, but yeah, no, I, I I would just follow the rate. And again, if you go over a little bit, it's probably not going to be a night and day. It's not probably not going to like. It's not like over applying herbicide or over applying plant growth regulator. But I wouldn't put it down like double, triple the rate. In other words, if you if you're trying to go heavier because you think it's going to last longer, I wouldn't do that. I would just simply apply it more frequently. Like in my case, I do it every six to eight weeks versus every three months. But I do it at the rate. I don't go heavy on it. Does that make sense? So um, I, I don't know anyone that's had um, negative results as far as um, going super heavy in a single application though. So hope that helps, Lance. All right, AJ is up next. He says, what are your thoughts on using a real mower on tall fescue? Something like the California trimmer that can cut up to two and a half inches. Um, yeah, so here's the thing. You, you can do it, AJ. You can do it, but I mean, it's you're using you're using the wrong tool for the job. Like for a fescue lawn, really that's like rotary mower territory. The problem with using a real mower, especially a real mower that has a roller, like if you're gonna do fescue with a real mower, you need to have like um, either like a push a real mower or if you're using like a power or like a true cut, you wanna have the caster wheels. Reason being is if you have a roller on it, you're literally gonna be mashing the grass down as you try and go over it and you're not gonna get a good cut. It's gonna be very uneven, it's gonna be just gonna cut kind of sporadically, it's just not gonna be good. So if you do wanna cut it with a cylinder mower, with a real mower, 
I would say you're going to want to have one where the opening to the to the reel is um, like that area is not blocked in any way. You're not rolling it down. You're not you're not using any kind of a roller. You want to use like caster wheels or or um, something like that to do it if you want to go that route. Really though, a rotary is a better a better choice for taller cutting heights. Real mowers are really for uh, for shortcut grass. Really, an inch and a half and lower is where real mowers really shine. Much above two inches, definitely two and a half inches, or even taller, like fescue likes to grow. You're getting into um, into rotary, which is nothing wrong with that, right? Because rotary that's the right tool for that's the right application for a rotary mower. So. Hope that helps, sir. I mean, but try it out. You know, you can always, you're always welcome to do it and, and um, you're always welcome to do it and see um, see how it does. You know, if it doesn't, you know, just test it like anything else. Test it, check the results. If you like the results, keep doing it. If you don't like the results, uh, go back to a rotary. There's always that, right? Always that. All right, Thin Cut is up next. He says, hey, Ron, I'm currently dominating my street. My neighbor's a little upset. It happens, man. You know, he, he or she who mows most wins, right? And he says, uh, my yard has never been as green as it is now. He said he wants to follow my lead. I told him to watch the live stream. Well, if you are here and watching the live stream and you're a new viewer, appreciate you watching. And uh, and yeah, it, the big thing is it boils down to, you wanna know in a nutshell is um, eliminate the weeds in your lawn, get a soil test done. The one that I recommend is the one from my soil. We carry these on the golf course lawn store, get this done. Based on what the soil test says, like fertilize your lawn, feed your lawn based on those results. Once you do that, just mow it, mow it, and mow it some more. And when you think you've mowed, mow one more time. And then that's really gonna do a lot for, for really helping you create a, a great lawn. Uh, along the way, you can absolutely introduce um, biosimilant products like, car like Carbonize um, PN, Essential G, the liquid biosimilants from Miramichi Green. Huge fan of those, they're awesome products. Um, you know, so it, it, as you go down the rabbit hole, you can, you can start doing more things to the lawn. But really the big thing is, is figuring out what's going on in your soil um, eliminating the weeds in your lawn, and then mowing. You know, fertilize, the soil, fertilize and feed the, the soil based on your fertilization results, and then just mow and mow and mow. And that's 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 the big thing that's gonna help you. And I appreciate that thin cut. I'm glad that you're dominating. And it, it, the good thing is that you're at least passing it on. You're not saying, hey man, I don't know what to help you. Try harder, oh, I'm gonna keep dominating. At least you're being, you're being cool and you're saying, hey, if you need some help, here's where you can get some help. So I appreciate the support. I appreciate you sending people uh, the channel's way. So thanks for that. All right. Uh, Matt W says, I got you. I appreciate that, Matt W, I guess. Thank you. Uh, Colin uh, Dyke says, uh, what do you do for worm casting control? I'm from the UK and we can't get anything to control worm casting. Thoughts, thank you. I don't do anything about it, um, Colin. So um, earthworms are a good sign. They're a sign of healthy soil and I don't do anything to, to actively try and get rid of earthworms. I, I know that worm castings can be a bit ugly. They can be a little bit unsightly, but just literally whenever you're mowing, they just, you just run over them in your mower, they get mashed down and then you don't really see them anymore. So, and, and you know, it's funny, this year, um, I've not had worm castings in the lawn nearly as much um, as in years past. So um, disease problems um, in the last month, cause you know, I mean, with, the, with the, the amount of water we've been getting here lately, with being super hot and just getting like these deluges where the lawn floods, you think there might be fungus problems, no fungus problems and no worm castings. None of that stuff that, that normally can creep in around this time of year has been a thing. Um, some of that, in my opinion, is due to the fact that there is, um, that the, the turf is just really clean, right? There's not a lot of thatch. There's not a lot of places for um, for that stuff to really, for that stuff to really fester from the lawn, from a lawn disease perspective, right? And that was one of the things that the, the, the guys at Alec did say. He says, you know, one thing you're going to find is that your need for fungicides or, or how, how much you're going to need fungicides should get reduced if you keep up with this program. If you keep up with turf raking the lawn regularly, keeping, like managing how much debris there is in the lawn, managing how much thatch there's in the lawn. And so far I've been seeing that. So, and here's the thing, we're only like a month in, or like five weeks or so into it. So liking what I'm getting so far. I mean, it's more work, but I like it. So, so to answer your question, Colin, there isn't anything really that I, that I do for them. I mean, worm castings are really a good sign. I know they don't look great, but it's a sign of good soil. So I don't, I don't actively do anything to try and get rid of them. Next up is Brandon Wynn. He says, where do you purchase your liquid fertilizer? Well, Brandon, I'm glad you asked. On the screen here, you'll see a URL mentioning the Golf Course Lawn Store, but even better than just telling you that, I'll take you for a ride, I'll check you there. So if, you, if we go to golfcourselawn.store, you just put, type it in Google or put it in your browser, you will be brought to right here. This is our homepage. And on the said homepage, there's some, some text here telling you about some of the things we offer, for, you know, fertilizer, soil test kit, fungicides, insecticides, 
all that fun jazz. Um, but then for fertilizer, you've got fertilizers, you've got your Miramichi green biosimilants, love this stuff. Um, your herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides, your soil test kit, gotta have that. And then finally, your moisture management. But what you asked about was, was fertilizers. So you click in there, we've got an assortment of both liquid and granular fertilizers. So for liquids, uh, probably the, the fertilizers that, that people like the most are the, the two that are up here in the, uh, that are on the top shelf. So 901C, which is a liquid, is a combination product. It's, it's a liquid fertilizer, it's 9% nitrogen, but also contains uh, biostimulants um, from Miramichi Green. So if you're looking for a product that is not just a fertilizer, but also has a lot of really good um, um, additives that are help, gonna help improve what you, what you get out of your fertilizer applications, 901C is an awesome product. A great like all-in-one type product is this one, Turfplex. So this is a, um, it's got a bit of nitrogen, a bit of phosphorus, a bit of potassium, but it's also got some micronutrients in it. So it's got some iron, um, a bit of man a manganese, a little bit of zinc. So as far as like an all-in-one product type thing that does, has that kind of hits all the bases, Turfplex is a great choice. Um, with 901C, which is what I'm using this year, if you decide you're gonna go 901C, you're really gonna wanna pair that with this, with Nutrizol. These two, Release zero, release 901C and Nutrizolve work beautifully together because you have your biosimilants, you have your nitrogen, and then you also have a product that is strictly a micronutrient. And unlike um, Turfplex, this contains all of them. So Nutrizolve contains your boron, your copper, your zinc. Um, what am I missing here? I'll tell you the entire list here. We're just trying to remember it. Molybdenum, I always forget that one. It's an oldie but goodie, but it's got every single one of the micronutrients that your soil needs. There you go. Um, boron, copper, uh, chelated iron, molybdenum, manganese, and zinc. And because these both, um, both uh, Turfplex, and, I'm sorry, with 901C, Turfplex, and Nutrizol, they're all absorbed via the foliar, meaning you just spray them and let them dry on the grass. There's no need to water them in after you're done. You're gonna see results within two to three days. So this is what um, I like from a liquid standpoint, 901C, uh, Nutri-Kelp um, and Nutrizolve is what I use as far as the liquids on my lawn. And I mix them all with um, Primo Max as a growth regulator. So what I do every couple of weeks, every two weeks is 901C, Nutri-Kelp, Nutrizolve, and Primo Max at half rate is what I spray on my lawn. If you don't wanna do 901C, Nutri-Kelp, and Nutrizolve, which you, can, which you can do if you want like a more like a more economical route, you can just go Turfplex and Primo Max, these two, that's a good. That's your growth reg and your liquid fert, um, and you're, you're you're good to go. And all of those will mix nicely together. I've tested them; they all mix nicely together. There's no clumping, no any kind of weird interactions. They work. All, they all work great together. And again, you spray them and don't water them in. You spray it and just leave it. Don't let it dry on the grass. You don't need to water it in after application. As a matter of fact, with if you're using Primo along with it, you don't want to water it in. You definitely want that to to dry on the leaf on the foliar. So. Hope that helps, Brandon. Um, if you need anything else, let me know. And you're saying, is it cheaper to use liquids over granular? In general, in general, yes. In general, yes. You tend to get more coverage um, with liquids than you do with granular. But 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 what you pay for, what you get in additional coverage, you um, you pay for in um, in time and also complexity, right? So good example, right? You have like this insecticide, acelaprin. It's a great example, right? So this four ounce little four ounce bottle of acelaprin. If all you're treating are like army worms with this, like all you care about is an active army worm infestation, this one little bottle will treat almost an acre, right? If you're treating, um, if you're doing it as a preventative and you wanna also take care of grubs and bill bugs and bluegrass weevils, one bottle of this will cover 21,000 thereabouts square feet, right? It's one little four ounce bottle. The nice thing about this is that you can, you can it's easy to jockey or, or play with your rates because um, it's a liquid, right? And if you have any other products that you want to apply at the same time that are soil-based that need to get down in the soil, you can mix them along with this and apply them at the same time. So liquids give you more control over application rates. Um, it's a bit more involved to apply them because you need a backpack sprayer. You need to use the correct type of spray tip to apply them. Um, so there, there is that. So you need the backpack sprayer. You need to make sure that sprayer is calibrated and you need to um, ensure that you're, you're properly measuring out the amount of product so that you're not over applying or under applying it. So from a standpoint of ease, granulars are easier, right? But from a standpoint of um, just flexibility and being able to, again, save time, you know, and it's just from a time savings perspective, uh, liquids are really, really cool. So good example, like I was just talking to you about fertilizers, right? If I were gonna go do 
because a lot of these are available as granulars, right? Um, so if you were to go back here and say we're gonna do um, a plant growth regulator as a gran granular, there are granular um, PGRs. There are granular fertilizers that contain nitrogen, um, potassium, and iron, there are. But here's the thing, with granulars, you're not gonna apply them all at the same time. You're not gonna be able to put like your granular uh, plant growth regulator, your granular fertilizer, your granular um, you know, biostimulant or kelp product, your granular micronutrient, all in the spreader at the same time, and put them all down at once because they have different application rates. You know, There's different uh, prill sizes and all this kind of stuff you have to account for, so you can't do them all at the same time. Whereas with liquids, you can. So. It, it's, I'm a big fan of, of liquids if you have a backpack sprayer and you're willing to put in the time and effort to learn how to use it properly. They're, they're really a game changer. Uh, the benefits that granulars do have is if you're trying to put down higher amounts of nitrogen, um, it's, uh, it, is, it is more, I would say, I can't say it's necessarily more efficient, but it is in many ways safer to do so as in, in using a granular than, than liquids. In other words, there's, if, you, if you had to put down you know, I don't know, say you need to put down like 30% nitrogen. I'd much rather you do that in a granular product that is slow release than try and spray like, you know, straight urea at, at a lower rate and, and make sure you water it in right afterwards so you don't burn your lawn. So, so they, they both serve their purposes. I know like I'm really talking up liquids a lot, but granulars do serve a purpose. And, I, and I, for me, granulars are the foundation for like, um, for my nitrogen applications, for my potassium, phosphorus, if I need a lot of those in my lawn and my soil, I'm not gonna do a lot of that from liquid. I'm gonna use a granular for that. And then for my spoon feeding and for my growth reg, that is where I use liquids. So hope that helps. I use them both, both you know, in, for, to, to, to really, I use each of them to their strong suits as I see it. All right, next up is Andrew Phillips. He says, Ron, a parent's issue that is really driving me crazy. Area is green, but seeing a tiger stripe effect, especially on my parkway. Literally, the strip is light, dark stripes. Doing a soil test, we'll see. Yeah, so here's the thing, Andrew. Anytime I see something like that, anytime I see someone, they send me pictures of their lawn they're seeing, and I'm seeing, um, especially if it's organized, like it's like it looks like it's not like a random thing. Like you're seeing a light area and a dark area and a light area, and it's like in a straight line. You really want to pay attention to how you're applying your products because if you are not not um, doing an even application, so say you're, you're applying a granular fertilizer or even a liquid, you're doing liquids too, and you are missing a section or you're not spraying a section as heavily as other areas, that can cause differences in color. So a way to get around that, right? A way to, to get around that is if you, and it takes more time, but it's, it's a strategy, right? You can, you can turn down the rates, lower the rate that you use um, for, with your granular or liquid products, and then walk the lawn in two different ways. So say this is your lawn, you gotta, you gotta cover this, right? This is our soil test kit for the purposes of our discussion is our lawn. Instead of just making your passes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this, and this is your, and then you're done, you can make passes like so, and then follow up like this. So it takes more time, um, but if you wanna improve the evenness of your coverage, especially if you're just getting into this or you're just, you know, you're having issues with getting even coverage, that's a strategy that can work. Be sure though that you back the rate down because you're gonna be walking the entire lawn twice, right? So you wanna make sure um, you, you can't walk the entire lawn twice at the same rate. That'd be double the rate. We don't wanna do that. So just just it's consider that as an option. Um, you, soil test is, is good as a good idea as well too, but especially if it's if it's organized, like if, if there's if there is order to the stripes, that in many cases to me points to like an application, an application issue is what I would, would think. So think about that. Um, and hopefully that helps with, um, you know, helps you nail down what the, what the problem is. All right, next up is Rosana Rocha. He says, we are wa on a water restriction in New Braunfels, Texas. I can't get enough water in our yard once every two weeks. Help, help, I need some help in Texas. All right, so what I would say, Rosana, I mean, I know, I mean, it, ideally it would be good for you to have it in your soil already, but a great product for the kind of scenario that you're dealing with is, is a moisture manager called Hydratane. So let's go for a ride to the golf course lawn store. I get away from the lawn fertilizer, fertilizer section. So if you go here to golfcourselawn.store and then go to shop and to moisture management, there's a product called Hydratane that is available as a liquid, available as a granular. Um, and now there's a new product that just came out this week literally, called Foreplay that has Hydratane in it and a few other products. Currently that's sold out because people bought it all up. That's how things get sold out. But uh, but in the meantime, if you wanted to get, you wanted to start with a granular liquid Hydratane, that's a good option too. This will help your lawn 
manage the stress of, of less water better than if you did not have it. Now, it's not a magic bullet. You know, your lawn still is going to need some water. But as far as ecologists claim that using this product can reduce watering by up to 50%, there is some truth to that. Um, but but it doesn't, you need some water. So if you say you can only water once every two weeks, I guess if you can get an inch of water down or a couple of inches of water down during that, that one day when you can get, when you can run irrigation, like you can run it multiple times and really get a lot of water in the soil, uh, coupled with hydrotain is a strategy that will, it will definitely help your lawn be better than it would be if you did not use it. So consider that we have it um, in stock in the golf course lawn store, the both the liquid and the granular. If you want foreplay, which is the newer version, or not it's a new version, but the new product they just released that has hydrotain and a few other additives, it may be a week or a little bit longer before that comes back in stock, but you're gonna get a good result with um, with any of them. A perfect example, right? I don't have foreplay in my lawn, right? I have got just, just regular hydrotain is what I've been using um, in my lawn, and this is what it looks like as of this afternoon. This this was literally taken uh, an hour before the live stream. So and that's that's water a couple times per week, a few times per week. Uh, that's water, you guys water a couple times per week. Granted, we've been getting rain. You guys haven't been getting that. But that is um, a bit of water, largely from, mostly from Mother Nature and Hydrotain. It's helping the lawn maintain that color. So give that a shot. That's, that's the best I can give you really um, as far as you know, not, I would tell you to put more water on the lawn, but you can't do that. So the next best thing is to use a moisture manager so that the water that you do put down does more for you. It works harder for you. So hope that helps. If I can help, if there's anything else that you need, uh, let me know. Let me know in the chat. I think we have another super chat. Let me get down here and get these. I mean, I've been lagging on that. I'm going to catch, I'm going to catch um, some grief from you guys. So let's see here. We have a super chat from Matty Matt from Australia, first of all. Super chat received. He's high from Australia, looking to mix some grass with Tiff Tough to help a shade spot, Potent potentially uh, Sir Grange Zoysia. Good or bad idea? Uh, <laughs> so here's the thing. Zoysia and Bermuda look very different, Matty Matt. Um, so if if you have an area that is bare, meaning like, you know, the there's no Bermuda growing in there at all because there's not getting enough sunlight and you really want to try the zoysia, like to where there's a pretty good delineation where the, Z the zoysia, um, you know, where the Bermuda might start, where the zoysia is in the Bermuda will begin. I mean, you can try it, but here's the thing. You're not going to be, if the zoysia does grow, let's say there is enough sunlight for the zoysia to grow, but not enough for the Bermuda. It's not like it's going to stop. You know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, if this part of, I don't know, we'll use this example. If this area here is your shaded area and everything else here is your Bermuda, like once you put the zoysia here, it's not like the zoysia is just gonna stop right where the Bermuda gets. It's gonna continue creeping in and you're gonna end up with the lawn getting, you know, with it becoming kind of a blend, at least in that area, you know what I mean? So it's up to you to try that. I, I'm not really, a, I'm not a huge fan of mixing um, completely different types of grass, mainly because once you do it too, it's getting rid of it is gonna be, it's gonna be really difficult. So it's it's your call. I mean, it, it, you might wanna, what I might do in your case, and again, I haven't seen the pictures or, or I have not seen the pictures you're dealing with or how big an area, but if it's an area that's around a tree or something, maybe consider just doing a mulch bed there or some other, or using like some um, like ornamentals that will tolerate, uh, that are a lot more shade tolerant. Uh, the la you know, the last thing I would consider doing is putting in another type of grass. Because here's the thing too, if the two are visible, so if you can see the Bermuda and see the zoysia, they're gonna look different. Like zoysia and Bermuda do not look alike at all. They look, they, visually they look very, very different. So I might try first, thing one I might try is if it's a tree, because you didn't tell me where the shade's coming from, but if it's a tree, I would try and try, I would try raising the canopy of the tree. So try cutting back some of the branches, some of the foliage in the tree, try and get more light there. See if that helps. If it's if it doesn't, um, then it's, it's your call. You can try the zoysia if you want, but just just know that you are going to create a condition where at least in that area of the lawn, the zoysia and the Bermuda are going to blend. It's going to become kind of a mutt lawn in that section because the zoysia is going to continue moving as well. You know what I mean? So just just consider that. So it's really up to you how badly you want grass to be there. So again, in my case, I might lean more towards like just some ground cover or something like that just to to dress it up a bit. Hope that helps and appreciate you watching from Down Under. All right, uh, next up, um, Ben Raham says, 
super chat. Is it, instead of spoon feeding, can you super feed? Um, you could, oh, so I guess by, yeah, so I guess you're saying, so instead of putting, doing in light, light amounts of fertilizer, you could do a heavy amount of fertilizer. You could, but I mean, you're gonna create more, more problems than that solves. So, you know, if you, if you do a heavy application of nitrogen to the lawn, um, you're gonna push a lot of growth, which creates problems. You know what I mean? As far as, you know, if you mix that, if you mix high amount of nitrogen with water and high temps, um, you know, the, the lawn being more susceptible to disease becomes a thing. The amount of time, the amount of time you have to get together and mow it is gonna go up a lot. Uh, the amount of thatch that you can potentially start putting back into the lawn if you're not bagging all your clippings is gonna go up. So, by, so just over, over applying fertilizer, whether it's liquid or granular, I mean, initially it may seem like a good idea, but you know, long term, you know, it causes more problems than it really solves. So, you know, for Bermuda, a pound of nitrogen per month during the growing season is what it calls for. I don't get near that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm lower than that. I'm closer to like to seven tenths of a pound of nitrogen, and my lawn looks really good. Alex's lawn looks really good at those numbers. So, if you're doing a lot of the other things that I that I do in my lawn with the biostimulant program, you can get away with using less. So I am a fan of spoon feeding, not so much of super feeding. And by super feeding, you mean like heavy amounts of of product. Not a huge fan of doing doing that. All right. Next up is uh, Seth Johnson. One more super chat. I got to take care, of, then we'll go back up. Super chat. This is kind of unsure what to do next in Iowa. My mix of uh, perennial grass, Kentucky bluegrass, clover, and crabgrass. Spot treated this week with quinclorac and uh, quinclorac and T zone. Okay. Uh, looking to plant some new perennial ryegrass, but also wanted to feed the weeds. Yeah. So it sounds like you're on the right track to me, Seth. Like you got a herbicide that is going to target the weeds you're trying to deal with. As far as doing the seed, it's a bit hot. Um, you know, I think you want to wait probably till August August time frame to consider seeding it. Like, give it a little bit more time before you, you decide to to seed the lawn. But I think you're you're on the right track. I think it's just a time thing at this point. You know, keep. I mean, if, if the one the single application of the herbicide you're using doesn't get it done, you may have to do a follow up application. Um, but yeah, I think you're. You know, if you can keep doing what you're doing by the time August, you know, mid August rolls around, you should be in a much better um, space from the standpoint of having this, the weeds under control to where you can then just put your um, your your seeding project down and and profit, right? Have fun, enjoy it. So I, I think you're on the right track. I, w I don't, there's nothing much I can think of that I would really change in what you're doing. All right, we have another super chat here from Kyle Adams. Let's see here, he says, Super chat received. Because I have a few ball spots in my St. Augustine, and I've literally thrown the whole next product line at it. The soil doesn't seem to break down. The fertilizer pearls, pH or macro micro issue. Hard to say, Kyle. So a soil test will tell us, right? So the, the one, get a soil test done of that area of just the entire lawn, so we can see if there's any kind of deficiency that could be causing the problem. In the balls, you see you have a few ball spots. Um, are they always bald or are, in other words, this time last year, do the same areas have the bald spots or is it something that's just new this year compared to last year? Reason why I'm, what I'm saying is while you're waiting for your soil test kit to show up, like you can order that on the golf course lawn so you can get that, get that on, your, on your way. While you're waiting for that, some things you can try are go out and get a screwdriver and the areas where the grass isn't growing, just do a quick check to make sure there's not any debris, rocks, pieces of plywood, any kind of trash underneath beneath the soil that's causing, you know, that, that's that's causing a problem. It's causing a problem with with, uh, with grass really growing in that area. Because St. You know, Augustine is a pretty aggressively growing grass with decent conditions. So if you have a scenario where yours isn't, um, especially if it's something that's that's consistent, like consistently in certain areas where this is a problem, then um, then I, I would I would uh, yeah, obviously a soil test, yes, is a great idea, but I also would get in there and, and, and just check, do a physical check to make sure there's no debris or trash that could be causing the, um, causing the problem. You know what I mean? So just that, that's just something that I would look at as, uh, as well. Cause it sounds like you've used a lot of different products and you're not getting the results that you want out of said products. So let's get a soil test done, find out what, um, what's going on, if there's any deficiencies and then, uh, and then address accordingly and just, just kind of go from uh, go from there. All right, now the fun part, every time I run down to get super chats is trying to find out where I left off. Always the first part. And, and, and Kyle, one thing I forgot to tell you, if you get the My Soul test kit, the thing you want to get, and unless you already have one, is to get the one that has one of these guys. Get, get the soil probe. These things are 
money for collecting cores, it makes it really easy to collect your core, collect your samples. So get one of these um, along with it. We have a starter, a starter kit that includes one soil test and um, the probe. So you only need to buy this once. This you can use twice per year, spring, fall. This you only need to buy once. So just another tip to help you um, to make the process as painless as possible as far as your, your, um, your, your step into soil testing. All righty. All righty. So let's see, where did I leave off? While I find that, I'll put some nice music on for LG and take a sip of my water. All right, I found it. All right, next up is Z Chen. Z Chen, he says, hey Ron, how do I spoon feed something like 3010 granular? I know I need to back down the poundage to half pound of N per thousand square feet. Do I just walk faster or close down the spreader opening? Uh, so the amount of product that you're applying is going, oh, a couple of things. It's not, it's really not that simple because a couple of things. If you're doing a spoon feeding program where you are applying um, a granular monthly and then supplementing that with a liquid, you want to use, as far as your granular goes, you want to be a, a relatively quick release granular product. So. Um, it can be, you know, or, or the majority of the of the the nitrogen in the granular product to be quick released, where every four to six weeks you can apply it because it, it, it again it becomes available um, more quickly. A thirty zero ten, I'm imagining that, that that's going to be that's going to probably have a lot more slow release in it than um, say something like Humic Max or Flagship or um, or a lot of other pro um, or lower nitrogen fertilizers that tend to be better suited for a spoon feeding program. Um, and then as far as poundage goes, I don't know if we take two times point, uh, three zero, what is that? Yeah. See, I mean, so yeah, it, it, two, if you do that, you apply that like two pounds per thousand. Let's, let's assume that that is a quick release. I doubt it is, but let's just say that that 30, that, that 30, zero 10 is quick release fertilizer. Applying that at two pounds per thousand, which isn't a whole lot, um, is going to uh, put down, put out six tenths of a pound of nitrogen. So a little bit more than half a pound, not going to, not, it's not going to break the bank. But um, two pounds per thousand of that product is going to get you um, a little over half a pound of nitrogen. But again, it's not so simple as walking faster or even changing the application rate. The type of fertilizer you use also matters. So like you need to match them, right? The liquid and the, the liquid um, um, fertilizer that you use needs to be relatively quick release. And the granular that you use also needs to be relatively quick release. So... Um, so look at that. And the way you can figure that out, I've shown in videos before, but on the fertilizer bag, there will be an asterisk when it, when next to the nitrogen component. Actually, you know what? I can show you. Then I can show you really quick here. Let's see. I can go find a fertilizer and I can show you. So go to the store or find any bag of fert. And if we go to like, say, Humic Max, you can't get it right now, but it's okay. I'll show you guys anyway, because I know where it is on this bag. So if we go down here and we go to the label, yep, so on the bag, you'll see hey, this is a 16% nitrogen fertilizer, right? But you see here where it says it's an asterisk next to this, next to the water insoluble nitrogen, next to the win, um, and other water soluble nitrogen. When you go down to that asterisk, the footnote says 3.9% of the fertilizer, of this fertilizer, is slowly available nitrogen from methylene ureas. So even though this product is a 16.08, um, around 3% of, or almost 4% of that 16% of that nitrogen is slow release, but the majority of it is quick release. So that's what you want to look for um, on that bag, that 30.0.10 product that you're, that you're looking at to make sure that primarily it's a quick release product. So hope that helps um, as far as figuring out Z. And if you have any other questions, let me know. But that's how you can figure out, it's not as simple as just walking faster. You want to make sure that the, 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 fertilizer, the type of fertilizer you use matters as well too. Okay, uh, thin cut. Is back, he says. The other neighbors, the other, the other neighbors, long hair comp company told me I had some real nice stripes going on. That's nice. Props. You gotta, you gotta um, like it whenever you know. Uh, I can necessarily the competition, but you know the people that are also taking care of lawns for a living. When they, when they throw, you know, throw up some some signs and say respect. Yeah, like that, right? I get it a lot. Alex gets it a lot too. Like when people in the the Nate, because the street that we're on. It's a, it's a shortcut to get to other parts of the neighborhood. So you, the lawn care guys drive by all the time. And if I'm out there mowing, they'll give me like a thumbs up. They'll like wave or, you know, they, always, they, they like to see me out there when I'm out there mowing. So they're always really cool about it. So really good stuff. 
All right, LG says, my foreplay arrives tomorrow. Yeah, man, good stuff. Nice, nice. I'm glad you got some before it sold out, LG. And again, we're working really as quickly as we can to get some more in stock. But um, it's, it's a great product. And I'm, I'm sure you guys are going to get awesome, awesome results with it. All right, uh, Hernan, uh, Hernan Hernandez says, hey, Ron, it's Junior. What do you think about TriCure Wedding Agent? Will it work better than Hydrotain? I don't know. I can't say for sure because I've, I've never used that. Never used that product. So I don't. I can't. I can't speak to it because I've never used it. I'd, I'd have to look into what's in it, like the technology behind it, how it works, um, and then actually try it out before I'd be able to tell you for sure. So I can't say off the top of my head if it's going to be better um, or different. But um, so yeah, sorry. So I'm not more help on this one, unfortunately, because I haven't used uh, that one. All right, John Gotch says, uh, thanks again, sir, for the advice of the, on the poster merchant. You are very, very welcome, John. No problem at all. If you have any other questions, let me know. Always like to, to help out. All right, uh, Keith Mullen here. He's trying, he's trying to put me in a corner. He says, if you were forced to choose one process, not two, but one, one process, would you choose granular or liquid products for all? Hmm. Just one? I can only use one. Mm, I'm gonna lean towards probably liquid, probably liquid. If I can only do one liquids, uh, which would pain me because that means I can't use my, I can't do my essential G Rex out. And I do love, I do love my biochar, my compost. I do love that. So that would be painful. I can still get my marketized carbon and like release zero and release 901C. So that's good. But I mean, it's just there's just so much convenience to, to using liquids. Like I mean, like literally. Again, like I showed, I showed this earlier, but we can revisit it. Like if I, if you think about what I do on my lawn every month, right? So, I spray, I spray a combination of fertilizer, micronutrient, biostimulants, and plant growth regulator. So that's literally 901C, Nutric Help, Biospectrum, which is here somewhere. I think it's on the next page, or I might have it under under um, Miramichi Green. But anyway, it's it's um, so Biospectrum is not on, which is not on this page. So I use. 901C, Nutri Kelp, Nutri Resolve. So a fertilizer, a kelp product. Both of these also contain micronized carbon. So they have like a biostimulant um, aspect to them to help um, improve nutrient uptake. And then also a micronutrient because I got to have a deep green, right? Got to do that. And then my growth regulator, which, lit, which slows down how quickly the grass grows, how much I have to mow, improves uh, disease resistance, tons of other benefits, just makes the, the, the lawn a lot hardier. Like to do all four of those in a granular, that's literally four trips around the lawn, right? So it's like I have to go do like one. I can say this. That's not necessarily true. Because so I would be able to find a granular fertilizer that has the fertilizer and has the micronutrient. But it's, so it's at least three trips around the, lawn, around the lawn. So I'd have to use a fertilizer with a micronutrient in it, a, a product like a kelp product of some sort that's a granular that I have to put down, and then finally a growth regulator in granular form as well because they, they all can't go in the spread at the same time. So I have to walk the lawn three times to do the same thing that I can do in one trip with the liquid products, and I have more control over the application rates, right? I can put them all in the tank at the same time. I can play with the rates if I want. I go a little heavier on this one, a little lighter on this one. So liquids just give you a lot more flexibility. So I can only choose one, Keith, probably liquids. But because I don't have to choose one, I do both. I still use granular and liquids, but if I only use one at this point, probably liquids. So hope that helps. All right, uh, Miles Blaine says, do you think it's too hot here in the ATL for how to cut reset next week? I am about five eighths and have got more brown thick stolons than I like. Thinking about going back down to three eighths so I can maintain to five, at five eighths. Yeah, it's not too hot, um, Miles. The thing is, is this, if you can tolerate it, the grass will tolerate it, right? So. The thing I would say is, um, as far as uh, timing of the reset, it, it'd be good to do some kind of a light fertilizer application after the reset because you are going to be stressing the grass out a bit. But yeah, as long as you're going to you do your reset, get all that debris out, that's going to do a lot to get rid of the scalping problems. Um, it's going to help clean up some of the some of the stolen, some of the runners that are kind of getting out of control. Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of that. I mean, either either verticut the lawn if you can have access if you have access to a verticutter or you can rent one. That's a great option as well. But something to thin out the lawn this time of year is a good idea. It's a good idea. Otherwise, to your point, you're going to run into issues like what you're describing. You're just going to start getting scalping and weird cutting issues that you did not get before. Like, There's a reason why golf courses verticut greens. You know, they do it regularly. They verticut other parts of the courses regularly. You know, Some, some parts, um, they, they do it every, every few weeks. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, um, there is something to that. It's more work. 
but it is very, it's, it's a healthy thing for the grass if you, um, if you, especially if you're doing everything else you're doing. Like you're cutting at five eighths, yeah, you definitely gotta thin that out at some point. All right, next up is Daniel Ferreras. He says, that mole story is great. Brings me back uh, memories of my, of my first uh, uh, squirrel, squirrel kill. Thanks to my big bro egging me on to whack it in the head with a branch. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I am not like I'm someone that's out for like, you know, killing animals and this kind of thing. I'm not someone that's, you know, I'm not, I mean, I feel, I feel a little bit bad for the mole. A, a little bit, not much, a little bit bad. Cause I'm not someone that just goes out just to, just to kill animals just for the sake of killing animals. I don't think that's cool. But I mean, bro, bro, have you seen it? I mean, for those of you guys that are in the live stream now that just that join late, this is what this mole did to my lawn. Look at that damage. Oh, I can't even, I have to close my eyes while this is playing. I can't even look at it. it it's, it's like, it, it's causing, it's literally causing a flashback. Yep. Okay. So that's, that's the damage. That's what I saw. That's what I saw Thursday morning, yesterday morning when I looked at the lawn. So yes, I'm not normally all for killing, you know, killing in, uh, rodents. Yeah. But I mean, do, killing animals, but I mean, he deserved it. He deserved it, especially since after he did that. And I checked the, my, my, uh, my, my cameras that he did it in broad daylight. He didn't have, he didn't have the decency, the courtesy, the common courtesy to do it in the middle of the night. You know, to go out there in the middle of the night when there's no one there, he, he decided he was going to do it in broad daylight. He was like, whatever, whatever. Psh, I'm a boss. I'm a G. Watch me. I'm a, watch me. I'm going I'm to get in this lawn. So he got he got exactly what's coming to him. So I don't, I don't feel the least bit more I talk about it. I'm getting mad all over again. Nope. I don't feel bad about killing him. All right. Next up is um, Robert Rainey. He says, lucked out on the mole story. Could have been worse. I, it could have been. It could have been like a bunch of them, right? And then who knows? There might be more. Hopefully not. Fingers crossed. It could have been worse. It could have been army worms. Army worms would be worse than one mole. Army worms are, are terra bad, right? That would be worse. Uh, grubs would be worse. Would be would be also really bad. So I guess of all things, uh, you know, a mole is not the worst problem to have. But I mean, just I mean, in the front lawn, man. Literally, I'm walking out to go get the mail, and this thing is it's like right there. So there you go. <laughs> Brooklyn boys like mole lives matter. Hey, man. All lives matter, especially the lives of my grass. And, and look at this. Does it look like the mole cared about the life of my grass? Look at that. It's all dug up, dying, bruised up, looking all 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 beat up and everything. No. Nope. He got what's coming to him. And uh, Chris Dada is, is chiming in. He says, voles are just as bad. They infiltrate your lawn and kind of make tunnels under your grass. An absolute nightmare. Well, hopefully I don't get vo um, voles. I don't want that. I don't want voles. I don't want moles. I don't want any of it. Don't want anything. Hopefully this one mole was enough, you know, and that's it. You know, hopefully that's that's all I have to deal with. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for me. All right, uh, Robert's up next. He says, Primo Max saved me on being out of town. Yard is looking great from the Golf Course Lawn Academy guidance. I appreciate that, Robert. And that's the thing for Primo. I mean, the thing with, with this product, right? And I, I, in the videos when I talk about it all the time, I will say, hey, it cuts mowing. You can mow your lawn less. You don't have to mow as often. That is a benefit. But the real secret sauce, or the big, the best parts of using growth regulator on your lawn is the you get the color boost is better, the water retention is better. Like as far as the water, the, the lawn just being hardier, just being just more, more, more disease resistant, and just, and just being tougher is better. Um, that you're less likely to, to have scalping problems under when you're under growth regulator. Again, assuming you're verticating and doing all this stuff to kind of make sure that you're not built, that it's not getting too thatchy. There's just tons of benefits to this product outside of you cut your grass less. You know what I mean? Everyone thinks, oh, growth regulator, the only reason why you need to do this is that I can mow less. There's tons of other reasons to do it other than that. And, um, and again, I, any, I have not found anyone that's, that started using it that has been like, you know what? I really wish I hadn't incorporated growth regulator into my lawn care program. So something to consider. And this is a great size. Comes with a measuring cup built into it right there. So you see, you got your, it's just really easy to find to figure out how much product you are using. So we got these in stock on the Golf Course Lawn Store. So if you're trying to want to try out Primo, or chart goes regulator, 40 bucks gets you enough to cover 16,000 square feet. So like three or four applications on your standard size lawn, which is which is pretty cool. All right, Daniel uh, Ferraz is, is uh, next. He says, let me see, you know, you, get the, you already said that about the, um, about the, your, your uh, first squirrel kill. Uh, Paisley is here. She says, uh, hey Paisley, yeah, I, I know you, you we, we talk back and forth in email sometimes. Cool to actually finally see you in the, in the chat. He says, hey, Ron, after following you for two years, this is my first time being able to watch the live stream. Very cool, or the stream live. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Paisley. I appreciate you coming to hang out. I hopefully you have a question or comment or something. You know, it's cool to have you in here. So I appreciate that. Because uh, I think you're in you're in Georgia too. You're you're in Georgia just like uh, just like me, right? So it's just which is pretty cool. So I appreciate having you as a viewer. If I can help with anything, do let me know. 
do let me know. All right, we have another super chat from LG. I'm almost worried to see what this is because LG likes to he likes to torture me and torment me and egg me on sometimes. Let's see what did he, what did he say here. Super chat received. He says, uh, "Hey Ron, check out the new fangled uh, super chat. I'm glad you chose. <laughs> I'm cho glad you chose violence with the mole, bro. Yeah, here's the thing. I I, w I was thinking about if I were in the country somewhere, the shotgun would have come out because I I literally I was gonna go I was gonna go Caddyshack on him. Like I was thinking like." Um, can I get some propane and flood it? And you know, you know I mean, I was thinking about you know, some explosives. I, mean, I was, I was thinking about some ways to go after him. Um, but uh, in the end, you know, water flooding him out and the escrima stick of lawn justice uh, did his job. Again, Alex. I mean, here's the thing. Alex is a pro because it's the first time he ever uses too. I mean, he's not, he's, he's not trained with it with the stick. But by hand, but just, just you know, passing it on to him, he knew exactly what to do. And again, his form was impeccable. It was like. I mean, it was it was it was beautiful. One, one shot, one shot, one kill. It was that was it. It was uh, it only took one to put the mole down, and um, it was very humane where we where we did it. So there you go. Well, I'm glad. Um, I appreciate the super chat, LG. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully, it's a one and done. I don't have to deal with this again. But if I do, you guys will hear about it. I mean, definitely, you want to hear about it on the YouTube stories. You get to see my raw reaction then, because I, uh, you know, that uh, it was. If you want, if, you, if they're still up, so you can you can see the one from yesterday. If you if you want, if you want to you want to hear Ron really really like genuinely really hot, really mad. Um, watch the YouTube stories; it's, it's worth it for a good laugh. Uh, and Robert Mahora says that story is a hoot. Great investigative work. <laughs> you're you're very very welcome, Robert. I don't know why I'd call it investigative work, but I was I was I was clowning him a little bit. I was I was talking trash to him once he was gone. All right. Uh, next up is Clinton Wade. He says, hi, Ron, huge fan. Uh, any tips for a house renter? I'm happy to continue investing and caring for the centipede, but are there any specific tips that are more budget conscious for a property I don't own? Yeah, so, I mean, so for a property you don't own, I don't know if I would really go into like leveling it. I mean, that's a lot of work and that's, you're essentially doing something that you you can't leave behind, or that you are, sorry, that you are leaving behind for them. So... I would still say, you know, a good fertilization program. Most of the most of the stuff you can still do as a renter. Like getting a soil test done, you can still do as a renter. Fertilizing the lawn based on the soil test results, you can still do that as a renter. And then mowing it. You know what I mean? If you did just those things, like get a soil test, fertilize it based on the soil test, and mow it. That's the lawn's going to look great, and you're going to get a lot of the enjoyment out of it because while you're living there. And you're not, you know, again, I wouldn't go out and do like a top dress or anything, any kind of major work because, again, it's not your property and you don't want to, again, unless you just really like the place and you want to leave the neighbor a nicely top dress lawn whenever you, or the, the owner a nicely top dress lawn whenever you, uh, you decide to move. Um, but outside of that, everything else you pretty much can do. You know what I mean? So, I, uh, so, so the biggest thing I'd say is mowing is really important. Regardless of whether you own the property or not, mowing and from an appearance standpoint is literally the most important part of this whole thing you know what i mean and then as far as getting the color uh just improving um the the, the quality of your soil all those kinds of th like those those other supportive um, um type actions that's where soil testing and acting on the soil test results really comes into play so hope that helps clinton if you have any other questions let me know i had i have another um image here from a viewer that um he he asked me to show here was a fungus problem so i promised i would show it so i'm gonna show you guys here it's a fungus problem in his lawn, and it looks like if you look at it, I mean, at first I was thinking kind of dollar spotty, right? But if you look at it, there are some small rings. It's almost like some brown patch that's trying to develop there. He tried using uh, Bio Advanced, um, is what he told me, and he didn't have much result with it, um, good results with it. From what I understand, Bio Advanced is propiconazole, just only that. So what I might try, if you're watching this pace, um, so if you're watching this, I'll tell you how to answer the live stream, is uh, consider trying something like Headway or trying a product with a Celeprin, uh, not, not Celeprin, with, um, with Zoxastrobin in it, right? So try switching it up. If you've done a few um, a few apps of propiconazole, that, that bio-advanced product, and it's not, not getting it done, consider switching it up to a, um, to a, different, to a, different, uh, a different product. So that, that would be my advice for you. Again, if you want a, a all-in-one type product, Headway G, uh, which we carry on the golf course lawn store is great. It's got a Dr. Chauvin and Purple Cotton is all in it. You can try that. And it works very well against Summer Patch and Brown Patch. Really good for that. But uh, but yeah, that's the only advice, other advice I could give to you. Because I promise you I have an answer on the live stream. So, man of my word, I have answered it on the show for you. 
Mr. Travis Winston is in the house. He says, happy Friday, guys. What's going on, Travis? Hopefully you're doing well, sir. Thanks for coming to hang out. And Calvin Winston, are you guys related? Calvin and Travis Winston? Can I, what, what's, the, what's the likelihood we have two Winstons in the live stream right after each other? Hmm. Right? What's going on, Calvin? Thanks for coming to hang out. And then next up is Flippin' While You Sippin'. He says to Disney, he says, Big Ron, what's up? Question, I've been slacking, got a few weeds popping up, and what's a good product to throw down right now in July? I live in Houston, so it's very hot. So you didn't tell what kind of weeds you have, but I'm assuming that they're broad leaves or sedges, which is the most common ones that most people have to deal with in their lawns this time of year. And because you're in Houston, I'm also assuming you have a warm season grass like St. Augustine or Bermuda. What I would recommend um, is a product called Celsius. So what you'll find on the channel is a video that um, I did last year about, um, about herbicides, right? About herbicides you can use. And, and I was looking for a combination. I was looking for a combination that would work well, both in, you know, when temperatures were milder and also was very effective whenever temperatures got hot like they are now. So something that didn't have the temperature restrictions. So what I came up with was a combination called Celsius uncertainty. I mean, I didn't really come up with it, but it was after doing a lot of research, that is the one that I settled on as far as making content on and just to, to tell you guys about because it's one that works pretty much like all throughout the growing season. So I'll show you that now. So you go to the store, go to shop and then weed killer. And then if it's a if it's broad leaves primarily that you're dealing with, Celsius is what you're gonna to wanna to go with. Celsius doesn't really have any temperature restrictions. It's safe for all grass types, all warm season grass types, warm season grass types, other than Bahia. So don't spray it on Bahia, but other than Bahia, you can spray Celsius on all other warm season grasses. For better results, mixing it with a surfactant is good. It is recommended. So use like something like the spreader yield sticker, like this. Those two together do a really good job uh, as far as eliminating broad leaves, spurge, uh, like, like spurge, um, like tons of. It's an excellent product for broad leaves. Okay, and if you have sedges, so like your any like your yellow nut sedge, kalinga, um, globe sedge, um, anything with sedge in it, right? Sedge or kalinga like the Cadillac product for warm season grass, in my opinion, is a product called Certainty. So Certainty for sedges and POA, which you don't have POA this time of year, but, but um, Certainty for sedges and Celsius for broad leaves. The nice thing is you can mix these two together. Like if you look in the product description for either of these, there's actually a video where I show how to do that. I show how to mix Celsius and Certainty like this. I show you how to mix this, 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 and a little bit of marker dye all together to get a really good result with killing like the most common sets of weeds, your sedges, your broad leaves in warm season grass. If you decide you wanna do all of them, you can save yourself a little bit of money and time by not having to add them all to your cart individually by just getting the kit, which is a little bit cheaper than buying them all, all separately. Um, and as far as like the combination for warm season grass, in my opinion, that will let, that like will dock out um, most common weeds that, and also doesn't have temperature restrictions, that is the one that I would recommend going with. The only thing I would say to really supplement that is if you have, say, a lot of crabgrass, right, and you caught them late in the season, so like, like this time of year is when you decide you're going to start treating crabgrass, quinclorac is a better option, but even it works better when the crabgrass is young. You know what I mean? So that's the only thing I'd say. If you got a lot of crabgrass, quinclorac could be something to try, but even that one, you got to be careful as temps get higher. So hope that helps. Flipping while you sipping, kind of a long answer, but I wanted to give you the why versus just say, buy this, right? So now you know. All right, Clinton Wade says, as, as an aside, your production value, both in this live stream and your usual uploads is second to none. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you so much. The professionalism of what you produce and share is unreal. Well, you know what? There's never a harm. There's no harm in doing a thing well, right, Clinton? And because also as a side hobby, I enjoy cinematography. I like I like cinematography. I like well, I could say this. I like I like storytelling through video, which is cinematography is right. I enjoy that. I enjoy cameras and lenses and and producing and just getting different looks and whatnot. So every week, I mean, if you guys between from week to week, I try different things. I tweak different things. You guys may not notice, but this looks different. Like if you don't believe me, look at when this video is over. Look at this live stream this week. If you look at the this camera or this angle, like the way this thing looks this week, compared to how it looks last week, it's different. It's different. I wonder if you now, as a tip, you know, in the comments, if you guys are watching this after the fact, um, for any of you guys that are into video, what did I change? What changed between this week to last week 
that makes this scene, this angle, this camera angle, it's not just the angle, but just that makes this look different this week to last week. Throw a guess in there and I will, if you guess right, I'll let you know. So, but yeah, I enjoy it. And, I, and I, the thing with it as well too, Clinton, from my standpoint, when I'm, while I'm looking for the next comment, is with YouTube, especially with lawn care content, it's, it can stick around for a long time. It's what you call evergreen content for the most part, right? So there's no there's no reason to not make it as good as you can. I mean, it takes more time, it takes more effort. It definitely takes longer in the edit, but I think you guys enjoy it. And it's just something that if you're gonna put something out there for the world to see, why not make it as good as you can? You know, some people may like it, some people may hate it, but I mean, at least when I release a piece of content, I wanna be happy with it from, from me. Whether anyone else likes it or not, I'm mean, granted, I do make content that tries to solve problems, but I, I put more time and energy into making it look as good as it can, making it sound as good as it can, because sound is a huge part of it as, as much as I can, because that's what I, I would want. Like I, I've been subject, like you guys probably have too, to annoying videos where the audio is terrible, or the video looks like they was, it was filmed, filmed on an Etch-A-Sketch, and it's not fun to, to deal with, right? So I, I try to not do that. I used to in the past, and I try not to do that now. All right, next up is Heartfelt Fashion. He says, happy Friday, Ron. Got, what you got in your cup these days? Are you still drinking Milo's lemonade? Today it's just water, just plain old H2O, nothing special. Water and like melted ice, that's all. Yep, that's all. No Milo's. I've got some Publix lemonade in the fridge, but um, but no, just water, just plain old H2O tonight. No, uh, no Milo's, unfortunately. No Milo's, I need more Super Chats. You know, be able to afford Milo's, it's, it's premium, man. It's a premium product. All right, spending all my money on fertilizer and stuff and irrigation and everything, right? All right, next up is Grass Thief. Let's see here. He says, uh, Ron, 49 days young Tahoma, uh, 49 days young, so he just, he just uh, um, added his Tahoma 49 days ago is what he's trying to say. It desperately in need of lawn leveling. Uh, the turf is doing well. Question, should I wait till next season to level uh, reason being height of cut around one and a half inches. Not necessarily. What I might, what I probably wouldn't do if you just want to be, you know, just be nice to the lawn is maybe not aerate it. Like don't don't um, introduce a ton of trauma into the lawn as far as like aeration that type that type of thing goes this year. But if you want to level it, you want to top dress it. There's no problem with that. I mean, just just go light. If you, I mean, when I say this, don't go do like what you see some people online doing, where they turn the entire lawn into like a a, a sand lot. Don't do that. As long as you, you you keep it to, you know, a, a quarter to half an inch tops of material, and you're at an inch and a half, um, that's that's going to work really well. I mean, even if you don't, here's the thing, even if you decide you didn't want to scalp it, right? You didn't want you don't want to bring it down, and you just want to level it at one and a half inches. It's going to work. It's going to be more work. Like using the leveling rake in an inch and a half grass is going to be harder than doing it on like say inch grass, which is what I would try and get down to if I, if you can. But um, if you don't, it's not the end of the world. You can still absolutely top dress and level inch and a half Bermuda. Just realize it's gonna be a bit more physical work as far as getting the, the, the leveling mix to spread out and you know, to fill in the uneven areas. And the thing is, even if you just do a light top dress this year, you're ahead of the game. Because next year, when you're a lot more comfortable with it, when it's more established and you, you, don't, you have no reservations about scalping it, you're already gonna, you know, the work that you're doing now is gonna put you a little bit ahead of the game. So next year's top dress is not gonna be quite as much work. So I would absolutely go for it. If you wanna do it, go for it. Just go light. That would be my only recommendation. Go light. All right, Blue Skies is here next. He says, I live here in Jackson County, Georgia. Just put down four pallets of Tiff Tough from Superside one week ago. Is it too soon to put sand and hummus in the gaps in between the rolled out pieces? No, not really. I mean, you can do that. I mean, here's the thing. I've, there's um, the, like the, I always say that like the nice, the nice homes in the neighborhood, right? Like the entrance to the nice homes in the neighborhood. And also there's a, um, if you guys, well, there's a, there's a, a subdivision that was built late last year and the entrance area, they were laying sod down there. It's, it's kind of a nice, nice community. Literally they laid the sod the day, the, um, one day, and uh, two days later, it was more than a couple days later, it was a couple days later, they're out there, they're out there um, leveling it, they're putting out a top dress on it. So you can, as long as you go light, you absolutely can do that, Blue Skies. Again, I would not go, again, just don't go crazy heavy, but you can absolutely uh, top dress the um, the new saw that you just put in, just go light. Just be, you know, be gentle on it. Don't aerate it as part of, as part of top dressing it. It's gonna help it fill in faster. It's gonna, it's just tons of benefits, tons of reasons to do it. The only reason not to do it is that it's hot right now. It's a lot of work. That's the only reason not to do it. But outside of that, there's only benefits to it. 
All right, Dalvin Larry says, hey Ron, no questions, trying to talk my wife into letting me buy this Sterling. Really, I mean, it's, I mean, she's, well, I mean, here's the thing. A couple, a couple of talking points, the reason why you could say it's a great idea to buy the Sterling is it is battery powered. So if you do care about the environment and you want to you know, do your part for the earth, uh, then it's, there's, there's a good reason from that standpoint to get a Sterling. Um, the interchangeable cartridge system, you know, so you'll be able to verticut it and, and turf rake and do all these other things. Also a great reason to do it. Uh, it is a good looking piece of mower. It's a good looking piece of equipment. I mean, I could show you here, uh, not that one, but maybe this guy. I mean, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful mower. I mean, look at that. That looks really good on the lawn, doesn't it? And, uh, and it's small, it's light. Here's the thing, if she even wanted to, she could use it, because it's not really big and super heavy and, and kind of intimidating. She could use the Sterling if she wanted to. I mean, you may not want to go with that one, maybe scratch that as a, as a pro, but I'm just saying there's, there's tons of reasons for it. Just keep, just keep asking and begging and pleading and letting her know that it's gonna bring you happiness. And uh, maybe one day she might come around and let you do it. Confidence is high, Dalvin. Confidence is high. Given everything else you do to the lawn and she knows how much you're into it, I think that eventually if you just keep working on her, she will probably let you get the sterling. All right. Next up is Kevin Drury. He says, hey, I sent you an email this evening showing the lime discoloration I'm having in my Bermuda. It's an area that gets shade from 10 to 3.30 p.m. That sounds like, a, like most of the day, Kevin. So let's say 11, 12. Yeah, that's most, most of the day. Um, it, I saw this area in July last summer. So yeah, if it's, it sounds like it's not getting enough sunlight uh, because let me see, so 10, so 11, 11, 11, 12, one, two, three. Um, we'll call it three. We're gonna call it six hours. So six hours of shade. You didn't even say sunlight. Six hours of shade. So it's getting sunlight from like sunrise, which is around 6 -ish a.m. this time of year, 6, 7, 7 a.m or to 10, so it's you know, three hours or so, three, four hours of sunlight in the morning. And it's not even the good sunlight, that's like the, the, the sun just starting to come up. Then no shade for a long time, and then decent sunlight from 3, 30, 4 o'clock until like sunset. So I think it's just a situation of not enough light, man. Um, if there's anything you can do, Kevin, to increase that, to increase the amount of light the lawn's getting, that will probably help. But you're gonna run into all kinds of problems um, by not having enough light on the lawn. Like there's not much I can tell, like Bermuda will tolerate many things. It will tolerate being cut long. It will tolerate you not feeding it enough. It will even tolerate not even getting a lot of water now and then. The only thing, pretty much the only kryptonite that Bermuda has, the only kryptonite is lack of sunlight. And like with it, the more, the more you give it, the better, the more, the better. So if there's anything you can do to help to increase it, that would be my bet. That, that would be my advice. Anything you can do to, to, to get that, um, you know, to get that number up from what's like, sounds like six hours or so, five to six hours of sunlight, of good sunlight for being generous, to more like seven, eight, nine hours, then you're gonna find the lawn's gonna take off. The color's gonna be better, it's not gonna get thin, it's just, in general, it's just gonna be a lot better. Uh, but you know, you know six, six hours-ish of not the, necessarily the best sunlight is um, is not gonna work that well. Like if you told me that it only gets sunlight between 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., that's less bad than the other way around. Like it being shaded at that time of day, that's when the that's when you're getting a lot of light, you know what I mean? So I'd almost wanna flip it if I could. But, um, but yeah, anything you can do to increase the amount of light the grass is getting is going to be worthwhile, in my opinion. That's, that's, that's where I would spend my time if I were you. I'll also look for the email. If there's any other tips I can share once I get done with the live stream, I'll do that and uh, give you some more feedback. But the big thing is just if anything you can do to increase light is going to be your uh, your best bet. All right, Brian Sullivan says, uh, let's see this. Um, let's see. Uh, nope. Let's see here. Nope. Uh, I, I, got, I know we got um, um, Stuart, Stuart Rohan is up next. We see his his question is, I just discovered your channel. Thanks for all the, let me see here. Yep, this is, I discovered your channel, awesome. Uh, I have uh, Zoysia Palisades in South Carolina, thinking about a real mower, should I buy a cheap one just to see if it's something I wanna continue? Yeah, yeah, I think so, Stuart. I think so. Um, I th so the thing is, the big thing with real mowing, right, is it is the best way to take care of warm season grass that likes to be cut short. So like zoysia, bermuda, centipede, like they all benefit from being from real mowing. They, they, they're gonna look their best when real mowed. That said, 
it's a big time commitment, right? So like this time of year, you gotta be out there at least twice a week, really if you're serious, three times a week uh, mowing. So you gotta be someone that one, enjoys mowing grass. And uh, I guess that's, so getting a manual one, manual one, buying like a manual push reel mower is a good way to kind of dip your toe in a little bit and see if that's for you. What I wouldn't do is this, right? If you get the manual, don't use that as the, um, you know, by looking at that, by the manual real more and saying, well, the way the, the, the grass looks is, um, you know, I'm not happy with it, that it's not smooth enough, this kind of thing. Really, if you go with a, with a, with a push reel mower, go into that just from the standpoint of seeing, is this something that I want to do? From a time standpoint, do I want to spend my time doing this? Do I, am I getting enough enjoyment out of spending this much time out in the lawn? If the answer to that is yes, then moving into a powered reel mower like a pre-owned true cut, um, is what I would say go with. I'm a big fan of true cuts as far as uh, like their next tier up from your first mower from a powered reel mower from a, that's, that's also less expensive. There are like the battery powered ones, like the, the Allet makes some really, really good mowers that are battery powered, um, but they're a lot more expensive. But, but before you decide on a powered mower, whether it be by battery power or, or gas, make sure it's for you. Make sure that, that you have the time to do it, that you enjoy doing it, and then at that point, um, you know, make the plunge, make, take the plunge. And then, so the so big thing I'd say is yes, get a manual reel mower, but do not look at how, how the lawn looks while, you, while you're cutting with a manual reel mower to say, this isn't worth it because the, the, the look of the lawn isn't as nice as I would like it to be or as I expected it to be. It still should look better than a rotary, but the, when it's gonna go, when it's gonna become like, like the lawn your neighbors are gonna envy is when you put a powered reel mower on it. So when you put like a true cut on it or, um, you know, any, any powered real mowing system is when the lawn is just gonna skyrocket and really look awesome. But you gotta work up to that. You gotta make sure that you want, you know, you want that first before you, um, you really go, you really go that route. All right, um, so, but I appreciate you one finding the channel and also appreciate the, the question. If you need anything else, uh, definitely let me know. Definitely let me know. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, next up, we got uh, Robert Rainey. He says, do you do your yard work in your SE846? He says, no, I, no, I don't. I use, um, I have like just um, some, like either some wired um, air, um, air buds, like the cheap ones that the, that the, uh, that the an iPhone, that they don't come with it anymore, but they used to come with, or I also have AirPods. I have AirPods because what's cool about these, right, is I can put these on and then I can put my Hearing Pro over them and um, between the noise cancellation that's in these and then also the hearing protection, like it, if I'm using the Greens Master on the slope, then it's really, it's really, really quiet. I can listen to music or listen to a podcast or whatever, and it's really, really good. Um, and, uh, but no, I don't think the 846s are for like nice listening or for you guys. So you guys, get the, I, for this, I use them or for listening to music when I'm at my desk or listening to just stuff at my desk, I will have them for that because they're, they're nice, they're expensive. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna tear them up. I mean, although like the cable, the cable they come with, I can't really show you. This cable, it is a Kevlar reinforced cable. So it is, it's a, I mean, it's everything about them, they're built to be used, right? They're built to be used. Like musicians use these, um, you know, fairly often. So it's, a, it's not like you, you have to be delicate with them or anything like that. But the reason why they've lasted 10 years, is I also don't tear them up, right? I also try and, I try and treat them nice because they're expensive. All right, uh, let's see who else we have. Um, who else we have here? Um, next up, we, uh, we have uh, Ke uh, Kevin Jury. Uh, he says, I feel you're on on the anger and passion on killing the mole. It gets personal when you put so much work in you on. Dude, here's the thing. I did not think that it would hurt me that much. So guys, I know we're at, like, we're, at least we're at the most people we've had in the live stream tonight. So what happened to me Thursday, and I'll tell the story one more time. I'm gonna give you the shorter version of it. Yesterday morning, I go out to go check the mail and this is what I see happening in the lawn. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a mole, a mole, found its way into the lawn and was digging up the lawn. What made it worse, what makes this worse is I, I have security cameras on the front lawn so I could see you know, what was happening. And I, want, I just said I was gonna check them to see, hey, did it do it in the middle of the night? When, when was it, when did it, that this happened? So if I look at the video, which you guys can watch now, look at the left side of your screen, you can see, you can actually see the track, the mole actually burrowing across the lawn. You can see it's slowly growing. This happened over the course of about two hours, 90 minutes to two hours. Literally in broad daylight, this mole is out there um, digging up my lawn. 
So at that point, it just became, you know, I got, I got again, this is the third time I'm telling the story on the live stream tonight, but for those of you guys that haven't heard this, it's a good story. At this point, I call my buddy Alex next door, because Alex is really good at killing stuff in lawns. He helped me with a snake problem I had one time. And he came over and we uh, we flushed him out, man. We, we took, we, we blocked off his exit path. First thing I did was get a, uh, take a shovel and block him in. So like, you're here, you want like, like pretty much I was saying, you want to be in the lawn? Let's be in the lawn. You want to be in Milan? Now, now you're in here. There's only one way out of here. So we blocked that off. We got a hose, suck it down in his little um, tunnel, started flooding it, and we just waited. And about a minute and a half later, you, you literally you started seeing the ground bubble. And I, for again, for a small second, I felt bad for him because literally he like surfaced and you could see like almost like I don't know if he was coughing, but literally you know, most most can't. They need air, right? They 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 need oxygen. They can't breathe. They can't inhale water. They don't have gills. So he was like, he's trying to get her from the water, trying to get air. And literally as he came up, I felt bad for like half a second. But then Alex was right next to me. And I was like, you know what to do. And he, he I mean, he didn't even, he didn't savor it. He just, I threw the pass it to him. It was like, boom, done. One shot, dead. And uh, I, I was still mad all, even though he was dead, even though we, even though we killed him, you can see the, uh, the after. Even though this is the after, of what happened, that little brat that was destroying my lawn. All, th this literally ruined my day. All day I was mad about this. Just, cause, because it was just, I, I don't, I, and I get the mole didn't know. The mole's just doing what moles do. But why do you have to do it in the front? Why couldn't you done it like a small area of the back lawn? This guy literally went on the front lawn and just like, it was a giant, it was like a giant, just ain't care, I'ma do me, and the front lawn is what he did. So that's that's when it became perfect. That, that's when, I, you know, just, it's like, you want to fight? You want to play? Let's play. And he got his. One shot. He was done. And he got handed off to, uh, to a friend that's up. Uh, I guess he works on, he does like, I think he teaches like wildlife or something. Wildlife conservation or something. He, want, he, wanted, he wanted the dead mole, so he got the dead mole and whatever. So hopefully that's the only one. And I, but I got to tell you, I'm, guys, I, I mean, I know we're kind of getting into the live stream here, but I'm kind of having withdrawals from this. Like this morning when I got up and I went outside, I was, I was thinking to myself, Am I gonna see another tunnel? Like, is it gonna be? Is it gonna be like bad like that? Because I was, I was literally when I opened the door to walk outside, I, I like opened the door and I just kind of looked real quick. You know, I didn't see anything. I said, okay, good, we're, we're good so far. And I walked out, got the mail. There was no more tracks in the lawn. You know, life is good, but I, it's gonna be a while to get over this. It's gonna be a while. It's not gonna. It, it, maybe for the rest of the season, it's gonna be a thing where I'm gonna get the shakes when I walk out there in the morning just to see if there's another one that's trying to mess up my lawn or something. Man, I just, I, it was not good. It was not good. It was not, not good. All right, next up is uh, Salvador uh, L. He says, uh, mole murder. Ron is the dawn of this story, and Alex is the, <laughs> is the hit is the hit man. Way to band together to protect the neighborhood. That's how it was, because here's the thing. I was very emotional about it. You know, I was like the, the kingpin who someone stole something from him, right? You know, you came in, like, I, I brought you in. You're, you're, you're part of the, you're part of the, the Nosa Costa, and you, you came in, and then you, you know, you, you, you took from me. You know what I mean? And I was very emotional, very hurt by it. Just, you know, it just, it was, it was a thing. Alex was just very matter of fact. He was like, you know what? Sometimes moles got to die. They just got to go. They got to go down. It's got to happen. And I, I'm the guy. Just, I got, you know, I, as soon as we get him out, I just eat him a tool. And he just, he literally, after he killed it, uh, he just, he practically himself and started walking over. I was went out there filming and talking trash to the mole and be like, you see, you brought this on yourself. This was unnecessary. You didn't have to do this. I know I'm crazy talking to a dead mole. But I don't care. I needed to get it out. I needed. I needed to. And even just doing it now, it feels good. It's, it's like it's kind of cleansing. You know what I mean? Anyway, next question. Next question. Let me let it go. <laughs> All right. Coralita says, "Hey Ron, just stopping by. My boyfriend, who's already obsessed with the lawn care, started following you earlier this year. With your advice, our lawn looks gorgeous now. So thanks. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that, uh, Coralita. I'm glad that." Uh, one, he found the channel and that he's doing this stuff because there's a lot of people that find the channel and they don't do anything with it. So I'm glad he found it and that has been proving to be useful towards you guys getting a great lawn, which is awesome. You know what I mean? So that's uh, that's that's great stuff. And it's only going to get better because he said, he, when did he find it? He found it earlier this year. So yeah. So the first year, the first year we start working on your lawn is really foundational. Yes, within, from the, from the beginning, like say from April time frame to now, it's a big change. Believe me, if he continues with it, like this time next year, he won't even recognize it. He won't, he won't even, the lawn that he sees now that looks incredible, like you'll be like, last year's lawn was nothing compared to what it, the way it is now. Because what's going to happen, what invariably is going to probably happen, is he's going to start incorporating like more things. He's going to start like, 
doing like biostimulants in the lawn. He may even consider top dressing in it. He might get a real mower and all these, all, and it, he goes down this rabbit hole and the net result is you end up with a lawn that looks incredible. You know what I mean? So it's cool. It's cool. Let um let him um let him keep up with it. And you're right. And and Carlito, you are right. You're the only person that told me this is keep up the great work and remember to spell check the world the word manager. Yes, I know. I know <laughs> I know who this I know who this is now. Yeah, yep, yep. You you definitely got me. I know I know exactly who uh, I know who your boyfriend is because he emailed me about this. He actually gave me a hard time. Ah always a critic. Always a critic. That's okay. It's all in love. All right, next up is um, Ben Raham. He says, instead of spoon feeding, is super feeding an option? How much can you push without burning? No, I mean, I think I already answered this, Ben. I think you, uh, but I'm not a fan of doing that because, because burning isn't the only reason why you don't want to push a ton of nitrogen or excess growth in the lawn. Like it just creates problems. Like one, you got to get out there and mow it a lot more. Um, if you're not bagging your clippings, you're putting a lot more debris into the lawn. So from a, so from a thatch standpoint, you're just you're just you're fast tracking getting a lot of thatch in your lawn. Um, if your lawn if you are prone to lawn diseases, high nitrogen mixed with like the hot temperatures of summer, mixed with a lot of rainfall, you're creating conditions that, that lawn disease becomes can become more of a thing. So there's really no benefit to it other than if you're trying to get your grass to go grow really quickly. Um, but if but the point is. You, you're getting it to grow really quickly, but not in the way you really want it to grow long term. Like you don't want your grass to grow, you know, an inch a day. You know, that's just not, that's not, that's not good. You know what I mean? It's almost like giving, it's almost like steroids. Like, you know, if you want to get bigger and stronger. It is more work to get in the gym and maybe do, or do, to do like a calisthenics program to do moderate weights over the course of like, you know, many months, over many years and slowly build a physique. But that is more, while it's more work and it takes longer, it is more sustainable. It's more sustainable, less chance for injury. You're not gonna hurt, you know, you're not gonna hurt yourself. It's just just better in in for in many ways. So I it's not something that I would recommend because just the fact that you didn't burn your lawn, that's not the um that's not the only downside to it. That's as a matter of fact, that's like one of the the smaller, the smaller downsides, in in my opinion. All right. Um the crazy long guy says he says, um, uh, what exactly is the point of trolling a lawn care channel? Bro, listen, you have the idea. There are people that have nothing to do with their time. You know, it's funny, you know, we can, take a, we can spend like, like 30 seconds on this. Like if I don't like something or I don't like someone, I, it's with me, it's very obvious. If I don't like you, it's very, very obvious. I just do the thing that people, that most people hate more than anything else. I just ignore you. I just, I'm just not gonna spend, I'm definitely not gonna spend my time to go out of my way to go and talk trash to you or spend time in a lot and, and to come and try and crash a live stream where people are trying to have a good time talking about lawn care. So think about it. How much of a loser do you have to be to do that? So whatever, whatever's broken in them. And again, they got nothing else to do with their time. So be it, but they won't come back here anymore unless they create another, another, um, another handle because they're banned and they can create another one. We'll just ban that one. So yeah, I mean, whatever. Some people got nothing to do with their time, man. All right, uh, next is Zoysia versus Bermuda. And you know, we need to talk about your handle. I, I saw the picture, I showed the picture off. Um, he says, hey Ron, I just sent the picture of my Zoysia. I need to redeem myself, LOL. Yeah, so it, we, can we say Bermuda, can't you change like Bermuda and some Zoysia or Bermuda and Zoysia? Because if you say Zoysia versus Bermuda, and here's the thing, you put the Zoysia first. Like B comes before Z in the alphabet. It just, it just seems like to me you are making zoysia the dominant and the superior grass just in your handle. And it's, I'm not going to say it's offensive, but it just, it, it makes me wonder, you know, really what, what's, what's going on. If you're really putting the right amount of thought and consideration into, you know, what you're putting out there when you're on YouTube. So just something to think about. Um, I, I will look for your picture. I might be able to find it really quickly here. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Um, yeah, see, I'm looking, this actually looks pretty good. We, we can show this picture, guys. I will see if I can bring it up here on the channel. He's trying to redeem himself as far as his Zoysia picture because the one is, I'm not sure, it looks like it was, was taken very late in the evening, a little bit washed out. Um, so I'll show you guys, because the lawn actually, I have to say, for Zoysia, it actually looks really good. For Zoysia, it actually looks pretty good. Yeah, see that? You, you, you don't like that, right? <laughs> For Zoysia, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, so take a look at this, at his lawn. This is actually pretty nice. I, I have to admit, the one thing with Zoysia, I will admit from a color standpoint, it's very pretty. It's a very pretty grass. It's very pretty grass. It's not bad, right guys? It's not bad. It's not a bad looking, I mean, I, I still like more Bermuda better, but it's it's not bad. I'll, I'll take that, Bermuda versus Zoysia. 
So thanks for sending the picture to redeem yourself. And again, you know I'm just giving you a hard time, right? Please don't take what I'm saying seriously. I'm just, I like, I like to have fun. All right, uh, William Leach says, what VertiCutter do you use? Was the Outlet VertiCut cartridge awesome? Yes, I use the Outlet VertiCutting cartridge. Uh, so here's the thing, earlier this year, the VertiCutter that I, what I use to VertiCut the, the lawn is a slit seeder. So what you can, you can use those to do it. It kind of has like the flails that, not technically a VertiCutter, but if you set them up just right, you can use it to VertiCut. So I did that earlier this year. It creates a very big mess that you didn't have to go clean up, right? A better option, it's a lot more expensive option, is to get an interchangeable cartridge mower like one of the outlets um, and use their verticutting cartridge. So in the video that I did, uh, like the last the last one that was not like not this long, not my long form content, not the live stream content, like the, the, the standard content for the channel on um, the seven lawn care tips for a great lawn, in that video, you can actually see the verticutting cartridge. If you wanted to, you know, if you want to check it out and see what it looks like, um, then you can you can see it in that video. It's tip number six. Tick tip number six, I think. Yeah, tip number six. Am I right? I think so. Yeah, so it gets turf rake and then verticut. I think so. Yeah, six and then seven. Yep. So uh, so, so it's near it's towards the end of the video. Watch the whole video. It's not that long. So yeah, if you want to see what it looks like, William at William Leach. Um, this is the video that has that, actually, you actually see it on the table in front of me. It's pretty awesome, it's really awesome. I, I have mine set up to two millimeters just above the soil surface and it does a great job. Okay, Kyle Adams, we already answered your question about the next products. I'm sorry for guys for taking so long to get down to your, to your comments. I know we are, um, it's just, it's just uh, it takes me a while. Sometimes I get a little bit long-winded on my, on my answers. But next up we got Cedric G here, he says, Big Ron. Uh, I just got the results from my soil test. Uh, my pH levels are optimal. That's good, because that's that's the thing that takes oftentimes the longest to fix, so that's always a good sign. However, my, my micronutrients are way up. Uh, however, I'm good with that. I back off a little bit with the, with the sea kelp and Nutrisol. Yeah, so that's, that's all you have to do. I mean, you can, if you want to back off on how much Nutrisol you're putting down, just do that. Just, just reduce it a little bit and, um, and you're good to go. Because the big thing is, I mean, if I had to pick anything to be correct in a soil, see be correct, but to be optimal in a soil test result, it would be pH because everything else is much easier to fix and much faster to fix than soil pH. So you're good to go, uh, Cedric. Glad, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. Um, Howard Hutchinson says, can I mix um, plant growth regulator solution with Lesco 1200 along with Celsius? I don't know, you I mean, you should be able to. You'd have to, you'd have to test mixing those two together. I've never actually tried that, uh, Howard, but uh, assuming that they pass a jar test, like, you know, you can mix, that they don't do anything weird when you put them all together, um, you should be able to. I've never I've never actually mixed plant growth regulator with Celsius, but I'm trying to think of why you can't do that. Uh, I, I think a negative, so, so something that comes to mind, a negative why you might not want to do that so the less, assuming the Lesco and the PGR um, will mix nicely together, then that I don't have any heartburn about. But the 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 one thing I might be I might hold off on doing Celsius is because with Celsius to really get really to get the best results, you want to use a surfactant with it. And I'd be concerned about potentially causing some tip burn or just some discoloration or other discoloration if you were to use. Surfactant along with Primo Max because you don't really don't, you don't need surfactant with Primo. So if you did it, if you just did just Primo, less the, the liquid fruit you're talking about, and Celsius with no surfactant, I'd be more inclined to try that than to also add a surfactant to it because I, I think you, you're probably going to get some discoloration if you um, if you apply Celsius in the most optimal way. You know what I mean? So if you try and do Celsius the, mo the most correct way, you're probably going to um, cause a little bit of tip burn with the plant growth regulator. If you try and do it the way that's not necessarily the most optimal, it's, you're, you're still gonna get good results, um, but then you're likely, the likelihood of you causing damage will, should be, and uh, that damage, which is just temporary discoloration, should be reduced some. So it's kind of your call. Or what you could do is spray the PGR and then mix up another batch and spray the Celsius along with um, surfactant. That's probably what I would do. If it were me, that's, that's what I would do. I would do the Celsius separately. I would do the herbicide app separate from my growth regulator and fertilizer app. That is what, that's, that's probably what I would do. Okay, next is Latanja Moore says, hello, Ron and Ron fam. Um, what kind of sand is okay for top dressing? Great, great question. So there's a couple different options, Latanja. The, what I'm a fan of is a coarser sand. So uh, a river sand or masonry sand. 
those tend to be tend to work well. What I would try to avoid are like play sand, like a very very fine sand. Try, avoid that for for top dressing. You want to use like a coarser a coarser or or a river sand. That's that's the the best bet. If you're in Georgia, uh, if you're in Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, North Carolina, or Alabama. And there's like five states. Uh, Super Sod makes a leveling mix that has USGA sand, so it's a very, very clean quartz. It's, got, it's a very, very good sand. As far as sand goes, it's about as good as you can get. Very good sand. Along with their compost, so it's a sand and compost blend that's already done for you. And they don't, and because they, they, they screen this so many times, there's practically no trash in it, no debris. So there's not rocks, twigs, pieces of tree bark, all this kind of stuff that you have to eventually get rid of when you top dress. Um, so if you can spring for it, that's what I would recommend. And if you happen to live in Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, or North Carolina, um, that is what I would use for your top dressing for, for, for your lawn leveling project. It's a very, very good material. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's um, but you definitely get what you pay for as far as this goes. And just, I mean, it's not much, but if you want to save $10, you can use the link that we have for the channel, and that will that will save you a little bit on um, on the Super Side leveling mix. That's what I used on the lawn on the front lawn this spring and on the back lawn last year. It, it, here's the thing that's gonna be funny, is when the really lawn gets top dressed next week, assuming that the stars align that happens, it's going to get, um, like it's gonna get a compost and sand, masonry sand blend, but it's not gonna be the super solid leveling mix. So I'm probably gonna have to do some cleanup work after I'm done, as far as having to rake it and get debris and little small pebbles, this kind of stuff out of it. So I'll definitely, I'll film that. You guys can see it, so you can see the difference between like when you have a, a, a a mix that's very, 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 very clean versus one that is still good, but is not quite as clean as uh, the, the stuff that Superside puts out. All right, next up is Eric B. He says, um, Ron, is Dithiopere coming back to the store short to the to the store shortly? Uh, more to completely cover, I need more to completely cover 15,000 square feet. I see it's out of stock in several places. Fall pre-emergent, uh, preventing spurge germination prior to the drop in temps in the 70s. Yeah, so dithiopyr will come back into stock um, as we get closer to the time for pre-emergent. Like, you don't want to buy a bunch of stuff and just have it sitting around. So, because you wouldn't want to use it now. Like, this time of year is not really a time to use dithiopyr or prodiamine. So, in the spring, it's more of a spring product and a fall product. So, when we get closer to the fall, I imagine it will come back in stock again. So, yeah, so just stay tuned. What you can do, Eric, is if you're interested in it, sign up for the mailing list. Like on there, there's like a, there's a big red button that says notify me when this is back in stock. If you put your email into that, as soon as it comes back into stock, you'll you'll automatically get an email saying, hey, that fire is back in stock. Do you like to get some? Here's a link to it. So you can be one of the first to get it, and then you don't have to worry about like supply issues or running out or in the area and that kind of thing. So that is what I would do. That's what I would do. Okay, let's see what we got next here. We have um, lawn strewel. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm sure. I'm not sure. Let's see. You got a, a little, a little, a little rhyme going on here. All right. Anyway, we get next up. We have um, um, NMS Auditor One. So the mole story reminds me of a scene from the movie Office Space when they take the printer out to the field and beat it with a bat while the die uh, song plays in the background. Yeah, I mean, it was he, we didn't we didn't abuse him. I mean, it was just one good strike to put him down, um, you know. But it was, so he was we didn't abuse him or like you know mess with him or do anything do anything terribly bad. But he had to die. He was he was gone. He was he was gonna be gone. That was not gonna be. He was there. He, there was no there was no coming back from uh, from that one from what he did. None. Sorry, can't 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 uh, can't overlook that one. All right, Ben Raham says Superfeed is not a long-term solution, but how much can it really take to push new growth? Soil test says low on um, on phosphorus. So sorry on on phosphorus. So thinking weekly light triple ten. Okay, so that's not that's not what I'm thinking. When you say like like super feeding, I thought you're talking about like going double, triple the rate. Yeah, so that I I don't think is going to be a problem, Ben. It's more. You know, like putting down, you know, a, a straight urea product at like three times the rate, like that kind of thing is what I'm, I thought you were referring to. That I would not be a fan of. A triple ten is already pr relatively low on all those nutrients, so if you wanted to go out with that, um, you know, every couple of weeks, that's, that's probably going to be just fine. You're saying weekly for a month or so? Again, probably going to be just fine. But um, but I would not go, I would not go crazy on the application rates. Um, is, is just what I'm getting to. So yeah, your, your comment has some context. It makes a little, bit, a little bit more sense now. 
All right, uh, Michael C is here. Is here in the in the in the chat. He says, "Hey Ron, love the channel. Can you please explain the process of cool season grass going dormant? Is there a chance that it will not bounce back after being brown for so long?" Thanks. Yeah. So so here's the thing. I don't have a ton of experience with with cool season um, grass, Michael, but I can tell you that um, the there. There's tons of YouTubers that do do cool season lawns. I have some friends that have cool season lawns. Uh, Devin ta has ta spoken to me about it, and uh, and it, it will bounce back as long as you're putting some water on it. In other, in other words, as long as it's not burned to a crisp, it's gonna recover. It's gonna bounce back once um, temperatures once temperatures get a little bit a little bit cooler. Because here's here's the thing to look at it from this standpoint too, Michael. Like bluegrass and ryegrass grow in parts of the country where there's not unnecessarily on someone's lawn. Like this grass like naturally grows all over the place. And when it's not growing on someone's lawn, there's not someone watering it, they're not fertilizing it, they're not putting, you know, they're not giving it all these, all, they're not babying it and pampering it like how we do our grass, right? And the grass still does just, so, does just fine. So you, so more than likely, the grass is gonna be okay as long as you're not gonna get, get like a crazy drought or, you know, insanely hot temperatures, maybe 100 degree temperatures for, you know, weeks on end that could potentially kill it it's gonna be fine. The only thing I would say is just put some water on it, make sure it stays hydrated. I mean, not, not excessive amounts of water, but just keep, keep some water on it to where it stays hydrated and just wait for uh, summer to come, for, 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 um, for the fall to come around. That's almost like Bermuda in the fall or the late fall, early winter when it goes completely brown and goes dormant, not growing anymore. You know, is it, does it make sense to go out and push, try and push a bunch of products, um, you know, push products to try and make it stay not going into dormant and trying to get to come back green faster? Not really. You're just going to, one, it's not going to work. And you just, you're just going to create more problems than you solve. Like, it's just going to do its thing. Bermuda is going to come out of dormancy and when springtime rolls around, your grass, which is a cool season grass, is in the peak of summer. So it's kind of like trying to pull back to survive. Once it's, once the temps, the, the high temperatures subside, the grass is going to recover and it's going to be just fine. It's gonna be okay. The big, the only thing I would say is put some water on it. Keep keep it hydrated to where it doesn't dry out completely. That's going to prevent you from. That's gonna lessen the chance of you having some of it dying off due to the summer heat. All right. Next up is Rusty's Creations. He says, Ron, I always have spurge show up this time of year. Is it worth splitting my pre-emergent apparates and applying quarterly as opposed to the standard twice a year spring fall apps with 100 degree temperatures? and drought restrictions, not really wanting to spray herbicides on a stressed lawn. So here's the thing, Rusty, one thing you didn't tell me is where in the lawn the spurge is showing up. I have some spurge that shows up too in my lawn, but the only place that it really pops in is along like the, um, the hardscape. So along the sidewalk, along pavers, along the driveway, the places where the pre-emergent stops working at soonest is where the spurge shows up. So if you're seeing it in those sections, um, you know, you could just, you could spot spray with Celsius. Celsius is absolutely going to be, it's devastating against spurge. It's going to kill it and it's not going to damage your grass. Like just Celsius just by itself is going to do a really good job against spurge. Um, as far as doing quarterly pre-emergent apps, I've never heard of anyone doing that. I don't know how well it, it's really going to work as far as, as far as get, getting rid of the spurge. Um, the big thing, again, if you're still in the, in the chat, I want to hear where it's coming in because if you did a good application, like a proper application in the springtime, you shouldn't have spurge running rampant throughout the majority of your lawn. The areas where it's gonna show up is gonna be along flower beds and along sidewalks and driveways. And that's, com that's a completely normal thing. You know what I mean? So, and the way I would handle that is just spray it. Just spot spray it with some Celsius and that'll get rid of it. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you wanna try the quarterly pre-emergent apps, you can, but I don't know, I really don't know how well that's, that's gonna work. How well it's going to work because also too, if the the area that you're getting it that's happening happens to be along the driveways, like pre-emergent isn't going to be that effective or along there because as soon as you start edging all the time, because that area always gets disturbed from edging, um, the spur the spur is going to come right back. You know what I mean? So, just something to keep in mind. All right, David Polanco is in the live stream. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron. Hope you and everyone in the chat are doing well. We received some rain in South Texas over the last couple of days. Amazing after drought." Yeah, man, it's, it's always going to happen. You guys, all the Texas, the Texas contingent in the live stream was always saying, dude, here's the thing. In Texas, sometimes you guys can be a little bit harsh, man. I mean, I, when I was in there doing my, my little story saying, oh, man, I can't believe this. There's way too much rain on. Look at all the flooding from all the water. Some of you guys got a little bit irritated, a little testy. You're like saying, oh, man, you can keep it with all your rain. We need rain. You know, so, I mean, I'm just saying, I know tech, you guys do everything big in Texas, but don't, don't be so quick to come at me. 
you know, there's a lot of come at me bros whenever, you know, I was talking about the little bit of rainfall we were getting here in Georgia. Let me enjoy it because you guys are going to get yours. As David is showing, you guys are getting a little bit of rainfall here and there, right? Let's see. see? He's getting rain just like I said you would, which is good. All right. So he Chen is next. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for the knowledge. Now, can I bribe you for a couple of bags of Humic Max? I know you have a secret stash, LOL. <laughs> uh, no, not, I mean, here's the thing, Cubic Max should come back on the chat, on the, on the store at some point. Probably not gonna be this year. The plan is if fertilizer prices become more reasonable to bring it back next year, because it's a great product. It's an awesome product. I still got some here. You wanna, you wanna see some just for old time's sake? You wanna see some? I've, uh, I've got a little bit here that you can, you can check out. So you can see some of that, that, that Humic Max, good, good. I still got some right here, so that I, I keep around. So, just for uh, for 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 old times. But there's other options. You know, flagship's a decent option for a synthetic fert. You know, there should be some other options that are going to be coming out on the store here soon, um, from an organic fertilizer perspective that you guys can take advantage of too. Stay tuned for that. Uh, but uh, but yeah, but uh, but it's not going to be like Humic Max. Humic Max, for the biggest difference is gonna be the Prill size. You know, I mean, Humic Max at 150 SGN, like this is, um, I can show you here. Like, like this is not, having a Prill, like this is a pen tip here, so you can see the tip of a pen. That is not easy to do in a fertilizer. It's very, very small. Um, it's very small to do that in a in a fertilizer. So that, both the organic fert um, and also the flagship fertilizers, they're gonna be, the Prill size is gonna be a bit bigger. You know what I mean? But still good ferts. Okay, next up is Karam, um, Karam Khan. Um, he says, um, in one of your videos where you show leveling your lawn a slope with something of a mix of compost and biochar, don't you think that amount of biochar is too much? No, not really. You can't, you really can't, um, you can't really go too heavy with biochar, Karam. The big thing with the biochar that I use is um, it's charged, it's already inoculated. Like if you take just raw biochar and apply that to a lawn, it's going to be, it actually can create problems. It's going to, it's going to, to draw or take nutrients away from the grass initially until it becomes saturated and then it'll become, it'll be start behaving like how essential G and carbon pro G do, right? But, um, but no, for, for most people, most people are not gonna be able to apply enough biochar to, um, to where it's too much. I think I read somewhere that, that, that they say something around 120 pounds of biochar um, per thousand square feet is like the call it good point. And if you think about what that works out to, you figure, take, take a product like um, like Carbon Pro G, right? Let's say it's almost 50% biochar. You have any idea? So that's, that's like that's 120 pounds per thousand square feet. That's a ton of bags. That's like, um, that's, you have to double it. So let me see, it's, uh, it's a 40 pound bag, six, it's like 12 bags, <laughs> it's like 12 bags per thousand square feet. It's a lot, it's a lot of product. Most people are not gonna do that, right? So, so the answer to your question, no, it's not gonna hurt anything. There's only there's really only benefits to it. No problem, no problem at all with that. All right, Jason Greenlee is back with a question. He says, "Do you prefer backpack sprayers over backpack foggers?" That depends. They're different application um, um, use cases, Jason. So if you are spraying like herbic herbicides, um, pesticides, fungicides, growth regulator, a backpack sprayer is a better fit for that because, as far as being able to to use a spray tip. A proper spray tip like the T-Jet tip here, you see, to coat the plant leaf properly, this is gonna do a better job. A fogger, like I don't know how you would be how you'd ensure that you're getting a good, a proper application rate with a fogger trying to apply fertilizer and plant growth regulator and, and those things that way. They're, 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 the, the products aren't even labeled for application through a fogger. Uh, the issues with drift, as far as like the stuff, the, the product not staying like like in the place where you want it to go. If you use a fogger, it's gonna blow all over the place. So you definitely don't wanna apply any of the sides that way. Like you don't wanna apply, at least if it's if they're toxic anyway, you don't wanna apply like a, like a herbicide that way, right? You might spray it and get on your neighbor's um, grass or plants and do some damage. So um, they, there's different use cases, like the, um, the Miramichi Green, the, the non-toxic, like this product here. This product here, they're non, they're non toxic uh, pest control pesticide. Like this, you can you can apply using a fogger. It's it's designed to be used that way and works very very well 
when applied using a fogger. Like you get better application, uh, you get a more more app, more coverage as far as um, application goes. You get better coverage if you want to put if you want to put this um, on like plants, like ornamentals, lawn furniture, your actual lawn, um, patios, this kind of thing, spraying the side of your house. Like this is going to be like using a fogger with this product is the ideal way of doing it, which is why they recommend doing that. And and on the label, there's actual rates for using a fogger. So. In general, I'd say foggers are great, but the but the, the the use case for them in the context of lawn care is somewhat limited. Like outside of the Miramichi Green Pest Control product, I don't think there's any other products that I regularly use that um, that really I can I can apply using a fogger. So there is that. It's not an either or; they're just a different. All right, Barack Obama is back in here. He says, one shot, one kill. Were you the Marine Corps, um, Ron, Semper Fi? No, I was not a Marine. I did not serve in the armed, in the armed forces. Um, but no, but I mean, you know, but, but I do, I do do some long range shooting. I, have, I actually have some, some, some fairly nice um, um, long range rifles and ammo is expensive. So it's better to make sure you have your dope done properly, you're reading the win, and so that you you spend, you send as few rounds down range to hit the target that it takes, right? So, I don't know, and when I was doing a lot of competitive shooting, I mean, I hang out with a lot of people, uh, I'm not doing as much these days, but when I was doing a lot of competitive shooting, um, you know, I hang out with a lot of people that were like ex-military and are cops and this kind of stuff, so there you go, but no, I, I did not serve in the Marine Corps. All right, uh, Tavares Allen says, what real mower do you suggest for perennial ryegrass? California trimmer or true cut? Height of cut will be one inch. FYI, my perennial ryegrass is still dark green here in Kansas City. Nice, Tavares. Whatever you're doing, keep keep going, man. That's pretty awesome. So really between the California trimmer and the true cut, I am partial towards the true cut, but it doesn't matter. Here's how you answer that. Here's how you decide on that, all right? In Kansas City, what you need to do is look up how many true cut dealers there are or how many California trimmers there are, or places that will service True Cut or California trimmer. Because that is literally the most important thing in this decision. Because you, you don't want to go out and buy a mower and then you gotta send you gotta send it out or ship the entire mower off somewhere. You, there's, in other words, there's no one to work on it um, in your area. For the most part, getting parts is not too bad. But when it comes to like grinding the reels and just someone that's just familiar with the maintenance and the upkeep of that type of mower, of the trimmer or the true cut, you want to find someone or, or, or see someone that, that um, or have a shop nearby that can do that kind of work. Now, let's say that you got both of those. You got a shop that can do trimmer work and they can do true, true cut work. Of the two, and this just means my preference, I'm not saying it's right, my preference, having used both of them, I prefer the true cut. I like the propulsion system of the true cut better. Um, I just, I like, I just like, I prefer the true cut to the trimmer. There are people that hate the true cut. They hate the, the, the little thumb screw or the thumb um, propulsion thing. They say it hurts your thumbs to, to do it, to, to mow them. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. So what I would say is if you can find a place like a, a real rollers type place in Kansas City that has a true cut and has a trimmer and they'll let you try it out, do that and see which one you like more and you know, which one does better for you. But if it were me, for me, I would do uh, the true cut. Now, as far as which one's gonna work better, Either one of them is going to produce great results on ryegrass. Either one is going to do a great job as long as it's set up properly, sharpened properly. Either one of them will do an excellent job cutting your ryegrass. I would just make the decision based on what you can get fixed because eventually it's going to need service, and you know you'll hate you will hate the that mower if you can't um, you can't you can't get it taken care of. You know what I mean? Like real mowers need to be taken care of. They need to be kept sharp and they need to be taken care of. So hope that helps so far. If you need, have any other questions, let me know. Thincut says, do you have any video footage of the kill? I'm going to look. I'll look on the video camera because I'm sure, I mean, that angle, we probably, I got some of it, probably got some of it, but um, I will, um, I'll look and see. I'll look and see. If I do, I'll show you guys next week in the live stream if you want to see that. I'll look in, uh, and uh, and see what, see what we can do. All right, Rob H just dropped a, chat, a super chat in the live stream. Super chat received. No question, but just uh, support. Thank you so much, Rob. I really appreciate that. Sorry for taking so long to get to it. I'm trying to burn through these questions a little bit faster so I don't have us out here till super late. It looks like it's going to happen again. Okay, KB0 from 315 from Sandy Springs says, hey, from Sandy Springs, not too far from me. It says, I don't even have a yard yet. Just living vicariously after stumbling down a YouTube <laughs> wormhole last week. That's how it is sometimes, man. That's how it is, you know? But it's uh, But here's the thing. You're not wasting your time because everything you're learning, when you do get your lawn, which you're going to get one day, you're gonna be ahead of the game. You're gonna be like, you know what? I know what I gotta do. 
I gotta get a soil test. I gotta figure out what kind of weeds I got. I'm gonna get my herbicides, knock those out. I gotta get my mower and mow the lawn and fertilize a quarter. You know, you're gonna have it all, you're gonna have it all done. All is gonna be done at that point. All that's gonna be left to do for you is just to do the work. You know, you're gonna be good to go. All right, uh, he says, I just wanna thank and commend you for how much you engage with your viewers. Well, yeah, I mean, guys, here's the thing. If you guys aren't here, I'm not here, right? So it's, I mean, the, even though it's, you know, I'm the, the host of the live stream, really the content comes from you guys. Well, you guys and the mole, you know, the little antics and things that happen in my lawn week to week. But you guys don't really sign on here for that. You don't hear, you don't come here to hear about what's going on with my lawn. You come here to get your questions answered or to, or to hang out and just chat and have a great time, right? Watch me ban trolls. That's what you come here for. All right, uh, next to use is, is, uh, is Ryan Needham. He says, what did you use to get that mole? I have one that started tearing up my yard this week. So Ryan, in my case, I, we got lucky because I saw him, I, I, he was actively out there doing what he was doing while, um, you know, during, during, so I knew where he was. It wasn't like I, I woke up in the morning and this, all the trenching was there and you know he'd done all the all the all the work like the day before like literally in the morning i checked my security camera and i could literally watch over the course of an hour and a half of him actually digging up the lawn in the morning like in the course of a couple of hours so i called up alex he came over he was thrilled with the with the opportunity to um to whack a mole and uh, literally <laughs> and so we blocked off one side of the tunnel that he was digging started flooding it with water and eventually, because most can't, they don't, they need air, they can't breathe water, he eventually surfaced and then he got, he met the stick. He met the stick and uh, that took care of him. That is not a weight that's really gonna work in for in a lot of cases. I mean, I, trying to be completely honest, I got a little bit lucky uh, that it actually happened the way it did so we were able to get rid of him. What you're gonna wanna do instead, Ryan, a better way, um, especially if they're, they're all throughout the place and you don't know where they are, is to use something like this, like Tomcat, this mole killer. What this is, is it's a poison that simulates their food. So you will you'll push this down, you'll, you'll push this um, down in, the, in their tunnel, like in different, different intervals in their tunnel, tunnel. They'll find it, they'll eat it, Within 12 hours, it'll kill them. So this is uh, this is an option for getting rid of moles. That's probably a bit more reliable than flooding, trying to flood them out. Because in most cases, if they've been there for any period of time, they got an extensive system. They will just they'll just they'll just they'll go somewhere where the water is not filling in. They'll just they'll just wait it out. You know what I mean? This guy's mistake was he did it. You know, in broad daylight, it was really fresh, and I got him when it was still you know when he was still trying to you know build his little kingdom, um, as it were. If you decide you want to use the Tomcat. You should be able to get that. You might be able to find it locally, but if you want to uh, support the channel and and you got like Amazon, you can pick it up here on uh, on Amazon. So uh, so yeah, but in my case, we were able to get rid of him using the stick. He caught the stick. All right, let's see here. Um, Jose is a says Lowe's and DFW is using is I'm um, talking about um, uh, fertilizer. Thanks for that. Um, Jose says, hey, Ron, uh, is um, certainty the best for sticker burr weeds? No, that one, I mean, so so for that, Celsius Celsius works well. Um, Robert Rainey, who I'm not sure if he's still in the chat, but he, he was the one that gave the super chat this evening. He actually is a show sponsor. You can see his name right there. Uh, he had an issue with burr weeds in his lawn, believe it or not, over the winter, because remember this, how this past winter was unseasonably warm? He had a problem with stickers and he used the Celsius certainty combination. Really, I believe it's more of the Celsius portion, uh, the Celsius portion of it that was that targets the burr weeds and it does a great job. It did a great job on his lawn. It cleaned it, cleaned it up. So yes, that would be a, um, a good option. Now, as far as best, there are multiple herbicides you can use for burr weeds. It's not the only one. But again, the reason why I'm a huge fan of, of Celsius is that you can, as far as the range, the temperature range that you can use it over is broader than a lot of other herbicides. Like people will say, well, this herbicide, it's more expensive, right? They say, well, the biggest thing you hear is it's a much more expensive herbicide than like, I don't know, Dismiss or Speed Zone, right? And it is. But the, the thing with that, that Celsius has that those do not have, one, it kills more stuff. And then you can spray it this time of year when it's hot outside and it's not gonna damage your grass. You cannot do that with Dismiss or Speed Zone unless you're fine with discoloration. Uh, so yeah, but to answer your question, uh, Celsius should do uh, the trick. Um, let's see here. Um, Rob H, a difference in focal length and aperture. Correct, that is correct. It, you are correct, Rob. It is different. 
it is a different focal length and it is a different aperture. You are right. That is that is correct. That is those those, those are the two things that changed between last week and this week. Someone's into in, someone's into someone's a photographer. You're a photographer. You're not a um, you're not you know you're not a video guy. Cause you know why? Because if you're a video guy, you would say focal length. You would still say that, but you would not say aperture. You'd say iris. So, but yes, you're right. It is it is the the aperture. The 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 f stop is different this week compared to last week, and it is a different lens. It is a different focal length, different lens. All right. Let's see. Uh, you said there's a brighter side on your right hand side. It's always been that way. The light, yeah. The, this this side of my face is always darker than this side because there's no there's no light over over here. Well, there's no light over here. There's no light. Hang on. There's no light on this side of my face for the wall. You can see the walls here. There's not really any light here other than like the lights that are in the shelf. But there is a light right here. So this is why this side of my face is always this side is always lighter than this side. Plus, it looks it looks cool. It looks cool. It says you switch your cameras around. Your background is more blurred on the headshot. Yeah, because of because of different um, different iris. Yep, there you go. Yep, and autumn is there more focus of you in the frame. You're right. You guys, you guys are are, are finding a lot of it. Yeah, the depth of field changed. Yep. So it's a different. It's a different lens, is what it is. To answer the question. So, but the difference, the thing that changed from that is the focal length. Because the focal length is different, and then the iris or or the aperture. The it's, it's a faster lens. It's a faster lens. So it's um, you get a shallower depth of field with it, which makes the background get more 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 bokeh y more creamy, right? Okay. Um, and you are right. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, sure. You guys are answering the question. You guys, you guys all, you guys are all, uh, are all getting it. Yep. It is a, uh, wide and one is, um, one is, it's a different lens is a big, is the answer to the question. Okay. Let's see. Um, Ben Raham says, is there a thing as too many mowers? I only have four. Here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. Ben. Okay. You says there's a thing as too many mowers. I was going to say no, but then you said, I only have four. We need to reword this. Instead of saying, I only have four, say, I have four, and my wife that I love does not understand I need the Alex C30. Can't we just get along? So don't say only, because you can't really say only and four lawnmowers in the same sense, because that's you, you're not going to get much sympathy for that. But if you just say, yeah, hey, I've got four, and these four all do very specific things that I need them all for. You know, they all, they all, do, they all do stuff. I can't get rid of them. They all do very special stuff. And then this other mower is going to do this thing that these other, that the four that I, while I like them, it doesn't do that. That's why I need this one. It's still going to be a tough sell, but it's going to be better than if you, but you, you can't use only. You can't say, hey, I only have four. Just kind of, you know, you're not, you, you, the, the audience is, the, the crowd is not going to, they're not going to be okay with that one. I don't think she's going to be sympathetic on that one. I don't think so. All right, uh, next up is Robert Johnson. He says, are weeds almost guaranteed when top dressing? Not necessarily. Uh, the Super Sod mix has been very good about that. I have not had, uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a big problem with weeds in my lawn, a big weed outbreak with using their leveling mix. I've used others that I've, that I've introduced that have had weeds, uh, that have introduced like spurs. I had a like, big spurs problem mm, two years ago from a top dressing job. But, um, but yes, depending on the top dressing mix you use, uh, and it will, will, will depend on whether you get weeds or not. But it's not really not that big of a deal, Robert. I mean, you can always just spot spray after the fact to get rid of them. I would not let that hold you back. Because remember, weeds, especially if your, your lawn has been normally taken care of, it's normally weed-free. Weeds in a lawn that is normally weed-free, a few that, that pop in there that come from the top dressing, is is going to be temporary. You're going to be able to eliminate them fairly easy. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't hold on to that too much as a reason to not top dress your uh, your lawn. Bruce Cruz says, uh, Texas update, still no rain, going like 45 days. I, I have the only green yard in the neighborhood. Hashtag never give up. That's sweet, man. You're doing something right, Bruce Cruz. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Uh, Anthony Pacone says, I catch moles with mold traps. It's the only solution I've found that works. That's cool, Anthony. So you catch them with a trap, and then I guess you just relook re at them somewhere else. Uh, that I can see that how that could work. I can see how that could work. And then um, Zach Hall says, I had three moles in my yard. They love that fresh top dressing and nice soil. Yeah, because here's the thing. With all the rain we've had here lately, the, 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 the soil has gotten a lot softer. Like literally you can take like a screwdriver and you can insert it with not much effort and it'll go right in. So as far as um, making it easier for them to burrow through it, moles do like that. They like, um, you know, obviously a lawn with a food source in it, but also softer soil 
uh, like a, a soil that is that is very hydrated or like in other words, overwatering can be something that can not necessarily cause war, um, moles, but it's something that will that will can cause them to gravitate to your lawn compared to a lawn that is really dry and hard. You know what I mean? And given that we had tons of rain, that has made the conditions where they just love burning through the lawn because it's super easy to get through it. Just like it's super easy to catch that stick that he caught. Run tell that. All right, next up is uh, Lon Stroll. He says, you and Alex were like the dudes in office space being the computer with baseball bats. Yep, uh, we were. He, I mean, but he deserved it. You guys, you guys all saw it, right? I mean, am I right? Am I right? Like what he did was not, it was uncalled for. He, he could have picked like another lawn. He could have picked like a side area. He could have picked the soil. He, he, look, you know what? You don't believe me? What, look at, look, let I me mean, just one last time. I'm closing my eyes. I can't look. Look at that. He did it right through the middle of the front lawn. No, he got, he deserved it. He earned that. He earned it. All right, Autumn Henry's in the house. She says, hey, what's going on? Hey, Ot, what's going on? What's going on, sweetie? Thanks for coming out and hanging out in the live stream. Appreciate you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you're taking some time off when you're not, you know, out busy working and doing, you know, doing your thing. So always cool to see that you're hanging out. Appreciate you as always. Uh, next up is Michael Rumpf from Gwinnett. He says, Bermuda, a height of cut one inch. I cut twice a week. I want to get my height of cut down to half an inch. Ooh, saucy, spicy. He says, would I be safe to lower my California trimmer uh, one notch on my next one to four, next three to four cuts, or should I know lower one notch each week? Please advise. Okay, so I don't know how much one notch is going to lower the height of cut, but here's what I want to tell you, Michael. The one thing you got to realize, <laughs> Bermuda is not cutting twice a week is not going to work at half an inch like it works at where you at now you're at one inch one inch twice a week you can get away with it one inch at uh, or half an inch at twice a week you're not going to like the way it looks it's not going to look it's going to be you're going to be scalping it half the time at this time of year as hot as it is if you're going to be at half an inch or lower you can be mowing practically every day worst case if you get lucky every other day but literally um you know if you want to stay green between mowings you're taught you're, you're signing up for everyday mowing so you gotta think about that if that's something you really want to do. As far as lowering the heights of cut, I mean, it's, it's your call how you want to take it down. Um, you can an inch to half an inch. If you really decide that half inch is the way you want to go, I would probably, you know, I might be inclined to just do a, a light scalp, just 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 do it all in one all in one go. You are going to get the lawn is going to get discolored for a while when you do this. You know, ten days to two weeks for it to recover. But again, before you do this. Ask yourself if you really want to be out there mowing every other day. You know, every other day as a best case scenario. Uh, worst case scenario, every day. And, and at half an inch, Primo Max growth regulator is going to be an absolute must. You're gonna ha you must use this stuff if you want to have any chance of having the lawn look respectable um, once you get to those, those lower heights of cut. So just something to think about. Um, it's your call. You can step it down over time or you can do it all at once. If it were me, I would just do it all at once knowing that it's gonna be discolored for up to two weeks, and then I just have to get on that everyday mowing program because that's what it's gonna take um, once you go to half an inch. So something to think about. And I think you're new to the live stream, or at least the first time I've seen your name in the comments. So if so, thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, ben Raham says, uh, thanks for the good advice on the steroid reference. Had me in tears laughing. Long game it is, Momo mo and mo again. When patience means months and years, it's hard. Yeah, but here's the thing though, um, Ben. If it were easy, tell things. If it were easy, um, everyone would do it. And if it were easy, you wouldn't appreciate it. If, if, if doing, if we could buy a bottle, if, if, if I could sell a bottle like this and say, this is this is lawn care in a bottle. And you could literally spray this on your lawn. And you have an amazing lawn. So you could spray this on your lawn, have a magical product like this. And you could spray it on your lawn. And then overnight, your lawn would begin to look just like this. What would happen is everybody and their grandmother would have awesome lawn. They would buy awesome lawn in a bottle. They'd be spraying this on their lawn and you'd be off doing something else because the reason why you like doing it is because it's hard, right? Like, like the sense of accomplishment that goes into making a, a really good lawn is what is what the draw is. And because a lawn is never really perfect, you just keep, you just, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the chase. So don't, in other words, I, I, I said it in the video that I did, um, my last video for the channel, and it's really enjoy the process, enjoy the journey. Like the chase is where the fun is. It's not like, like getting the lawn to where it looks incredible. Yes, that's nice, but it's gonna be temporary. It's, there's gonna be some issues that's gonna arise. 
if not, if no issue arises, eventually it's going to go dormant because it's going to either be summertime or it's going to be wintertime if you have cool, a warm season grass. So it's always going to be changing. It's going to be a state of flux all the time. And you have to enjoy that process and not rush it. You can just enjoy it. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, Robert Mohara says, Ron, if it's not too late, will you explain what AMS, um, I think you were saying ammonia, I think it's, uh, uh, I can't, I can't say that word. I think it's, I think, you're, I think what you're talking to, referring to is ammoniacals. Um, I think it's a sulfur. I think so. Sulfate um, does when you add it to a PGR application. It also has surfactant. It's AMS Drexel. Robert, I am going to have to look. I'm going to have to defer an answer for you on that one, man. I've never um, mixed that product with like like Primo to know how it would interact. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, uh, I've never mixed them together to know how it would, how it would interact. The fact that it has surfactant in it would make me think would lead me to believe that you're much more likely to get some tip burn if you mix growth regulator with that product. So it wouldn't be my first choice for um, a fertilizer or a product to mix with a um, with uh, with Primo. You know what I mean? For Primo, I would use a, your standard run-of-the-mill liquid fert, preferably a quick release like 901C or Turfplex, and then go to town. Um, something like this, which seems like more, it's more of a specialty product. Again, the fact that it has surfactant in it is for me would be a no, for me would be a no-go. Would be, would be a no-go. I just wouldn't, I just, I just, I wouldn't want to risk it. Wouldn't want to risk it. If you decide to do that, if you want to decide you want to do that, um, just make sure you, I mean, I would start small. Pick, pick an area of your lawn that's kind of, that's kind of inconspicuous, like an area that you don't really care if it gets messed up for two to three weeks and try it there. And if it works well, then you can, um, you know, you can do it for, for the entire lawn. All right, he says, uh, uh, if not, I'll catch up with you next Friday. Blue side up, good night. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, uh, Robert. Thanks for that. I guess it's a pilot, a pilot uh, uh, saying. Makes sense. It's a good, it's a good, actually, it's a pilot, pilot and passenger saying, right? Because I'm a passenger. I want the blue side to stay up. So I get it. All right, next up is Randy Ver, Ver, Velarde. He says, hey, Ron, which mower would you recommend, the Allet or the Toro Greens mower? Uh, both. They're both awesome. They're both awesome mowers. It's 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 difficult to say one or the other. They both cut great. If I could only have one, the outlet. Well, the outlet. But the thing is, the outlet is more of a pain to use on my slope because of how heavy it is. So if if I if I only had the back lawn, the outlet all day long. Um, if I could only have one, even if I still had the slope. Probably still the outlet because I, I here's the thing I you would not believe you guys can you see for yourself you wouldn't believe the difference being able to verticut and turf rake the lawn really makes in both the way the lawn feels when you walk on it and the appearance of the lawn like the the color the stripes like all of it's just better so the the, the Green Smasher is an awesome piece of equipment it cuts great you know what I mean and they I'm not, I'm not throwing shit in the Green Smasher it's an awesome mower but if I could only have one probably the outlet, probably the outlet because I'm getting multiple pieces of equipment in one. You know what I mean? I'm not just getting just a mower. I'm getting a mower and a verticutter and uh, uh, an aerator and a turf rake. I'm getting a bunch of different things all in one machine. So for that reason, I have to kind of give the nod to the to the uh, outlet. All right. Soldier says, my Bermuda is competing with my neighbor's centipede grass. Um, any way to spray to prevent um, to prevent this and not hurt the Bermuda, or is it a lost cause? So you have Bermuda, your Bermuda is going into their centipede. Uh, yeah, no, there's not. There's, I can't think of not really because uh, I can't think of anything that's really going to, that's going to damage the Bermuda but not kill the centipede. You know what I mean? It's because Bermuda is a lot like the other way around. It's easier. Like if you have centipede coming into your Bermuda and you want to keep the Bermuda, you can use Quinclorac to to knock the centipede back. That's pretty easy. But the other way around. Not so much. Kind of like if you have St. Augustine getting into Bermuda, that's easy to fix. If you have Bermuda going into St. Augustine, not so much. So uh, not really. I mean, if you could put a physical barrier between your lawn and his lawn, maybe, or his, you know, their lawn, maybe that could do it. Um, but nothing, if there is nothing that comes to the top of mind, um, soldier, that, that's, uh, that's going to be an easy fix, unfortunately. Timothy Smith says, hey, Ron, and everyone, no questions tonight, but I would love to send pics to get your advice after scarifying and verticutting my lawn. Can I send some pics and other advice to get your info? Sure, yep. Send them to, I mean, I won't, I'll be able to answer it after the live stream or at some point this weekend. Send them to ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send them there, I'll take a look and I will get you an answer. 
Yep, no problem at all. No problem at all with that. Timothy, I'll help you out. All right, um, you're very, very welcome, uh, Brandon, and you're very welcome, um, Miles. Um, yeah, no problem, man. You know, it's as far as the, the repair, it'll grow. I mean, it's grass. It'll grow back. It's just, you know, it's just irritating, especially since he did it right in front of me in broad daylight. <laughs> that That's the part that made me mad. And uh, Anthony Peep says, do you use soil temperature to determine the best time to apply pre-emergent? At what soil temperature do you recommend for the fall? So in the spring, um, you want to apply pre-emergent prior to soil temperatures getting to 55 degrees because that's when crabgrass begins to germinate. So prior to, so meaning from, from me, you know, mid to late February um, is a time to get pre-emergent down. When it comes to pre-emergent, a little bit early is better than late because if you wait till too late, the weeds have already started to grow and it's not going to be effective. As far as in the fall, whenever soil temps cross uh, 70 degrees going south, like going, getting cooler, so like now soil temps are way above 70 degrees, but if you go going in the other direction, that's when you can start looking into putting down your fall pre-emergent. So for, for around here in Georgia, that equates to the September timeframe. Mid to late September is when you'll see all the trucks rolling around here spraying pre-emergent on, on lawns. So I uh, hope that helps Anthony. If you have any other questions, uh, let me know. Jonathan Klassen says, is it, I'm a little late, but is it too late to level? It is not. I plan to do it next week as a matter of fact. So. It is not too late, Johnny. The only thing you're gonna have to deal with is all the heat uh, of being out there doing the, the work, but no, not too late at all. You absolutely can level now if you so desire. If you so desire. Rush's Creation says, thanks, Ron. Not so, um, not so much spurs in the front, but more in the backyard, which I have a large dog, probably helped break that pre-emergent barrier. Yep, was wondering if quarterly rate was enough to be effective. Not, I mean, here's the thing. If you have something that's constantly disturbing the barrier, Weeds are going to find the way, are going to find a way to grow. You know what I mean? So I, you can, here's what I would say, test it. I don't know that it's going to be very effective, but give it a shot. It's worth, it's worth trying. What's, I mean, the worst is going to happen is it's not going to work and then you're no worse off than you are right now. Right? So the one thing I'll say is if you're going to try it, make sure that you're not, um, you're not exceeding the annual maximum for whatever pre-emergence you're trying to use. Cause there is like prodiamine has a rate. It's like point. Uh, 0.83 per year. Dithiopyr, same thing. I don't, but I don't know. I mean, it has, it has a rate, but it's not that. I don't know, I don't know what dithiopyr is off the top of my head. But whichever pre-emergent you decide to use, on the label, there will be an annual late. They say over, they'll say over 12 months, do not put more of any more of this this amount of active ingredient in a in a given year. So if, with you doing your quarterly apps, make sure that you're not gonna you're gonna, not gonna get over that by doing you know doing your experiment. That's the only advice I'd give you outside of. Um, Giving it a shot and letting us report and report back with, with how it does. Um, uh, Randy Viraldi says, what are the cutting ranges on the Alice and Toro reel mowers? I want to mow between half an inch and three quarters of an inch. Either one will work for that. For the Alice, oh, I should know this, but it's um, it's something they do it in mill. I don't know. It's 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 really it's it's put this way, it's shorter than you will mow and it is taller than you will mow. So either one, if your goal is to do half an inch or three quarters of an inch. Either greens, any Toro reel mower will do that. Oh, well, I should say this. Well, any, like the 1600s will do that. 1600s or the, or the um, like the, the fixed head cutting unit mowers will do that, no problem. And the Alex will also do that, no problem. So that's, that's gonna bug me what the cutting height is on it. But, but the point is that both of those, both either mower will do that range. That's in the sweet spot for both of those. Let's see, so for the C range, for the, for the, for the Pro mower, let's see, for the C27, does they have their cutting range on here? It probably, it should, it should. Let's see here. Um, yeah, so uh, um, eight millimeters up to 55 millimeters. So really, really short to taller than you're gonna mill. So, so there you go, because um, 20, 19 millimeters thereabouts, almost 20 millimeters is about three quarters of an inch. So figure that's what almost inch and a half. So again, taller than, than taller than you're what you're after. So you're you're good to go with either one of them, Randy. Either one, either one will work well for you. Uh, ben says thanks as usual for laying on the knowledge and making the good stuff available. We appreciate the help. Much love to you in the live stream community. Thank you so much, Ben. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight, sir. Thanks again. David Polanco is back. He says, Ron, what is recommended? Um, recommendation on a fogger for a front yard, 800 square feet or to 600 square foot backyard, not our long-term home. So recommendation that is built for growth. Thank you. 
Uh, the, um, I have one, here you go, here I tell you, I have one here in the description of the, um, of the, of the pest control, David. It's one from, who makes it? I forget the name of the company. They, they do sprayers too. Oh, it's going to bug me. But right here for this fogger, uh, Petra, Petra tools. So this one is powered. They have a battery powered one now. This is the one that, um, this is the one that I've used, that I'm using, and it works works really well. I think this is this one's power, but they also I think this, this might be battery powered now. They maybe only have the battery powered because mine has you have to plug it in. The new ones I think are all battery powered. So uh, so yeah, this guy here. What I'll do is I'll get you a link to it. But this is a this is going to be a good one. I use it on. Um, I'll just give you a link to it where you can you can go pick that one up if you, if that's what you want to go with. But I use that one. It works it works great. Does a great job. You got to make sure that the um, that the cap is on nice and tight. So make sure when you put the cap on that it's on really good and tight. Uh, but outside of that, you are good to go. Guys, I know we're winding down, but if you guys would not mind, I know it's a lot to ask this late at night, but if you guys wouldn't mind also throwing me a like while you're, while you're I'm sitting here giving David this, um, this uh, his, his hookup on a fogger, I'd really appreciate it. Really, 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 really would appreciate the, um, the, the love and support. It's a free way for you guys to support the channel and helps the algorithm. All right, Peg... Peg Junk is here. He says, Ron, awesome content per as, as usual. One question. I know top dressing level, slash leveling Bermuda should be done in the growing season, but I started late. Could I level when dormant? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, here's the thing. You still got time to do it now. Like, now it's not too late. You could literally all the way up until the first week of August, you could top dress if you wanted to, um, Peg Junk. You absolutely can. So from April all the way through to through early August, you, top dressing is still on the table for you. I wouldn't do it during the winter because, I mean, just the lawns. One, it's, it's the the lawn. The grass isn't growing. It's going to um, so it's not going to grow through it. If you get any kind of a heavy rain, it's going to make a big mess and move the stuff around. I just there's tons of reasons to do. I just would not do not to answer your question. No, don't top dress the lawn when it is dormant. If you want, here's the thing. If you told me you wanted to do it early, like early, early spring, like say March, like I'd be less opposed to that because the grass is going to start greening up within like a few weeks, right? But if you told me, hey, I want to top dress my lawn in December, that's probably, I wouldn't do that. I would, I would do it during when it's active. The best time is when it's actively growing or about to start actively growing. But the, uh, but the thing is, you still got plenty of time now. We're still got plenty of time in this growing season for you to be able to, uh, to do it. To do it, uh, Doctor J says, hey, what's, "What's good, Ron? Where can I bag bags of rain in Texas?" Uh, yeah, I can tell you, if I, I'd be a rich man if I could figure out how to, how to sell you some. I don't know. It is going to come eventually. You guys are going to get your rain, and then then you'll be mad because it's going to be too much. You're going to be complaining about all the flooding and whatnot, right? Uh, Shauna W says, "If I do Celsius uncertainty, do I need a surfactant?" Uh, yes, I would recommend using a surfactant with it. Um, also, is that mix safe for high temps on Tipway 419? Yes, it is. So if you look at the video, so the, if you go back and look at the history of when that video was made, I purposely waited until it was around this time of year. It was like actually a little later in July, but I wanted to test it. So I waited till this time of year when it's the hottest to mix Celsius and certainty, and I use surfactant with it. So if anything's going to cause discoloration, Using a bit of surfactant with it would do that, and I I didn't have any problems in my lawn. So I mean, you know, if you if you're super heavy-handed, could you get some mild discoloration, Shauna? Yes, but it's not it's not anything in comparison to what you would get if you used like something like Dismiss or Speed Zone on your lawn this time of year. If you do if you use those on your lawn, it's going to look like almost like fertilizer burn. So so to answer your question, yes, if you want the best results, use a surfactant with it. You should not get discoloration. If, if there's any, it's going to be very, very mild. And if you're going to do that, there's a, there's a kit that we have on the store that I can show you here that has all of it, everything you need. So you go to the, to the shop and then Weed Killer, and then literally you can buy them all individually, or you can get a kit that has everything, including some marker dye if you need that as well. So, yep, you can absolutely do it this time of year. I purposely waited this time last year to do this just so I could do the testing before I made that video to show you guys that, hey, it works and didn't destroy my lawn. All right, Gary Kelly Jr. says, hey, Ron, have you ever used Lesko's cross check for insects? I have not. I have not. Cannot speak to that product. Sorry. 
Uh, ben Raham says, more bush hog bagging, rider bulk mark, true cut reel for general health, need need the C30 for the tans floor. Y'all understand this makes sense. Okay, <laughs> we're getting late in the show. Uh, let's see, Daniel B says, I have zero issues with this. That mole was a menace and had to go. I agree, he did have to go. I mean, he earned it, right? Digging up the line in broad daylight. He earned it, he earned it. Uh, Jay Johnson, when will the Lebanon be back in stock? Thanks, probably not this growing season. The plan is to have it back in stock early next season. That is the plan, Jay Johnson. That is what I'm working towards. That is the plan for next season, um, early next season to have it in stock. So you guys are good to go when the season starts. That is that is the plan. I'm waiting to see um, if the prices on the product come down though. That's the thing that's that's holding holding back progress, unfortunately. Jerry Sobel says, how often are you using your Scarifier and Verticutter? Weekly, I have been doing that uh, with my Swordman and it absolutely makes a difference. A lot less uh, slipping and sliding. Yeah, so I'm um, Scarifying or, or Turf Raking, I'm doing that weekly uh, and then Verticutting, um, it's been verticut three times at this point. So really I'm gonna be probably more on a monthly cadence with the, with, with the, with the verticutting, but scarifying weekly. Now that I've got most of the debris cleaned out, um, weekly. But really you can do it whenever you have time for it because if you're doing it properly, it's really not damaging to the lawn. Like if you're not getting, because the way I have it set up, it's literally like combing the grass. It's not like ripping the stones up and making a big mess. It's literally combing the grass, standing it up. And when you mow it, you get a really nice cut. So as, as long as your, your turf rake is set up properly, you can do it literally if you wanted to before every time you mow the lawn. You could if you if you had the time to do it. So, but for me, at least weekly and then verticutting monthly. All right, uh, Donnell Burrell is in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? I've been giving up on finding someone in my town that sharpens reel mowers. It seems to be a lost cause in central Alabama. Gonna have to ship my reel to Georgia to get it sharpened. That stings, I'm sorry to hear that. Donnell, uh, sounds like a business opportunity. Right, could be a business opportunity for you, or but there there has to be someone. I mean, there has to be someone, uh, if not Central Alabama, someone that's closer than Georgia that can sharpen it. I would think. You know, if you go to like Birmingham, or I mean, there's got to be a place in Birmingham that'll sharpen a real mower. I would I would think. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but I would I would think that that would be the case. All right, Mark Harvey says 10:30, and you're still going. Amazing. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know, right? What is recommendation recommended application rate for Turfplex? First application going down tomorrow. Do you think I could add some iron for that extra green pop? Uh, the, I would say six ounces per thousand. That's what I, I how I apply it, um, Mike. Six ounces per thousand. That's the lowest rate. You're gonna get a good result with that. Um, as far as adding iron, it already has some iron in it. So if you wanted to add some, you can. But I would go low on the rates. If the iron product you're using. Um, take, for example, um, uh, Nutrizolve. Let's say you had Nutrizolve, right? Nutrizolve calls for six ounces per thousand as well, right? But if I'm mixing that with Turplex, I would back the rate down. I would go at like three ounces per thousand of Nutrizolve when I'm mixing it with Turfplex because I'm already getting iron from, from Turplex. There's no reason to double up and go, suit, go crazy heavy, right? So if you are gonna use an iron product, you can just back the rate down a little bit. And for Turplex, again, it's six ounces per thousand is what I would recommend. Six ounces per thousand. Uh, no Name says, hey, Ron, I know I missed most of tonight. I'll have to watch the replay in the morning, but I hope everyone's having a great season. All my repair spots have filled in now. You definitely want to watch the replay tomorrow morning. The first hour is really good. You get to see me get all mad and try and be historic, hysterical relaying my story about the mole that was digging up my lawn. So if you like a really good story, the first hour is at least worth watching. I think so, anyway. Uh, Dice Man. Um, I've heard hydrotain is useless in low humidity conditions. True. I've not heard that. Um, I've not heard that, um, Dice Man. I think that as long as you apply the product and water it in, it's gonna, it's gonna work. Like there's not there's been parts of the country that 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 it doesn't. No. So in other words, no, it's it's I've not heard that. I'm not sure who's who's saying that, but um, I've not heard that from the folks at the college all. And considering that the product has been sold all over the country, I've not heard people. Um, that are in low humidity areas like you know Arizona or drier areas that um, that have said, hey, I used this and it didn't work. And as a matter of fact, those people say my lawn is the only one that's green, and this is what I'm doing. So I so I mean I've not I've not heard that. This is the first I've ever heard anything about it not working in um, low humidity conditions. As, as, as long as it's applied properly and it's watered in properly, it should work just fine. Hope that helps. All right, Thin Cut, as always, a great live stream, great mole story. It actually hurt me to see the pic. Dude, listen, it still hurts. When I, every time I show that, it, it, uh, it, it's like, a, it's, 
it's like a, it's a, I can't help it. It's like a, um, it's like a, uh, a reaction. It's just, a, it's a, I can't not feel like just almost like, it's not like pain. It makes me mad a little bit too, but it's, it's getting better. It's getting better. All right. Uh, Mike Harvey says, um, regarding PGR, what is a growing degree degree calculations? And do we really need to worry about that? Growing degree days are a, 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 a more precise way of applying plant growth regulator. You do not need to worry about it. If you want to, if you want to be like super technical or you want to like just get um, a, pretty much a lot of the benefits of, of growing degree days with a lot less headache and a lot less like fuss, just take your Primo Max application and cut it in half. So apply it every two weeks. So instead of applying it once per month, where you're, when you apply it once per month, you know, Primo will, will regulate a lawn between three to four weeks, depending on conditions. It might only last for three weeks, in which case the lawn will come out of regulation. We don't want that. So what you can do instead is take the product, cut the rate in half, and apply it every two weeks. The lawn will not come out of regulation then, and you don't really have to worry about uh, some of the other issues that you, that uh, some of the problems you can have with Primo as far as like the slight discoloration, slight tip burn that you, that you can get. So can you do, I mean, you can use growing degree days if you want. It's just for me, I don't, I don't, it's not, the juice isn't worth the squeeze in my opinion. Just apply it every couple of weeks and be good with it. And be happy. It will work well. Jay Johnson says, what's a good substitute to the Lebanon? Sure. So a good substitute is uh, the, the, um, the flagship. So if you go to the store, to the golf course lawn store, go to shop, and I'm sitting there clicking on that to shop and then go to lawn fertilizer. Uh, flagship, this one here, this yard mastery fert is a good option for a couple of reasons. One, it's a relatively quick release uh, fertilizer. It's got some micronutrient in there as well, which is kind of a bonus, right? Um, Humic Max does not have that. Um, but the nice thing about it is that if that as far as getting the same um, amount of nitrogen into the into the lawn, it's an easy calculation. So with Humic Max, you are doing three pounds per thousand um, once a month to get um, right just under half a pound of nitrogen in the lawn. With the flagship, the bag rate is three pounds per thousand, but because it's a 2406, we're gonna take, take a third of that away and we're gonna apply it at two pounds per thousand. So two pounds per thousand, over two pounds over a thousand square feet is going to get you 0.48 pounds of nitrogen in your in your lawn, um, which is the same that you're getting from Humic Max. So so if you're looking for something to say, hey, Humic Max is no longer available, I want to substitute something in, go with Flagship because literally you can just simply go from a three pound per thousand rate to a two pound per thousand rate, and you're gonna be putting the same amount of nitrogen in the lawn that you were with um, with Humic Max. The again, then that's that's what I would I've been telling people to use as a as a substitute. Um, while we wait for Humic Max to become available again. So, hope that helps, Jay Johnson. Uh, Michael Montenegro says, any turf type T, any turf type uh, fescue seed recommendations for a lawn in Charlotte area? Thinking GCI turf overseed in the fall. I, I've never used their seed. I mean, you can look into the GCI um, seed. You can look into Baron Brug seed. Uh, I've heard good things about Berenbrug, and I've um, I think GCI has. I mean, their lawn, the lawn, uh, their, the, the lawn on their channel looks really good too. So just do your research. Either one of them can work well, uh, and just um, and then and just make your make your choice. So either one can uh, should should work well. I'm not the person to ask about which cool season seed grass seed to use because I can't tell you from direct experience. I've never used. I've never seeded a cool season lawn. So. Um, Arnaldo Garcia says, my grass is turning yellow, um, Mass, Massachusetts. It's probably just heat stress more than anything else, Arnal Ar um, or Arnaldo, given the fact that it's that this is the heat of the summer and cools in grass, kind of in the name, doesn't like um, hot temperatures. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna discolor, it's gonna turn yellow. Uh, it may even go dormant, but once temperatures begin to fall off a little bit, it, sh it should come back. So just keep water on it, keep it hydrated, and you should be okay, should be just fine. Donna Hale says, I had to reset the height of cut, so I am definitely brown. Should I wait till it greens up before I use T next? This will be my first time to apply PGR. No, not really. If you've done your reset, so you did your height of cut reset, you can apply Primo and just start mowing. The thing, if you want it to green up quickly, Donna, mow it more. Like the more you mow it, the faster it's gonna, it's gonna start turning green. So do, yeah, mow it more if you want it to green up faster. That's gonna be uh, my advice to you. Uh, JC says, um, let's see, how much did the, Let's see here. Uh, next question is, um, 
Um, uh, uh, how much do the lawn rake and scarifier cost? Um, they're, I, I don't, I don't remember the price off the top of my head. The price on the cartridges are different, uh, lawn strules. So just look on their website and you can see the pricing there. The, the turf rake is, let me think about this. The turf rake is cheaper than the verticutting cartridge. And I, I don't remember off the top of my head what it, what it went for. I don't, but just check their, check their website, check Alex's website and you'll see the, uh, you'll see the pricing, the pricing there. All right, um, Mike Har hey, Harvey says, I had a bunch of people tell me that hydrotain was not necessary because they receive four inches of rain per month. I love the results from using hydrotain. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you receive a ton, of, well, four inches of rain per month, well, is it is the four inches of rain exactly like an inch, an inch, an inch per week? Probably not. They may have like one week where they get like two or three inches and then a week where they get none. So the, the nice thing about hydrotain, in addition to like reducing how much watering you have to do, is it smooths out the curve. Like uh, as far as the lawn falling off like, and going dormant from like lack of water, like that's gonna happen more gently when a lawn has hydrotain in it. Um, so in general, you just, you just the best way to, to describe it is just what I said, it smooths out the curves, it smooths out the, 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 um, the, how quickly the lawn will lose moisture. You know what I mean? So I, I still think it's a valuable product. I mean, if you're getting a lot of water when you don't, and a lot of plenty of rainfall, where you're getting, let's say rain every single week, then you probably don't need it. But if you're somewhere where you're getting rain one week and rain not another week, or you just want to, you just like the benefits of it, I still think there's there's no reason to not um, to not use uh, the product. All right, uh, JC105 says, "Hey Ron, you referred me to call Salmon and Hushin and told me who to ask for. I can't remember the name. Could you please remind me? Richard, Richard is the one you're gonna want to ask for. And as a matter of fact, so they should be the ones that, that will be top dressing the lawn next week if uh, if all goes to plan. Yeah. So ask me, call Sandman, ask for Richard." He will, uh, he will take care of you. Tell him Ron sent you. He'll probably charge you triple, but he'll tell you great stories while he's charging you triple. I'm, I'm just playing. Just tell, tell him I sent you, though, if you, know, if, you, if you do. You never know. Might help out a little bit. He's a, he's a good guy. He will take care of you. Uh, Donna says, going to throw down some Humic Max and Karma Kit tomorrow as well. I like it. I dig it. I approve of this comment. All right. Raymond um, Pareto says, patches in the yard, two to three inches deep and around 10 to 11 inches long. What is the best way to level? Two, three inches deep, 10, uh, sand. Yeah, so, so in this case, you could do you could do a sand soil blend. You could, you could get away with that, um, Raymond, because that's not crazy deep. Um, it'll probably take a couple of times to, to get it to, to fully settle and um, even out nicely. I've actually got a video that you can watch that shows a process for doing that. I'll show you a process for doing that. Um, this one right here. This video I'm about to post into the chat for you. Watch this one and it shows you how I do it. But again, given you, you may have to do a couple of um, a couple of sessions to get it completely flat to where it's on plane with the rest of uh, rest of the lawn. But take, take that video out once you get a free minute and uh, I think you will find it useful. Wind chairs is the reaction to wind to the mold damage is visceral. It brings out my Bill Kurt, my Bill Murray and Caddyshack. I want to nuke the yep, that's what happened. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. Um, uh, Will Dog says, Good evening, Ron. Uh, get yourself a Jack Russell uh, Terrier. You will not have moles, but you might still have holes. Yeah, I don't want them digging up the lawn. I don't want to trade one problem for another. That's no good. That's no good, right? Uh, let's see here. Um, Diceman says, Will applying humic acid regularly raise the pH? I've not heard that, uh, that one, Diceman. I'd have to look it up or do some research. I've, I've not heard of that being a a side effect of um, applying humic acid. Um, it's not the most efficient way to raise pH. If you want to raise pH, use a lime of some sort, like either a dolomitic or calcitic lime. That's that's what I would recommend. The more the, the more the benefit of humic acid is more for improving um, and increasing the helping to feed the soil biology. All right, uh, let's see. Um, Donnell says, yeah, lawn shops in Birmingham explain real mower sharpening is largely discontinued. Gonna have to hit the maintenance guys to the local golf courses. I hear you. Yeah. No problem, man. No worries. Okay, um, Mike Harvey says, when you say two pounds per thousand, you mean, yes, I mean two pounds per thousand of the product. That's correct. So I have 10,000 square feet, we'll use 20 pounds. Yes, that's correct. Yes, calculating N has always been difficult for me. It's not that hard. So here, here's how you figure it out, Mike. So let's say, um, you, so you, have, you take like uh, a product like um, flagship, right? Which is a 2406. And let's say you just 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 to just as a starting point, we say, hey, I want to apply half a pound of nitrogen 
from a granular. I want half a pound of my, of my nitrogen demands for the month to come from a granular. So we'll take five pounds. We'll just take that out there just, just as, a, as, a, as, a, as a guess, as a guesstimate, right? We're going to take five pounds and we'll say, so of that five pounds of fertilizer, 24% of it is going to be nitrogen, right? Because the formulation of flagship is 24% nitrogen. It's, 20, it's a 2406. So 24% of the product is nitrogen. So if we take five pounds and we multiply that times 0.24, so five times 0.24, we get 1.2. So that's way too much, right? 1.2 pounds of nitrogen, way too much. So that's, that, that's far too much what we need for our demands. What happens if we change it to four pounds of nitrogen? What do we get? 0.96, getting close, getting better, but you know, still on the high side. If you're only, if you're only doing flagship, you could probably get away with that. It's still a bit high. If we do three pounds, again, three times 0.24, three being the amount, the volume of the product, or the amount of the product we're applying, and then 0.24, the percentage of that product that is nitrogen, we come up with 0.72. Now we're in the ballpark, right? If you're, all you were doing was just flagship, you were not doing spoon feeding, 0.72 pounds of nitrogen is exactly about what I get out of them in my lawn between the granular and liquid that I apply, right? So that, I like that, I like that number. If I were just, if I, if I were only applying a granular, three pounds per thousand is a good number. But we're spoon feeding, so we want less than that because we want to leave a little bit of headroom for the liquids. So we're gonna take that three pounds down to two pounds, so two times 0.24, and we get 0.48 pounds, or right at half a pound of nitrogen. So that's how I did the math on that, working that out. You can just, you can just start with, to start with like a five pound per thousand um, number, multiply that by the percentage of nitrogen in the product or in the fertilizer you're looking at, and that will tell you, is it gonna be way too much? Is it not gonna be not enough? And you can just start reducing that number um, to kind of get, get to where, you know, you get you, to hit the number, hit close to the number that you're looking for. So hope that helps. I know math can be hard sometimes, but that, it's not that complicated to do once you, once you figure it out. And you are right. In your case, it would be 20 pounds total of product for 10,000 square feet if your goal is to apply half a pound of nitrogen or approximately half a pound of nitrogen. All right, ThinCut says, maybe you should just um, rip up your Bermuda and plant a cool season lawn. Yeah, no, mm -mm. no way, no way, no way. <laughs> and then Daniel Infante says, uh, Ron, just went to the Philippines and Thailand and got back and I have tip burn, any advice? Oh, <laughs> uh, you got me, you got me. Now I, I, know, what you, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, use fertilizer. Don't have anything else for you. <laughs> you guys are having way too much fun. You guys are having way, 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 way too much fun. All right, <laughs> David. <laughs> hey, David Patterson is up next. He says, our new backyard has random dead spots over the past four to six weeks. Digging under those spots reveal there is heavy amounts of rocks, mini boulders. Should I just take the time to pull those out before leveling? I would, um, because here's the thing, David, if they are, if they're shallow, they're eventually gonna cause problems. You're gonna have areas of your lawn that are gonna be thinner and you're just not gonna be able to figure out why. And the last thing you wanna do is go through all the trouble of leveling the lawn um, only to have only to have certain areas where you know all this debris that's very shallow under the under the lawn is um, is preventing the grass from looking as good as it could look, and you're gonna and you're gonna end up having to dig it out anyway. So if you've already identified the problem now, again you have random dead spots. There, if, if the spots are randomly dead, and when you go and you try and do a probe physically, there's trash under there that's causing those spots to be randomly dead. Top dressing is not gonna fix them. Because you figure top dressing, what I always tell you guys, quarter inch to half an inch, you're only adding like this much material. So that's not enough for the roots to grow in. If there's, if there's the rocks or, uh, you know, a, a plywood or other garbage under here, you got to get rid of that, you know, for, the, for it to really do well. So absolutely, I would absolutely get rid of that before, uh, before leveling. I know it's more work and you, you may have to do some fill dirt depending on how much material you're taking out. But in the end, you'll be happier with the result if you take the time to, to clean up the, uh, the garbage. All right, um, Ogsan says, yeah, he says, Ron, you mentioned a few things tonight. Are you an audiophile as well? Uh, yes, yeah, I like, I like good audio. I like, can't you tell? I mean, I, as far as sound, I mean, I, I like good visuals, but sound is one thing I do not mess around with on, on, on in my content. Like, I like, I, I like, the audio's gotta set, audio's gotta be right. It's gotta be, it's gotta be very good. Like, I use a very good microphone, both in the live stream and also for, like, when I'm doing the audio in the videos, because I just want, I want it to sound good. And for music, like, I grew up listening to a lot of jazz, and, um, like, a better set of speakers, 
you, you get to appreciate the music more. A better set of monitors, a better set of headphones, you really get to appreciate the, you get to hear the music as it was meant to be. Like if you hear, if you listen to vocals, like you listen to really good vocals um, with a good set of in-air monitors or a good set of cans, like you can literally hear the singer breathing as they're like the in between, in between like choruses, in between, in between lines. You know what I mean? So it's, so you just you get to experience the music in a way that you don't when that you would that you would get out of like set like a set of AirPods or a set of Airbus. You can still hear the I mean you still hear the music, but you can really hear the music, you experience the music with a good set of um, of monitors. But it's not it's only if it's your thing. If you if you're not into music that way, then it's just a really expensive set of, of earbuds, right? So there you go. And guys, I think that has brought us to the end. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to share with you guys. I'm looking through my notes here really quick. Um, again, the uh, foreplay, the um, the new product from Ecology will be back in stock soon. So definitely sign up to get that. Um, if you guys are still looking for ways to reduce mowing in your lawn, Primo is still in stock. We still got this. This is an awesome product. It's still worth, worth using um, in your lawn uh, as, as far as incorporating into your lawn care program. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. Stay tuned for next week. I'm gonna try and find between now and then if I can get the video of us actually getting the mole. I think I might be able to pull that footage. Maybe, maybe. If I can, I'll show you guys next week. But until then, by this time next week, hopefully I'll be able to tell you guys and show you guys some footage of, uh, of the lawn being top dressed, right? So have a great weekend. Do something fun in the lawn. Hopefully you don't have the problems that I did with having moles and other lawn damage. Have a great weekend. Take care. I really, really do. Appreciate